If, if your motion is for a mistrial, your, your motion is denied. Uh, if, if that's what your motion is about. I think that was all your motions. You, had, you asked for no remedy. But I will give you a remedy despite the fact that you don't ask for an alternative remedy. And the remedy would be, and you can tell your witnesses that, that uh, not Dr. Call, uh, Cunningham. Dr. Cunningham uh, testified. This is what he does for a living. He actually testifies for uh, capital defense uh, teams numerous times. He's testified. So the fact that he's already put himself out there in the defense of those accused of capital murder, and he has a website probably and, and publicizes his expertise on that issue, um, uh, I don't think he has the same um, thought process going through his mind and and whatnot as testifying in the defense of capital murder, uh, accused capital murder. And by the way, by that time he's already been found guilty because he testifies primarily on punishment. That that than a lay witness would. So with regard to Dr. Cunningham, this this is not. I'm not talking about him or uh, your your other expert, which I don't know much about, uh, who may testify, which is I think you said Dr. Mr. Anderson. Yes, Your Honor, and he Dr. is not Anderson? He, Dr. Anderson. Um, he is not yet. He's not the subject of this motion. He has not right. indicated to us that he's received any communication. So anyway. But with regard to the other uh, two lay witnesses, my my relief of that would be that they're um, they're uh, when we call them, uh, it would be uh, their image will not appear on the screen. We will not start covering it until. Um, Let me know if you guys heard the first 10 minutes of this, what's going oh, I will, I will on. Not, I jumped uh, on as I saw it. Allow the testimony of that lay witness, which should not be a very lengthy testimony, I think, to be, uh, to be broadcasted. Um, we'll, we'll come back to the broadcasting after we're done with that testimony. Thank you, Your Honor. And we would further request we have a third lay witness who has not resisted a subpoena but has requested that their place of residence um, not be revealed. And so we would request that Your Honor not force them to do that um, during the introductory portion of their testimony. They will be asked to state their name um, but not their place of residence. Um, they have asked this out of concerns for their family as well. Yeah, the court sound isn't very good right now. Let me try to boost it some more. Yeah, typically they lay the foundation for the witnesses. We don't, I don't right. come back and sure. ask them. Very good. That's she just clarified. All right. Very good. Thank you all. We'll be back at 1 o'clock. Uh, what time is it? 11.20. Uh, if you have any clarification, please let me know. Uh, at, when we break right now, please. I'll wait around for you to come back over here. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do, you guys, let's go listen to it from the beginning of whatever this was, okay? Just give me a second, I'm going to set it up for us. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay. I mean this and this over here, let's boost it over there. So... Nope, not that one. There we go, this one. And we go back a little bit from when they came on. Okay. Wow, they were on for a little while, huh? What? Okay, let's listen to it from here. We have uh, the jurors reporting at 1, okay? So we can commence at 1, let your um, uh, witness know because I know we had to witness on. Okay, so <laughs> welcome to a mid-morning live stream <laughs> where 
apparently the judge and the defense attorneys came back, okay, and discussed something. <laughs> now, we would love to hear what that something is. I do not know what the hell was going on here with, with, with people being threatened. And that's what we say. Remember how it goes on the internet? I don't think it's got anything to do with us. I hope no one in this community. I know that on Facebook, some things have been shared. I've seen there's groups there sharing things that maybe they shouldn't be. Like Z's full name and everything, even though they put it in the court and they're putting pictures up there and all that. I've seen that, okay? So, but we don't do that over here. So, let's have a listen. <laughs> We're all on Replay Crew. Welcome <laughs> to Day 12. This is actually from the morning session still. But let's listen to the replay of what on earth happened here. And if they say that they're coming back in an hour and a half, sorry, sorry, Texas time right now is 11.23. They're coming back at 1. Maybe this will be, how long is this? From 43 minutes back. Good. So let's do that. Let's listen to it. We can now pause and react to it and everything, and we shall see. Okay? Now, this morning, if you didn't see my pinned comment, what happened this morning was that the judge came in and said one of the jurors contracted COVID and so can no longer continue with their duties. And so there will be an alternate juror, but then unfortunately he named that juror as in name and surname and everything. And we were like, whoa. So I immediately said goodbye. I shut down my stream and I deleted the stream for the safety of that juror. And I see Law and Crime Network also did the same. KGNS News had not streamed at that point from what I saw. So it's now no longer on YouTube. Um, and so, yeah, th that was that this morning. That's what happened. Okay. Uh, th thank you. Pranil says, sending you a good video clip. Okay. Is it from this or where's it from? Thank you so much. So let us, yeah, what a crazy day. What a crazy day. Let me tell you this. The, the defense brought their witness yesterday, right? And that, that witness, Dr. Cunningham, will be cross-examined today. I believe that the defense may have another witness coming up, I think. And then maybe they'll rest their case. And maybe then there'll be jury instructions still. Will it be today? I don't know. Wow. Anna says the name of the juror was not brought up. That's interesting. But if law and crime took the stream down, it would mean the judge spoke to them and asked them to, right? Oh, you say Court TV showed it also. Oh, oh no. Okay. So now what we're going to do now is I, I was busy. I've always got a million things to do, which is why <laughs> I work many hours all the time beyond the streams that I do with you. And so I was busy working on a bunch of things and didn't realize they came back right there. <laughs> so now we've missed some of it and we're going to listen to it again. Okay. Are we ready? Wow. Anna says it sounds like they'll have at least four more. Oh, okay. A couple more. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. So let's listen. Cross. Uh, cross. Yeah, cross. Well, that's right. The, you had, you had uh, passed a witness over to the state. The state was going to have him on cross. Okay. And um, everything looks good so far as far as that's concerned. Uh, are you talking about the jurors, not us? So, so in any event, uh, let's go ahead and uh, and, and uh, we already brought in. Uh, uh, I'll announce it to, to them here, but I believe he's already been made aware, bailiff. Uh, but I'll announce it to him here officially. Um, uh, in any event. Um, Today, their breaks are going to be done in the um, 341st courtroom. It's going to be closed off to them. Just for today, just give it another day, make sure everyone seems uh, is settled. And if, if they want an extra day, I believe that we can also use it tomorrow for breaks and stuff because um, the entire 341st courtroom, because they don't have a docket tomorrow. They, they are using it in the morning. Oh, you're using it in the morning. So, um, oh, you have it for your uh, our criminal docket. So we'll check with another courtroom if we need to and make sure that, or if they feel comfortable enough, we'll, we'll leave them there in their room. But we'll, we'll check it out. Thank you. Okay, so I know you had some motions that were filed that you wanted to urge.
You have no idea what that is? I have no clue. We'll see. Well, Your Honor, um, as you have just discussed, we have had this incident with a juror with COVID, and we are aware that the other jurors are in the process of getting their tests, but um, we're now at the point in time where you know people have differing views on COVID, the risks. We don't know when it develops. So um, the defense is now going to make an oral motion for a mistrial on two separate grounds. Um, the first would be the COVID issue. So we're not, you know, we can't be sure how each juror would be affected by this news. Even if they test negative now, they may ultimately test positive in a few days. We don't know um, their family or who they are in close contact with that may be at higher risk that could be preoccupying them and taking their minds away from their task at hand. Um, but the more a uh, substantial ground that has arisen throughout this trial that we would like to re-urge a mistrial on is the pervasive media coverage, Your Honor, which has now begun to interfere with Mr. Burgos' ability to present a defense. Um, so that would violate his rights under the 5th, 6th, 8th, and 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, Article 1, Sections 10 and 19 of the Texas Constitution. Um, and so we'd also like at this point to re-urge our change of venue motion, which was filed, I believe, by what? the defense team. Which motion? A change of venue motion, Your Honor, which I believe was filed by the defense team last fall and was denied by this court in February of this year. That was based solely on local media coverage. Um, and at least to my knowledge, the Friday before this trial began, so that would be June 20, oh, math. Um, thank you, <laughs> June 23rd. Um, we were made aware that this trial would be live stream broadcast in its entirety on the Court TV network and online. Um, and that uh, the first day of trial, Your Honor, we had an issue with the media zooming in at council table, reading the lips, trying to interpret conversations between defendant and his counsel on national television. Um, we had an issue the first week of trial with a Laredo Morning Times reporter using his press credentials to post photographs of the client and the defense team on his personal Instagram. Um, we now have had four witnesses who have been impacted by the publicity, so two of them were experts. Um, Dr. Campbell, who testified yesterday, was under subpoena, but once he found out that the television coverage was so pervasive and his testimony would be publicized, he tried to back out out of concerns for his safety and the safety of his family. Um, and Dr. Cunningham, during his testimony yesterday, was receiving emails from members of the general public commenting on his testimony. And this is exactly the kind of concern that the Supreme Court has expressed in these types of cases. And if I may read a quote into the record for your honor, um, the Supreme Court has said, for example, um, they've recognized that witness testimony may be impacted if broadcast in Hollingsworth versus Perry. That was a California case regarding the Prop 8 decision. So that was a civil case. Um, and because of those concerns, the Supreme Court refused to allow the district court to have that case live broadcast. Um, and I would argue, Your Honor, that in a criminal case, especially where the defendant's life is on the line, the harms can be much greater. Um, the, in Estes versus Texas, it was a Texas case reversed by the Supreme Court. Again, a much less serious case. It was a swindling case. Um, and that's 532 U.S. 532 from 1965. And the court in that case commented, and I quote, the impact upon a witness of the knowledge that he is being viewed by a vast audience is simply incalculable. Some may be demoralized and frightened. And that's at 547. The court continued to express concern that, quote, Strangers and cranks might appear, might approach witnesses on the street with jibes, demands for explanation of testimony, etc. And that happened to Dr. Cunningham mid testimony yesterday, Your Honor. Um, furthermore, in Shepard versus Maxwell, 384 U.S. 333, 1966, the Supreme Court reversed a murder conviction that was broadcast on live television. And they said, quote, with his life at stake, it is not requiring too much that the defendant be tried in an atmosphere undisturbed by so huge a wave of public passion. And that's at 351. And I quote from the reversal conclusion of that opinion at 363, if publicity during the proceedings threatened the fairness of trial, a new trial should be ordered. And so I mentioned that we had four witnesses that were affected that have told us explicitly by this, Your Honor. Two of them were our experts. Um, and we now have two lay witnesses that have been impacted by this covered so deeply that they are now um, expressing a desire not to testify. One of them has obtained a lawyer to resist our subpoena. And they are under subpoena, but um, it's 
we have no way of knowing if these witnesses are now going to become hostile. So if your honor is open to this, I would like to make an ex parte proffer of what we believe the witnesses would have testified to were they not to feel like their lives and careers and the lives of their family were threatened. Um, and I, this is not the true basis for the mistrial, your honor, but I would like to point out that this opprobrium and kind of harassment has extended to members of the defense team as well. And so for all of those reasons, your honor, we are renewing our motion for a mistrial on these grounds. We don't believe Mr. Burgos can get a fair trial under these circumstances and his right to defend that sentence would be deeply impacted and nothing this court can do at this point can cure. And I realize we're deeply into trial, um, but again, this is due in, it's a direct causation from this massive media coverage. Um, every juror during jury selection indicated that they were aware of the media coverage in this case. They did tell your honor in this court that they could be fair anyway, but that was even before um, the kind of vast amount of coverage. We have a flash drive downloading the maximum amount of comments we could download from YouTube. Um, that's 5,000 and there are many, many more, your honor. There are videos. I'm just going to, I'm just going to pause it there for a second. We'll continue on now. Whoa, I'm just trying to take it all in. Okay, Percy says, what an amazing job you've done covering this trial. My heart is broken for this family enduring this senseless tragedy. I hope this monster gets what he gave. Me too. And we, we are here for the family of Griselda and Dominic. So that that is what I want to say right now. Um, I'm still just listening. Of course, as we say, <laughs> never dox, harass, threaten any witnesses, jurors, attorney, anyone. We don't do that here. We don't do that. So I don't know who's who's threatened witnesses who was emailing and getting angry. I'm not sure. But that is very unfortunate. The judge did. I'm just going <laughs> to spoiler alert because we're watching the replay of this. The judge did deny the motion for a mistrial. So there's that. But uh, yeah, Anna says, how is media coverage affecting the jury when they're not supposed to see it? And I mean... <laughs> You know, freedom of speech is what I want to say, number one. The reason I say that is because it's YouTube. People make comments. And here, we continually remind people, don't bully anyone. Don't bully the attorneys, the witnesses, the anyone. We, we keep it grisly, as we say. But, I mean, of course, if you're going to download YouTube comments, if I look at my YouTube comments, oh, my word, I mean, there's majority are nice but if you were to look at how many comments there are every day yeah there's a lot of hateful comments and troll comments so that's the nature of social media you know and this this coverage yes just based on how many of you are here every day you know it's between six and ten thousand people here every day um but i must say damn <laughs> like uh, this makes me think how's the coburg or when are gonna go because just for the Coburger press conference, we had 27,000 people here watching with us. That was insane that day. So Duck says, can we have receipts of these threats? I'm so sick of people just saying it without proof. It holds no water for me. That's a good point as well. You know, is it just from comments that people say of, you know, I know it, it's, it's even made some um, law enforcement officers and border patrol agents quite angry. <laughs> Some of the stats that the witness yesterday gave. I'm aware of it. I do get a lot of emails. So I see a lot of things. And as I say, I always protect my sources. I don't even half the time talk about what I'm reading and dealing with on a day to day basis. Right. But yeah, let's see the receipts. <laughs> I agree with you. Okay. So let's continue on. Let's keep listening. I'm just, I'm listening with concern. And at the same time, I must say, as we heard how Burgos spoke to his mother of like, don't you know how they analyze every expression I make, how they're looking at me? They don't know who you are. I'm important, not you. You know, I just <laughs> worry. I hear her. she's got valid points for the legal process. I understand. But I worry about his take on it, that he's like, I don't like it. They shouldn't be looking at me anymore. <laughs> anyway, let's carry on. Let's carry on. Um, analyzing true crime people trying to find the addresses of witnesses of members of the defense team that is wrong that is wrong 100 percent wrong true crime what sleuths true crime people trying to find addresses of witnesses disgusting don't do that don't do that ever okay okay here we go their personal cell phone numbers and finally i would just like to point out that these 
concerns have affected witnesses who didn't even testify. So Ms. Burgos' phone number was put on live television. Um, it was replayed on the uh, recordings of the jail calls. Um, she has had to change her number. And I think that these concerns are Yes, she did. I will be interrupting. If you don't want to see interruptions, go and watch the stream from Law and Crime Network. I think KGN is news as well right now. Okay? What I want to say is, yes, we were all shocked by that, that they were just saying the number, right? The, the, the prosecution, unfortunately, just said the number. Just like today, the judge just said the jury's name. Yes, the mistakes happen. And I'm very protective over victims, their families, and cases, because the cases matter for the justice for the victims and their families. So that, that, that got edited out immediately. Number no longer on my stream. Stream from this morning deleted. Hell no. We do things responsibly over here. Okay. So let's carry on. Are we good? Yeah. <laughs> Brindle says fair point Thea. Fair point. Okay. So continuing on. Well known by everyone in this courtroom as is evidenced by the fact that the Webb County deputy who brought in the jail information was allowed to wear a mask to cover her face for the cameras um, but no one else in the courtroom was afforded that same privilege and so sorry that was fast <laughs> she's like sorry that was fast shame district attorney Isidro Alani she's, and and uh, what's the other guy's name they look so sad today look at them shame okay wait I just want to get his name Judge Joe Lopez, DA Cidro Alanis, Assistant DA Daniel Elizondo. Shame, dude. It's going to be okay. Oh, my word. Okay. We continue on. i got to take this in chunks and we're going to have to comment. And we've got time as well. We've got lots of time. You know, they're coming back at one o'clock. So just, we just, <laughs> this is what we're doing for now. Okay. So here we go. What did I want to comment on now? What was just said? <laughs> I think I've commented on what I want to do. Let's go. Anything? Your Honor, um, we respectfully object to to the, this motion being made by the defense. Um, of course, every trial in the United States is public. The public has a right to view the view the trial. I think we need to put things into perspective in the world we live in today. Um, He's so good. Things are happening in real time. Uh, I know at one time we used to live in a world where the news reporters would be in here and they would relay the same information that's being streamed real time through their newspaper articles exactly. and publishing the names of the witnesses. I wanted to talk about the masks. When Theo said that they were not given the same privilege, I mean, why not? I'm sure you could wear a mask if you want to, right? I don't think the judge would have said you may not wear a mask. So I'm sure they have the same privilege. If, if a witness wants to wear a mask, they can wear a mask, right? Who the doctor was, what the testimony was, where the doctor's from, none of that's changed. Um, the <clears throat> fact that people are being trolled, commented on, that's, that's everybody. That, that's everyone, that's Even every me. single participant in, in the process. Absolutely. Uh, threats. Uh, I'm not aware of any of any threats. Obviously, uh, people making comments or, or insults or whatever may be made. Uh, I, I believe there's remedies for that. If, if, if somebody received an overt th threat, obviously they should file a police report. I haven't had any information of that conveyed to us. Uh, moving this case to San Antonio or Corpus, it's going to be the same thing. If you look at any of these networks that that <coughs> are highlighting trials, it's the, the Murdoch trial, you have the you have the Johnny Depp trial, you have so many trials that have been publicized, the live stream. It's it's the the, the world we, we live in. Now, obviously, we need to try to take uh, precautions, uh, but we're under a, a microscope. Uh, it, it, and uh, but the the public at the end of the day, the public has a right to view to view these trials. Uh, that's that's a that's a bedrock bedrock foundation. Uh, uh, that uh, these are public trials that the community now the community though is is worldwide. That's the difference here. They don't like it, but it is what it is. And uh, that's all I have to say. 
Let me just say something before I allow you to respond. You may respond. Do you have any cases that are not from the 1960s? You know, since time has changed, uh, I don't even think they, there was definitely, I'm not going to say there was no internet then. There was no internet that we knew of sure. back then. Sure. There was no public internet. Yeah. There was no internet the way we know it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, maybe the military had something similar to that then, or maybe it was the 1970s. But in any event, definitely, I was born, I'm, I'm born in the 60s. So uh, in any event, do you have anything, any cases, I know you cited some Supreme Court cases, one from 1961, the other from 1965, you know, that's uh, 62 years ago and 60 and 58 years ago. Is there anything um, that you that you can cite to us that where the Supreme Court or any court of appeals or the Court of Criminal Appeals in Texas has said similar things? Your Honor, we can continue to research this. Is that, is that a yes or a no? Not at this time, Your Honor, but I will represent that we just had less than 12 hours to do the research. I think what the... Oh, I mean, the thing is that with the research, yes. you know, Westlaw is just amazing. You True. You, you query uh, a couple of words, you push a couple of buttons, and voila, you get a whole bunch of stuff. I, I, can, I can do that right now and yes, see what Honor. we get. And, and I, I did do that, by the way, uh, uh, before we made the decision to even allow the type of coverage that we allowed. Um, and I didn't see anything that um, would make me uh, shut down the requests that were being made. Sure. Uh, I've always been a supporter of open courts, mm -hmm. uh, not only are we, does this, does, is there a statutory requirement that and a constitutional right mm -hmm. to, to have an open and public courts, uh, but the extent of that obviously, my, my concern is similar to yours, in fact it's even greater I think than yours, uh, I am concerned Primarily, first and foremost, by the juror, the jury, and making sure that they follow my instruction. And I remind them of that multiple times a day, every single day. Uh, one. And I really think, uh, in my 17 years on the bench, I really believe that the jurors listen to the court's instructions. They are very, very cautious of that. I've never seen a jury, and I've tried in this courtroom, many, many juror, uh, cases in which the jurors uh, blow off the court's instructions or the court's charge or the court's preliminary instructions, uh, ever. So I believe strongly in that. My second concern is similar to yours. Um, uh, is, is a witness affected by uh, its the, the, the testimony change as a result of that. Will they hold back on a comment or two? Um, as I sit here with you all, I'm also subject to the same uh, criticism. Subjective, Scrutiny. yes, Your Honor. Public eye, public comment on how I may. Do and so am I. <laughs> right. I know this is courts. I'm just saying, uh, uh, just, it is really the nature of social media. It's the internet, you know? So, it it sucks, but it is. It is how it is, you know? I'm reading your comments as we listen. Do things or not do things. Uh, what I say, how I comment, everything. And I, I'm not, as, as people who have seen me I've sit on this bench before over the last 17 years. Uh, I'm not changing any of that. Um, uh, as you may have heard, one of your colleagues, uh, Mr. Boggs, you know, I don't think he's changing much of the way he does things either. Uh, he's pretty much uh, the way when the cameras are not here, he's pretty much acting the same way as, if, as when the cameras were here. In fact, I can barely, uh, aside from the, the camera that's just staying there on the side which is belongs to the district attorney's office which is off and it, i think it's only uh, is only on during openings and closings 
uh, you can't really even see the cameras because cameras are in the courtrooms now because of Zoom. Mm -hmm. Like this camera here, this belongs to us. That camera there looks extremely similar. It doesn't belong to us, it belongs to the um, folks over there in the back who are waving. Uh, and and uh, they're, they're, not, they're not intrusive. You kind of forget the cameras are there, quite frankly, as evident by some of my <laughs> comments and whatnot. And maybe Mr. Alice can say the same thing. But but in any event, um, you know, that's the whole purpose of hiding those things and trying to, you know, kind of work them into the courtroom that way. And I don't want them, that's why I want them in the back and not in the front. And and uh, kind of helping us also forget that they're there and, and, uh, and do a trial the way we normally would. If a, jur a witness uh, is affected by that, um, uh, you know, Especially the experts, which is which is who you you're concerned with. I mean, who was it? The first one, Mr. Dr. Dr. Campbell. Campbell. He's tr he's uh, 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 you had an opportunity, I guess, to ask him about that, and no one did. And and uh, whether his testimony would change if, in fact. I will pause it for a second. Nancy says, how about don't kill people if you don't want publicity, right? And this is not huge publicity. It just isn't. I mean, is anyone, are there any other YouTubers covering it? I just mean Core TV, yes. Law and Crime, yes. The local news, KGNS News, sure. This is not huge. <laughs> like you're going to see huge when it's Coburger time. Oh my word. That is going to be like the trial of the century probably. Huh? Imagine that. Uh, wisdom of the cooling dove welcome okay so we continue on there's one more here oh my word truth thank you so much that is so sweet thank you very very much i really appreciate it okay so yes he's denied the mistrial we've gone back so that we can all watch it together because i also missed about 40 minutes of this i didn't know they were back on <laughs> because they said they'll be back at one <laughs> i trusted that <laughs> here you always have to be on high alert uh anyway and so we listen to it all again together so let's continue on. Uh, he knew that this thing was not being live streamed. Uh, and uh, same thing for Dr. Cunningham uh, on direct. Uh, it could have been asked uh, a question like that. And it, I guess, wasn't. Um, but in any event, um, and um, and un unless uh, you know a juror would report something to me about that, yeah. And and, and like and Mr. Anissa saying earlier, you know, our our world is different than it when it was in the 1960s. In fact, I tell you that when I took on the bench in nine in 2007, uh, the discussion was being had then about cameras in the courtroom. <laughs> Uh, here in Webb County, and um, uh, before even around that time, we wouldn't allow the cameras in the courtroom. I know, I know. For me, I wouldn't up until very, very recently. I wouldn't even allow sound. I would allow the cameras in the courtroom, but not sound. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't, you could record. You could, you could videotape, and then do your analysis as to what you saw based on the videotape, but, uh, and I say videotape, uh, uh, but you couldn't, you couldn't record. And then, and then after a while, uh, I said, well, even the Supreme Court allows re their recordings, they don't allow videoing, which, which you would think would be the other way around, but in any event, uh, they allow the, the recordings uh, 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 to be out. So then that's when I started basically changing my mind on that. But in any event, um, more anything else, I'm concerned about the jury first and whether, yes, I am concerned about whether or not a, a particular witness may be affected by that. But, you know, the witnesses that you're calling are professional witnesses. Well, they, they've they testified in over 100, I think that's uh, what Dr. Campbell said, they've been experts in over 100 cases and testified he did. He in did multiple say that. ones and that's even true. capital cases. And, and um, they're, and they've gotten paid um, for, uh, uh, quite uh, well 
Uh, as I remember the bills that I've that I've uh, that you all have submitted, not you, but that your rest of the team has submitted, and and uh, and that and that uh, you know. So I'm not sure they can say I'm not going to testify anymore because they already agreed to that. I respectfully, Your Honor, I I would like to clarify a few things and. Um, I told you I would allow you. You to did say after that, I said that, so yeah. thank you. Um, first of all, I would I just want to make it clear that the public actually does not have a right to view criminal trials. The right is in the press and the First Amendment to cover them. Um, but the Supreme Court has actually explicitly said in Gannett versus D. D. Pasquale, 443 U.S. 368, 1979, it's not the right of the public to view a criminal trial, it's the right of the press. And so it, when those First Amendment contacts, it's a balancing test between the right of the press to cover and the public to have the information, not to view the trial itself, and the due process rights if, of the if, defendant. If that were true, um, we wouldn't have had some reversals on cases when the court doors were closed to the public when when the, the court then, I'm not, I can't tell you which, which court it was, uh, thought that it was too full and had to close the doors and, and the media was in, but the rest of the public couldn't come in and there wasn't any accommodations made. And I can't tell you exactly what the record was of that, but that court, that, that particular criminal case was reversed uh, due to that particular situation. Well, so well, that may I don't be know what happened in the Supreme Court, but sure. I can only tell you what happened in the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. Sure. And that is what happened in that case. Anna says, yes, we do have the right to view trials. If we didn't, the courthouse wouldn't be open to the public. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> this is starting to feel like Grizzly True Crime may not be viewing this with her chatters. <laughs> it doesn't feel nice. And, you know, we are here for Griselda and Dominic and their family. And, yeah, I'm a foreigner. I get that all the time, trust me. I am South African, living in the Netherlands, looking at this American trial. I'm not even national public I'm international public I think that's what it's starting to feel like of like who is this lady and then and being on YouTube the press have the right clearly not me but I'm just here for commentary and we are here to learn as much as possible together as well as uh, showing the support to the family of Griselda and Dominic we I would like the world to know what this freaking Burgos Aviles did I would like to see justice for Griselda and Dominic, you know, and to know, wow, this guy was a Border Patrol supervisory officer. He had a lot of responsibility. He was in uniform, committed the crime in uniform on the job. So you can't just blindly trust. And it's not to create distrust, but I'm just saying to be like, oh, wow, it's law enforcement. So it's just like a hero. And sometimes there's people like Burgos in the mix. You have to be educated on that. It can help a lot of people. Also, we talk about domestic violence. We talk about coercive control. We talk about all kinds of things, right, um, here on this channel. So interesting. I love hearing all your thoughts or reading them as well as we go through this. So let's continue on and see. Well, yes, Your Honor. But I think but the most more important point that I wanted to respond with is um, I believe I indicated in my introductory motion that we had four witnesses who were affected. I said I could, the other two are lay witnesses um, and they are mitigation witnesses and I would be willing to make an ex parte proffer to the court about these witnesses, but they, they haven't testified. Yet. They have not testified and one of them has obtained a lawyer to resist the subpoena out of fear for their life and their family's life and their career. The other one has expressed the same fear and we have a third mitigation witness who has expressed similar fears um, at this time has not indicated that they will resist the subpoena, but oh. we are not. Okay, I'm sorry, I forgot to yes. mention another thing. Uh, you mentioned mask wearing. Nobody, nobody had requested if they were able to wear a mask for COVID or for any other purpose exactly. Uh, exactly. other than the witness that was offered by the state. And right. uh, I had absolutely no problem doing that. So you said that, like if you had... I just find that sometimes the defense strategy is to do things in hindsight, you know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, well, that one witness, she had the privilege to wear a mask and no one else did, but the judge is like, but you never asked. <laughs> no one else ever asked. Of course they can. No one's going to deny them wearing a mask if they want to. Asked and, and I had denied that, but quite frankly, that's not true. Uh, if that was the implication, I want the record to reflect. In fact, there was no request made. And anytime there was a request made with regard to that, I've allowed it. But go ahead. Agree, Your Honor. I have not requested to wear a mask to hide my identity. I kind of wish I had, but that ship has sailed. Um, so, but again, I think the tr 
real issue here is not the physical presence of the cameras in the courtroom. Um, it's not whether the professional witnesses are receiving communications from the public during their testimony, which is what was happening yesterday. Which, but by the way, they, they're not able to see. Oh, no, Your Honor, they were emailing Dr. Cunningham during his testimony right, that was being broadcast. he's not able to see the emails. Dr. Cunningham doesn't, isn't able to see, read exactly. his emails while he's testifying. Right. Oh, no, but he immediately contacted the defense team and expressed concern that people were contacting him in the middle of his testimony. Um, right. What but that in itself is like, <laughs> don't check your emails. Your phone's supposed to be on silent. Why checking your emails while you're testifying? I don't, I don't know if he did or didn't. I just mean the argument to understand why the judge is like, what do you mean? <laughs> He's checking his emails like while testifying. Look at look at just I just pause the screen. I like being able to pause because when it's live, we can't. Right. So um, <laughs> look at look at Boggs's face. He's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> shame. Eduardo has been very quiet for a few days now. When he was done well, testifying. Yeah, but respectfully, Your Honor, he's not done. Um, that he's still subject to cross examination. But so you testimony. talked about Dr. Campbell, not Dr. Cunningham. I am talking about Dr. Cunningham, Your Honor. You, oh, I'm sorry. I Both of them about. have been. Dr. Campbell expressed reservations. Um, he was compelled let me to not testify. Make, let me not mix up the record. Sure. When you spoke of the witness that contacted yes. you, uh, that he was being emailed during his testimony, yes. was, that, was that Dr. Campbell or Dr. Cunningham? Dr. Cunningham, whose uh, testimony is ongoing in this court, Your Honor. I just needed yes. the name. Yes. Uh, Two C's. Um, and so, so those are the expert witnesses, as Your Honor indicated, and they are professionals. Um, and we're not, the issue is not the physical presence of the cameras in the courtroom. It's the chilling effect on the testimony and the. You know, you know what I do with that? Yeah. I don't, just don't read them. I Same, Your gotten, Honor. <laughs> I, I haven't gotten into any one of Exactly. This is like social media 101. If you don't like comments on social media, don't read them. Right? Exactly. Cass says, this is not about you or us, G. It's about her trying to save the nasty, <laughs> are you from the UK? The, the nasty little sod's neck. You have to behave very responsibly and with integrity. Oh, you say you have, you behave. Yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> One of those things, and I have siblings, many of them, and uh, I just said, I, I don't care to know about any of that. Because I, I, that would just change, potentially change the way I do things. I don't think it would, but, but I just don't care to know about that. I similarly avoid the comments at all costs, Your Honor. But I think we are talking now about lay witnesses in mitigation. This is an, a critical component of a death penalty case. What is your request with regard to those two lay witnesses then, with regard to their testimony? Well, Your Honor, I, I think the defense is now in a possible position because they, haven't we, testified yet. they have not testified. Um, we are either forced to compel them to testify with no knowledge of how forthcoming they will now be willing to be what is your or remedy? your honor. I think the only possibility is a mistrial. Um, if we are denied that you say the, my other remedy is to ask the court not to put their image on the camera. Well, Your Honor, I believe based on the statements these witnesses have made that they would not feel that that would cure the threat to their safety. Um, one of them, again, has obtained a lawyer to resist the subpoena that has been my, issued. My direct question was, why do you think that not putting the image, which is what you were complaining about, yes. uh, on the screen would cure the concern? Would their name be broadcast regardless would it appear in the docket as all of the witnesses who have testified have now become public in the docket for the docket entries every day um i, I think we, we could work on the docket but the docket's not going to be online i i don't believe that's true your honor the docket? yes there's daily docket entries about the witnesses that testify trial day whatever um it lists our names it lists out on the online it is online your honor um, no, no, I know it is online with with our county website. We, I'm asking it whether it's being, uh, whether it's being uh, streamed. Oh, yes, Your Honor, the, well. The docket. The docket itself, there's no live docket stream, but there are, as Mr. Alanis in indicated. Words, in other words, yes. th is there the docket there on the screen and then the streamers putting the camera on the docket? I have not seen the streamers putting the camera on the dockets. I have seen the streamers in comments 
researching witnesses and putting their names and trying to figure out where they live. Okay, when you say streamers, I think we're talking about two different people. Or commenters. Um, I, I said streamers talking about the company that's streaming mm -hmm. this thing. You said streamers. There are a number of YouTube. Oh, <laughs> I have to pause because it's like, oh my word. <laughs> Here we go, guys. <laughs> Putting the names on the screen. Yes, so the audience knows who the witness is. Okay, okay. But not where they not where they live. Who's doing that? Who's doing that? Yeah, streamers. Hi G. <laughs> okay. So we are now okay, let's carry on here. YouTube channels that are streaming this trial and overlaying things like their own research. So for example, again, my personal involvement in this case is not the grounds for the mistrial, but there are streamers who are saying they have subsections in their stream. Who is the opposel? During the testimony, they are then pulling up my faculty bio on the UT website, talking about who I am. This is That's me to defend you. So the people can stop bullying you. Yes, that was me. Again, I I'm a professor, I get it, that's readily accessible. These are lay people who are not necessarily in that position. And again, times have changed. This is what people are doing with publicly available information. And um, if your honor is inclined to deny the mistrial and force us to compel these witnesses to testify, regardless of the protective measures that were taken, we would ask for an opportunity to make an ex parte proffer of what we believe their testimony would have been had this publicity not infected the integrity of the proceedings to this extent. Uh. I mean, I'm defending a strong woman over here. Come on, lady. That's why we told everyone your credentials so that people stop calling you bun lady and all kinds of other stuff. I was trying to show off your credentials, okay? I know we, they're watching now, so I hope you see that. It will this be after they testify or before? We would like it to be before, Your Honor. But you normally you do a proffer when, the way I know these things to be, and you please correct me if I'm wrong. If uh, some, if you, if there's an objection with regard to a testimony that you're going to put on, the objection sustained, you would then proffer. Well, actually, nowadays we say offer of proof as uh, to, uh, but since we're talking about the same thing and it's shorter to say proffer, I'll say proffer, uh, either verbally or through a written document, this is what we believe the witness would have testified if the objection would have been overruled, and you'd put that on the record. Uh, and and uh, this way you're saying no one's objecting to the testimony, you're just saying before he test the person testifies, this is what the person would have said, uh, and then allow him to testify. Well, and I'm sorry, Your Honor, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Um, I think let's stick with the witness that you're saying is going to get a lawyer to uh, fight the Yes, scene. yes, and that's exactly actually the. F with regards to that witness in particular, for example, um, your honor asked for cases. I'm going to pause again. <laughs> I wonder what Boggs is researching here. He's like, now let me go see those comments. Let me go see these overlays. <laughs> What's happening here? But yes. Anyway, this is publicly available information. Absolutely. You could just type in the, any defense attorney's name there and there it is. And again, I, I did it to boost credentials of of this professional right here so th thank you all for sharing your thoughts this is very interesting to watch this is now not the afternoon session officially yet but it is 1206 and they're starting at one you see so this is why we're going through the step by step if anyone which is very few it's one here or there that says just shut up and play the video number one don't talk to me like that ever on my channel number two go elsewhere if you don't want to watch my commentary it's available on law and crime network and i can I can tell you now, if anyone in that courtroom goes to watch the streams where there isn't a commentator like me, man, some of those chats get real filthy. Some of them, some people, because there's no one regulating. There are sometimes mods on some channels, right? But sometimes there's no one like regulating what people say. It can get really, it, it gains momentum. And I mean, here, you know, most of the time here at Grizzly True Crime, we're accused of being too sensitive. Why do you have trigger warnings? Why do you have a trigger bunny? Why do you tell people the whole time not to bully? Why are you so sensitive? You know, 
So we are. We're very protective and very sensitive over here at Grizzly True Crime. And, you know, I'm just a little disappointed because the reason for showing Thea's credentials twice is to help her so that the bullying can stop because we shouldn't be bullying as much as people get frustrated in the chat over and over. We say no bullying allowed. Please don't bully. Don't attack someone's physical appearance or, you know, or the way they're standing or this and that. Yes, if you want to. (laughs) <laughs> like with the witnesses with some of the words they're saying some of the ideas we could be like well that sounds like crap sometimes we're allowed to say that we're entitled to our opinions you know what i mean so of course not Annie. i would never do that you didn't post any information that was not publicly available of course not so i appreciate all of you you guys keep it grizzly you're very kind you're very respectful and anytime that it feels like the chat is starting to go in a direction that could be oh okay no no guys we need to not don't do that be nice then, then we rein it in. The mods do a fantastic job over here. We have such a great mod squad. You guys know. I, I don't even think I really have to say any of any of this. I'm just saying it in case, you know, if if Theo sees this or any of the defense attorneys, the prosecution, the judge, anyone, yeah, there's this lady in the Netherlands and she's watching this trial and we've got a community here and we're talking about it and we want to see justice for Griselda and Dominic. That's what this is about. And we yeah we try to show credentials where it's due credit where it's due there's credit due here right (laughs) claire said there's no horror hog on law and crime okay so continuing on since the 1960s um i can't point to a murder case being reversed since then um but the hollingsworth case that i recommend uh, that i mentioned earlier is a 2010 case and it was a pre-trial determination that the proceedings would not be allowed to be televised because the people who were challenging the broadcast had already demonstrated that irreparable harm would ensue so it was on the basis of that offer of proof that the cameras were disallowed now we are past that point in this case but i think this is the exact kind of situation so for that witness that we're talking about in particular right now who has lawyered up who is out of state who is trying to resist the subpoena we would like to demonstrate first what his testimony would show and then that makes the record clear about the harm that would be caused were he to testify in a different way but it seems like you're trying to offer that not as an offer but as a request for a remedy uh and you're saying the witness, I have an affidavit from the witness that says that if he, if he is forced to testify under the same conditions as other witnesses are t- been testifying, that uh, I will not, uh, I, I doubt that he would say I will not answer truthfully. I think he would say it would affect my testimony. I would uh, cut back on some of the details or something to the effect. And if I uh, if I'm not uh, placed uh, on the screen, uh, then my testimony would be the following, and and then that would be in your motion to ask for a remedy to instead of a mistrial as you're doing, uh, to take the cameras off for that particular witness. I, that's what I would do, but you're not doing that. You came straight to the mistrial. Well, I, I think in part, Your Honor, because this is the well, second. Really, when you get to a mistrial, you do steps, right? Objection, a rule, uh, 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 instruct the jury, no mistrial, right? One, two, three, that sort of thing. You're going straight to the mistrial. Well, in, in the context of evidentiary violations, that is certainly true, Your Honor, but we believe this has reached the level of a due process violation that has infected the entirety of the proceedings to the point that it cannot be remedied um, by an objection. And if there needs to be this kind of offer of proof process, we would require a hearing, not just an affidavit by the witness, because they are now, um, they're, again, this is partly why some of this may need to be ex parte. This is exactly the kind of situation that the witness is trying to avoid. Um, This may involve members of the witness's name. Truly, this may involve members of the defense team having to make representations as well. Um, So, I mean, however your honor is choosing to deal with this, some of it may need to be in chambers, ex parte, however that is taken. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to say is that the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure Article 1.24 says that current with current with legislation from the 20 that this is it says that the proceedings and trials in all courts shall be public. Texas Code of Criminal Procedure Article 1.24. The proceedings and trials in all courts shall be public. And 
as Ms. Purcell stated, the press has a right to cover this case. And the press represents the people. That's how the people get the information. Yesterday during, um, and what frustrates the state is that the state has worked to accommodate every request that the defense has made in this case. And, and, and then they turn around and, and, and make these types of, of objections. As of yesterday, given the lineup without mentioning names, after Cunningham, it, I understood that there perhaps may be one more expert and possibly uh, two more lay people. Um, we have conceded in allowing the family of the defendant to be in, in, in the courtroom by not, by not invoking the rule. Um, the lay fact, the lay witnesses of the state have had to endure the very same things that Ms. Purcell is arguing. They've had to get up there, Your Honor, and testify as as members and family members of the victims in putting their story in front of the entire country uh, and 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 being uh, questioned uh, about very detailed facts of, of, of the case. Your Honor makes mention of the experts in this case, all the experts uh, that the defense is, is bringing uh, are being paid. Uh, Dr. Cunningham even yesterday on his testimony said that he's testified before the legislature. We've, uh, we've been a comp, the, the remedy, what frustrates the state is that we allow Dr. Cunningham to testify from the comfort of his living room when he should be here in the courtroom so that he's not receiving emails at the time that he's testifying. And yet he says, well, that's a good point. Oh, while he was busy testifying, he was receiving emails. No wonder you could see it. He was on Zoom. That's the one they're talking about. Oh my word. Yes. Jessica says, I only watch here. I love this community. Thank you, Jessica. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm being emailed during, during my testimony, um, which I would I would submit that he would be getting emails regardless after he would step off the stand. I didn't note any any nervous behavior or any objections by Dr. Campbell yesterday when he came down from UTEP uh, to testify. Uh, the process of, of direct examination, cross examination, is to examine the witness to to seek the the, the truth. Um, I I don't agree with with the defense uh, arguments. Uh, the last case that a change of venue was granted was moved to Bear County. It was also covered uh, by the media, live streamed by the media, over a hundred, two hundred thousand people viewing that trial, Your Honor. If the court moves this court to any other jurisdiction, the media will also cover cover the case. Um, I do believe there are remedies available that the court uh, has mentioned. Mm. Uh, that's what we have. Briefly, Your Honor. Yeah. With all due respect, I don't believe that the family members of the victim are subject to the same vilification and opprobrium for a simple association or wanting their day in court, which is understandable. Um, they have experienced this loss and this is their time to speak about it. But the people who were or may yet be forced to speak on behalf of Mr. Burgos Aviles are subject to a much different type and level of public scrutiny and... Obviously. We're talking about a baby killer here and a mother killer. It's just obvious. It's not nice to have to defend that guy. We get it. The defense attorneys, damn. Imagine defending Burgos Aviles. It's hard. We get that, which is why we say no bullying over here. But there will be criticism. I get criticism every single day. You know what I mean? But, of course. I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> okay, I'm quickly going to read this one. Then we're going to continue on. Thank you all for being here. Let me just tell you, if you just joined the stream now, well, yeah, court just, the jury's not back in the room. The afternoon session still starts at one. We've just started the afternoon session earlier to watch what we missed in a, a part of a morning session. There was the morning session, the mistake of the, you know, the jury's name being said. I deleted that stream immediately to protect that person, of course. 
that's what I do. And so that stream is gone. And then I said, I'll see you back at one. But then they, they came back at some point after a little while, maybe after two hours or so, they came back and had this whole motions hearing. Uh, where the defense is once again looking, you know, to file for a mistrial. This time, it seems like going for the YouTubers are streaming it and people are making comments and there's scrutiny and then witnesses are being threatened again, as Duck said earlier, show us the receipts, not us, <laughs> but where the receipts at. They see these threats, you know what I mean? And if it's just some criticism, it's normal. Once you're online, it's normal. Uh, Maggie Beth says, we admire strong woman here as Gri Grizzlies. I was supportive of Thea and she uh, deserves our respect. I'm sorry she's upset, but this is her job. Yes. Yeah. And she's got a tough job. Exactly. Okay. So to continue on. The tenor of the interactions and discussion about them is much different. They have things to fear. And if I may just briefly read this paragraph from Hollingsworth. This is paragraph. Give me the slide, please. Yes, Your Honor. It's 558 U.S. 183. Um, it's on page 195 to 196. 193, you said? Yeah, 183, Your Honor. And it says, and I quote, applicants have shown that irreparable harm will likely result from the denial of the stay of the media broadcast that was in brackets, without a stay, the district court will broadcast the trial. It will be difficult, if not impossible, to reverse the harm from those broadcasts. The trial will involve various witnesses, including members of same-sex couples, academics who apparently will discuss gender issues and gender equality, as well as family structures, and those who participated in the campaign leading to the adoption of Proposition 8. This court has recognized that witness testimony may be chilled if broadcast, and then it cites to Estes versus Texas, which is the 1965 case that I directed your honor towards earlier. Um, some of applicants' witnesses have already said that they will not testify if the trial is broadcast, and they have substantiated their concerns by citing incidents of past harassment. See Exhibit K to Defendant Intervenor's Motion. Um, and these concerns are not diminished by the fact that some of applicants' witnesses are compensated expert witnesses. There are qualitative differences between making public appearances regarding an issue and having one's testimony broadcast throughout the country. Applicants may not be able to obtain adequate relief through an appeal. The trial will have already been broadcast. It is difficult to demonstrate or analyze whether a witness would have testified differently if his or her testimony had not been broadcast. And witnesses subject to harassment as a result of the broadcast of their testimony might be less likely to cooperate in any future proceedings. And again, Your Honor, this is a death penalty case. If Mr. Burgos Aviles is sentenced to death, there will be future proceedings. There will be state habeas proceedings in which the entire case will be reinvestigated. There will be an evidentiary hearing. There are almost certainly going to be instances of further proceedings in this case that may involve these very same witnesses. And there is no way to measure the degree of harm that will result from forcing them to testify um, that has already resulted to the due process guarantees of a fair and impartial. Okay, commentary, we, we interrupt you in there. If you want to watch the thing without my commentary, you go over there. So that would have then had to be decided before the time because they knew that this would be streamed on a massive platform called TV and another massive platform, Law and Crime Network. And then, because they share the camera rights, and then, from what I understand, right? <laughs> and so that's what we could see. And then KGNS News, local news as well. So if this was the case, that would have to be addressed before the trial even starts. That this trial then shouldn't have cameras in the courtroom like we saw in Laurie Vallow Debel. But that wasn't. <laughs> so that's why I say the defensive strategies, they're looking the whole time for a mistrial. I get that. I think that's all they got. But then and then they look like in hindsight, but we're already at the point at which the defense is gonna rest their case. And then the jury's gonna deliberate. So maybe this is just that last chance to file for a mistrial. You know, there's just that one more, one more shot before the jury deliberates. Huh? What do you think? Okay. Well, trial that Mr. Burgos of Villas is entitled. All right. I, uh... There are uh, two lay witnesses, uh... Uh, your your motion if, if your motion is for a mistrial your, your motion is denied uh if, if but did you did you see the judge's face <laughs> that was like 
I love it when he smiles like that, when it's like, if your motion is for a mistrial, that motion is denied. <laughs> I'm going to have to clip that one. I will have to clip that part because I was like, wait, what? Wow. <laughs> Carolyn says, it was Boggs following Grizzly True Crime on his phone. I mean, he might be... <laughs> Is he watching? Hello, Mr. Box. <laughs> yeah, Burgos is not looking happy today. They is like, they were ugly to me. <laughs> we will be ugly to you, sir. You have been found guilty. Unanimous guilty verdict. You've been convicted of murdering a mother and child. Oh, yes. I'm going to snark it right up with you. Mm -hmm. So he cannot sulk, okay? Anyway, moving on. That's what your motion is about. I think that was all your motion. You, had, you asked for no remedy. But I will give you a remedy despite the fact that you don't ask for an alternative remedy. And the remedy would be, and you can tell your witnesses that, that uh, not Dr. Call, uh, Cunningham. Dr. Cunningham uh, testified, this is what he does for a living. He actually testifies for uh, capital defense uh, teams numerous times, he's testified. So the fact that he's already put himself out there in the defense of those accused of capital murder and he has a website probably and, and publicizes his expertise on that issue. Um, uh, I don't think he has the same. Um. See, there's that smile. Gigi Golfer, if you look at my community tab or patron, I've recapped exactly what happened there. Um, but this morning, the judge, I'll do a quick recap. This morning, the judge came in, it lasted 10 minutes when he spoke because he said one of the jury members has um, contracted COVID and so they can no longer be on the jury and they will pick an alternate and then the judge unfortunately mis in error named the alternate <laughs> like there will be an alternate and their name is blah 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 and so right then and there I shut down the stream and deleted it and shortly after I see that Law and Crime Network did exactly the same so it was that's one of those things you just can't you can't you can't have that up there so the stream ended for us and then they said they'll be back at one o'clock in the afternoon which is going to be just for anyone joining now in the next half an hour in the next half an hour the jury will be back so this is a good use of our time watching this and being like wait what was said here what about a mistrial now uh im sent thank you so much and so what happened was they said he had won but then at some point, while I was doing a whole bunch of other things, this they, they popped back into the room unexpectedly. And I missed about a half an hour or so, half an hour, 40 minutes, I'm not sure, half an hour of this. And then I'm like, wait, what, 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 what? And then I got everything ready <laughs> and ran around and we went live because we now, and that's what we're watching is the replay of the, the mistrial motion that the defense has attempted to file. The judges said, um, no, your motion is denied. If you're filing for a mistrial, your motion is denied. So there's that. Okay. Uh, Grizzly Cat, thank you so much for being a temp mod for today. Thank you so much for helping us out. Really appreciate it. Okay. Let's continue on. Thought process going through his mind and, and whatnot. As testifying in the defense of capital murder, uh, accused capital murder. And by the way, by that time, he's already been found guilty because he testifies primarily on punishment. That that than a lay witness would. So with regard to Dr. Cunningham, this this is not. I'm not talking about him or. Uh, your your other expert, which I don't know much about, uh, who may testify, which is I think you said Dr. Mr. Anderson. Yes, Your Honor, and he Dr. is not Anderson? He, Dr. Anderson. Um, he is not yet. He's not the subject of this motion. He has not right. indicated to us that he's received any communication. So any but with regard to the other uh, two lay witnesses, my my relief of that would be that they're uh, they're uh, when we call them, uh, it would be uh, their image will not appear on the screen. We will not start covering it until. Um, Uh, I will. I will not uh, allow the testimony of that lay witness, which should not be a very lengthy testimony. I think to be uh, to be broadcasted. Um, well, they we'll come back to. So they said, okay. So there will be Dr. Cunningham, possibly another witness, 
and then two lay people. And from what I'm understanding, am I right? That when the lay people are witnesses, they will not be streaming them. They will not show them. And that's also very normal in trials. We see that all the time. Where some people are not on camera. I mean, in Letitia Stark's trial, Al Stark was not on camera. Right? I mean, yeah, okay. Do the broadcasting after we're done with that testimony. Thank you, Your Honor. And we would further request we have a third lay witness who has not resisted a subpoena, but has requested that their place of residence um, not be revealed. And so we would request that Your Honor not force them to do that um, during the introductory portion of their testimony. They will be asked to state their name, um, but not their place of residence. Um, they have asked this out of concerns for their family as well. Lay witnesses, of course. Well, yeah, typically they lay the foundation for the witnesses. We don't, I don't right. come back and sure. ask them. Very good. That's, she just That's clarified that. Yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you all. We'll be back at 1 o'clock. Uh, what time is it? 11.20. Uh, if you have any clarification, please let me know. Uh, at, when we break right now, please. I'll wait around for you to come back over here. Thank you. Okay, so we recap that. That was interesting. <laughs> Stereophonics mom says, no one has been asked for the address. I am wondering, let's just see, was there anything else? Did they do anything else there? We're looking, we're looking, nope. <laughs> okay, so let's take it to present time. Yes, all right. I am wondering if one of the lay witnesses would be, you know, <laughs> possibly a spouse or someone like a friend or is it Z or I don't know, but it just seems to be someone that needs to be protected a little more and that's perfectly normal, right? B. Vass says extremely accommodating to the defense and that is how trials are run today. Judges do not want to run their case, uh, they do not want their cases to be overturned. Exactly. That's right. And I call says he's ruling is lay witnesses will not be shown or testimony or testimony broadcast at all. So how will that work? Kimberly, yes, he he did not give us his testimony. Um, apparently, I don't know, I'm getting this from emails. Apparently he um, felt very overwhelmed. I mean, he's 12 years old, so that makes total sense. Wow, I'm actually glad. That he that um, twelve year old Jaden Griselda's um, eldest son did not testify, given that the what the defense would have said then, <laughs> they would have more grounds for what they, the arguments they're trying to make today. I do wonder that as well. Jenny says, "So will we just see the court seal when they block the witness?" I don't know. Debbie says, "So all this got started because the doctor from yesterday got email communications." It does seem so. It does seem so. Uh, yeah, Roxanne, that's what I'm wondering. Could be, could be. Maggie Sanchez said, I think in the other chat, they said it was a friend of Burgos. Interesting. Alpha Shebel said spouse, grandmother, co-worker. Maybe all of the above. Yeah, maybe all of that. <laughs> they did say two or three lay witnesses, right? Anna says, I wonder if they let him do a written impact statement. Mm, I wonder too. Wow. So, um, Beach Gal 8182 sounds like he's going to cut cameras when they testify. Well, that'll suck. <laughs> Those are going to be some important testimonies and it's for the defense. If the prosecution did that, I can bet that the defense would have objected. <laughs> Objection. You can't hear a bog saying it. Objection, Your Honor. You have to show... <laughs> to the public but now they're like mm -mm, no we're gonna cut that out yes okay uh duru says i think with lay witnesses they will delay the broadcast probably well we'll see what we do when that happens right ramona says i think this is the fallout i just i don't think so in my opinion but imagine you know if those things combined oh that is bad i don't think one has anything to do with the other um but that is bad, yes. Okay. 
So let me just quickly check Texas time right now. It is 12.31. So they're coming back in half an hour, which <laughs> I think is, what, 45 minutes in reality. Let me just see. what What is a lay witness? Any witness who's not testifying as an expert witness is a lay witness. Unlike an expert witness, a lay witness does not need to be qualified in an area, in any area, to just... Or, to testify in court. A lay witness, like any other witness, must limit testimony to matters which they have pers personal knowledge about. So if there's lay witnesses, yeah, it could be a uh, mom, grandma, wife, coworker, friend, any of those, yes. Michelle says, I told you by email that phones were at the defense table and the defendant was answering someone in his ear. Prove no, <laughs> I'm still not on that theory with you. <laughs> I'm still not there with you. <laughs> Kylie says, damn, I missed a good morning. Trust me to fall asleep. Did you? Oh, I mean, that was pretty interesting. That was an interesting one. But the morning, this morning, the morning session, 10 minutes and then a, and a, and then a, a big mistake. And so that was taken down. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I'm also wondering. Casey, thank you so much, Kylie. Casey Cat says, I don't think he said he would cut cameras. He said the cameras wouldn't be on the witness. So let's, shall we listen to it again? Let's do that. <laughs> Not the whole thing, just that part, just that part. Here. Yeah. Almost certainly going to be instances of further proceedings in this case. There are uh, two lay witnesses. Two lay witnesses. Uh, your, your if, if your motion is for a mistrial, your motion is denied. Uh, if, if that's what your motion is about. I think that was all your motion. You, had, you asked for no remedy. But I will give you a rem remedy despite the fact that you don't ask for an alternative remedy. And the remedy would be, and you can tell your witnesses that, that uh, not Dr. Call, uh, Cunningham. Dr. Cunningham uh, testified. This is what he does for a living. He actually testifies for uh, capital defense. I have to, I have to pause it. <laughs> when, the, when the judge is smiling like that, he's like, <laughs> this is what he does for a living. Like he's trying to really say it so nicely, but this is, this is his snarky face, you know? I don't know how my snarky face actually looks when we snark it up sometimes, especially on mem member streams, <laughs> which we'll have one again soon. But <laughs> when the judge is getting snarky, he's like, listen, I don't like, I still like the way he said that. Uh, yeah, we're listening carefully. I paused it. So we're listening. Okay. Motion denied. The motion for a mistrial denied. But the way he said it is like, okay, if your motion is for a mistrial, that's denied. And now it's continuing on. So there will be two lay witnesses. Let's take it one line at a time. Uh, teams, numerous times he's testified. Mm. So the fact that he's already put himself out there in the defense yes. of those accused of capital murder, and he has a website probably and, and publicity. <laughs> the fact that he's already put himself out there in the defense of those accused of capital murder. Yes, yes, you tell them, Judge. That's right. I mean, that's it. It's all out there. Yes, indeed. Okay. Sizes his expertise on that issue. Um, uh, I don't think he has the same um, thought process going through his mind and and whatnot as testifying in the defense of capital murder, uh, accused capital murder. And by the way, by that time, he's already been found guilty because he testifies primarily on punishment mm -hmm. that, that than a lay witness would. So with regard to Dr. Cunningham, this, this is not. So we're going to see. <laughs> Sorry, the judge's face. <laughs> we're going to see Dr. Cunningham one more time. Right. And the defense, it's for, uh, sorry, the defense yesterday passed the witness or passed the witness, as you guys say. <laughs> and so today, the prosecution, hopefully, District Attorney Isidro Alanis will be cross-examining that witness. And hopefully we don't have to refer too much to the presentation again, because that was TMI, way over the top. Oh, my gosh. And we're allowed to say that. It's called public opinion. It was TMI, too much information. Stefan... He says the judge did his homework, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah, Mar Marilena Amarillo says it's funny how they never commented on naming the juror, right? It's just these YouTubers. <laughs> That's all you got? That's what you got? I mean, this is what I mean. People have told me 
that, you know, I would make a good attorney. I don't know. I've always been like, I don't know, my whole life, like as a teenager or whatever, they're like, you'd make a really good attorney. I'm like, are you sure? But defense attorney, maybe. Why? Why? Because it's about looking at all the details and the facts and the everything and then being like, whoa, there's a loophole or like a something you could poke a hole at, right? Meaning, this is what you got? These YouTubers? Let me not give them any ideas. I'm not going to give them any ideas. I just mean that they were, they were, Throughout the trial, many moments I'm like, oh man, they so they are so gonna grab onto this and they just didn't, but okay, okay. I'm not talking about him. Or uh, your your other expert, which I don't know much about, uh, who may testify, which is I think you said Doctor Mr. Anderson. Yes, Your Honor, and he Dr. is not Anderson? He, Dr. Anderson. Um he is not yet he's not the subject of this motion. He has not right. indicated to us that he's received any communication. So any but with regard to the other uh, two lay witnesses, my my relief of that would be that they're um, they're uh, when we call them, uh, it would be uh, their image will not appear on the screen. We will not start covering it until um, uh, their image will not be shown on the screen, is what the judge said. We're taking it sentence by sentence, line by line. If you didn't see my comment after what I just said, I, I wouldn't want to defend criminals anyway. I just mean like sometimes you're like, OK, defense, what you got, what you got? And sometimes that would be also you know, part of watching a trial is to see, well, what, what is the prosecution? What are they going to say? And then what's the defense going to say? And what's actually going to happen? I mean, we don't know. It's up to the jury, you know? This is all about the jury. And that's why I say yesterday's presentation, shame. That must have absolutely exhausted the jury. I will, I will not uh, allow the testimony of that lay witness, which should not be a very lengthy testimony, I think, to be... Uh, to be broadcasted. Uh, so that is, I don't know, what do you guys interpret that as? The image, the first sentence was the image of that lay witness will not be shown. And then the judge said, I will not allow that testimony to be broadcast. Is that still about the image though? Is he just going to block out the image and is sound going to be allowed or is there none of that that anyone's going to see or hear? I don't know. Okay, mistrial denied. Uh, let me just see. Okay, I'll unpin my message and pin another one. Okay, jury back. Let's go. Jury back at 1 p.m. That's what's happening now, in case anyone's wondering. Mistrial denied. There we go. Jury back at 1. Mistrial denied. Okay, I will make sure I pin that for us. Here we go. And... Leanne says G does not talk during a live stream of the trial. And if I want to, I still can because it's my channel, right? I know you're in, in favor of me. I know what you're saying. But if anyone has a problem with me making commentary during a trial, you need to go and watch it at Law and Crime Network where there is no one on screen making commentary or KGNS News. Okay? Don't watch here with us if you don't want someone on the screen talking. This is my channel and I talk over here. Yes. Okay. So yeah, Anna says, I think they'll mute the courtroom too. Very interesting. Oh, okay. So let's, uh, I, th I, I don't know. He said no sound, no image, right? And he said it shouldn't be very lengthy, but I wonder. I guess the cameraman will then be instructed to show us the ceiling. <laughs> we'll be looking at the ceiling while those testimonies are happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I don't know how long it'll be. They said it, it will not be too lengthy. Um, we'll, th we'll come back to the broadcasting after we're done with that testing. Thank you, Your Honor. And we would further request we have a third lay witness who has not resisted a subpoena but has requested that their place of residence um, not be revealed. And so we would request that Your Honor not force them to do that um, during the introductory portion of their testimony. They will be asked to state their name, um, but not their place of residence. Um, they have asked this out of concerns for their family as well. Your Honor, the record's clear. We, we haven't asked, we haven't asked, 
Lay witnesses, of course. Well, yeah, typically they lay the foundation for their witnesses. We don't, I don't right. come back and sure. ask them. Very good. That's you just clarifying. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you all. We'll be back at one o'clock. Uh, okay. So that's what ha that's what's happening. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Paige, what is it? Do we know the nature of these lay witnesses? We really don't. We don't know. Let's look at what Texas time is now. Right now in Texas time, it's 12.42. <laughs> so they're supposed to start in about 15 minutes or so. Paige says, we love you, Gene. Appreciate you being here with us. <laughs> yes, I just love it when newbies roll into the chat and try to tell me how to run my own channel. When they're sitting there, I don't invite them. They're just there. <laughs> they're like, this thing, can you please not do this thing? Can you rather do that? Um, no. <laughs> no, no. We have a community here as well existing. We do things how we do them around here. <laughs> Christine says, why can't we hear and if we can't see them or know who they are? Because they top secret. <laughs> um, that has to be a very interesting lay witness. Like a wife, right? Paula says 18 minutes. Paige Willow says, are they afraid that Burgos has people going after them? Interesting. Vicky says, when have we given witness addresses? We don't do that. We don't dox people. Hell no. We do not. Uh, Anna says, so three lay witnesses, one expert witness, and the end of Dr. Cunningham. I think so. Um, I know there's, there's Dr. Cunningham. There's Dr. Was it Dr. Anderson? I think they said. And then two or three lay witnesses. Very interesting. Yeah, no one has said where they live. And Phantom says 1234 Sesame Street. <laughs> Paulina says, I think audio will be off and camera showing. I don't think any of that. I don't think any of that. I think they're not going to show and then we're not going to hear either. So that's just going to be a top secret court only testimony. Thank you, EB. I did get that, but I do also make certificates. I really appreciate it. But when I make certificates, I make them for us <laughs> with special little touches <laughs> but thank you so much i did get your email ski mom thank you so much for your sticker i really appreciate it yeah yeah jenny says so who out there is trying to read lips there's no twitter mole ac says is there a twitter mole who can help us out in the courtroom nope unfortunately i haven't seen a twitter oh, oh is there okay let's make an appeal is there a twitter mole <laughs> if someone's in the courtroom and would like to email me what's happening if you're allowed to i don't know Maybe you're not allowed to. It's going to be secret. We just honor that. We honor that. This is the judge's court. That's what he's saying is going to happen. We're not going to know anything. Um, Carl Gar says, when have they asked for addresses? They really haven't, right? Just yesterday, uh, the, the prosecutor, assistant DA, unfortunately read out Amy Burgos's phone number, which this entire community expressed concern about, and I edited it out. You know, so I, I don't know if it's about that, that now that's been like almost like breached. There's a phone number that's out there and she's had to change her phone number. So now I don't say where she lives. There's also public information with her awards, you know, that she moved to Florida. So I don't know why in any case, if they have her on the stand, why would anyone ever say her whole address? They wouldn't say it. They wouldn't say it. Uh, Melissa says, I think there are three lay witnesses, two no face, one no face or audio. Very interesting. Very interesting. So yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, the judge knows who's going to be there. That makes sense, actually. <laughs> Miss Wales likes knock it up. Your channel, your rules. I mean, one would think, <laughs> right? Melissa says someone in the court will relay the information about the witness. I don't know if they will, and I don't know if they should. Um, but sometimes on Twitter, I think you guys are also asking, because sometimes on Twitter, if you don't follow me on Twitter, it's at True Crime Gizzler. I'm very active on there, unless it's like, some days, sometimes when I say I'm very active on there, they'll be like extremely busy days and I'm not for two days. And people are like, where are she? <laughs> where is she? But I'm very active on them on most days. At True Crime Gizzler is my handle. And sometimes in trials, yeah, there's people that are on Twitter giving live updates minute by minute. Media would normally be there as well. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure we go forward to the actual moment now where we're at. Yes. Yeah, this is KGNS TV 8. Go here if you don't want any commentary. Okay? You don't want Gizzle K on the screen? Yeah, KGNS TV 8. Laredo, local news. Yes. Okay. 
<laughs> Kelly Galeo said, you don't own YouTube? No, but I own my channel. <laughs> That's like saying, if I have a house and in my room I, I set boundaries and you're like, you don't own the world or this neighborhood. <laughs> uh, this is my channel. Um, a defense witness would need to... Wait, okay, okay. A, a Lily Jewel says, a defense witness would be to benefit Burgos, so why would they want to hide the testimony? I don't really know. I don't know either. But anyway, welcome, guys, to day 12. The afternoon session, it was a bit of a, a, a blend. There was some of this morning... It wasn't the official morning session, because that ended within 10 minutes. There was a bit of a, like, a brunch session, and now it's... It's not quite lunchtime either, but they're coming back at one. So I guess now it would be Texas lunchtime. Jury will be back in the courtroom at one o'clock. Right now it is, let's see the time. It's 12.47 p.m. So in the next 13 minutes, apparently, although we know already, you know how the court has gone, that they'll probably be back in the next <laughs> half an hour or so. Yeah. Arisa Batres says, just look at the path of destruction. This man has caused so many people, especially for Griselda and Dom. Rest easy. Man, and the family has waited over five years for this trial. I want them to know we've got their back. You're almost there. And it will never, ever bring the victims back. But you're almost there at the finish line for justice. There will be, the jury will deliberate. There will be time for victim impact statements. And then there will be sentencing. I can't wait for that. Um, Sandy says, thank you for your input. You're doing a great job. Thank you so much. Interesting. Yeah. Ols Art says, Orlando Ramos. I believe they indeed stopped the cameras from showing the witnesses, but I'm not sure about the sound. I also wonder about that. You know, a lot of ones, a lot of trials where they say, ooh, they're not going to put the, even if they don't put the camera on the witness, the point is somewhere else. Even at the seal, <laughs> people have said the seal of doom. It's not really the seal of doom, but the seal. Okay. <laughs> even at the seal or the ceiling or at the wall, or whatever it is, Normally, there could be sound as well, but maybe for that, we won't even get sound. I don't know. Okay. So, that... that, that We've just heard a lot over there. Okay. <laughs> Claire Bear says, G has a snark set to hide today. I'm here for it. <laughs> well, yeah. As we go and as more people join the stream, some people are just rude. Kathleen Tackett says, I thought Judge said he would consider replaying lay witnesses' testimony later. And that could be true as well. I wonder how they would coordinate that because, you know, they would still need to film it in order to then play it later. But it seems to me like there could be one camera guy, maybe two. Maybe there's one for KGNS News, one for Core TV. Thank you so much uh, for your sticker. Really, really appreciate it. Okay. I'm just... <laughs> stall. Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, normally they would just say city and state. So Mo Freedom says, yes, listening to Ed Baker is like trying to hear a pin drop while you rolled your rocking chair over your cat's tail. Kanye, any testimony? Just her comments. Again, go to KGNS News. <laughs> what are you doing here? What are you doing here? What, you like the chat, but you don't like the commenter? Go there. Law and Crime Network, KGNS News. Go there. No one, you won't hear my comments at all. My voice will not be in your ear. Thank you. Where the wind blows. You're so sweet. Gee, you're making watching cases and trials more calming. Okay. Now, I quickly wanted to see... Let's see what I can read out from this. I get interesting emails sometimes, you know, that I want to prepare for you. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I just have to pick what I'm going to read to you. We've already gone through the translation of Burgos's call. I mean, wow, the way he speaks to his mother... If she is going to testify, whoa. He's definitely going to call her and crap on her then, right? <laughs> Ashley said, listening to her oral motion for a mistrial, I'm pissed she made me spit out my coffee and now I have a mess. I'm so sorry about that. Never spit out your coffee, okay? Never. Coffee shall not be spat out. <laughs> okay? I just really want to find this email. Let's just see where it is. Um... Thank you. Everyone's like, trials on now. I've got like, <laughs> I've got like 40 emails. Gee, and I missed all of them. <laughs> Sorry about that. At the time, at the time. And then we came back. Okay. 
Wait, I'm gonna find it. Just give me one second. Or maybe 20 seconds. Should I start a timer? <laughs> there we go. Mm, nope, that's not the one. Sorry. Nope, Michelle, they don't. They're live right now. You said actually KGNS News records it but delays posting. No, they don't. <laughs> they really don't. They're live right now. That's where I stream from every single day. KGNS TV. Every day I stream from there. Heavenly Presley says, thanks so much, hun. You sub will remember this trial has been so emotional, disturbing. I just caught up and made it finally to alive. I'm so glad. And, oh, if you guys are wondering where are the timestamps for yesterday's streams, I haven't done them yet because the one video is taking so long just to finish processing and I want to make sure that that's done before I do those timestamps. I will still do that, okay? I'm very, very sorry that those are not done yet because you know I like to do timestamps for you guys. Okay, so some people are saying what's happening. So while I, one eye is looking over there, <laughs> looking for that email, um, the other eye is going to tell you now <laughs> what is happening. The, uh, the jury will be back in the room at one. That'll be the official start of the afternoon session. There will be the cross-examination of Dr. Cunningham. Then there will be another expert witness and then three lay persons, which are not experts, lay people, <laughs> wit witnesses testifying, the defense's witnesses, okay? So Dr. Cunningham, Dr. Anderson, I think it was, three lay witnesses, okay? <laughs> Five people. And then, and then, I think at that point, there might be, I'm speculating, jury instructions? Could be. And then there is still going to be a time for victim impact statements and sentencing. Vicky Horton, where's NOK from? I don't know where that's from. Normally I take pride, you know, knowing where all the currencies are from. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Wait, currency, NOK, what's that? What's that? Norwegian. Okay. Thank you so much. Janessa, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And so yeah, that's what's happening. One more time. Everyone say with me if you were here. <laughs> what did we miss this morning? Number one, one of the jurors contracted COVID and can no longer be on the jury. They're released, I guess, because they're recovering, right? Number two, an alternate will have to be chosen, but now another alternate will have to be chosen because the judge, by mistake, said the alternate's name while the microphone was on. So that they have to choose another one. <laughs> I think there's four alternates, if I'm not mistaken. Now they were going to choose one, but that one's name has just been broadcast out, which is why the morning stream was deleted for protection. And so they're going to have to choose another alternate, which I'm sure they've done already. Number three, the defense team filed for a mistrial around brunch time today. And the, the judges denied that motion for a mistrial. Terry said, do you know who published the autopsy photos? Is this based on another case? Because we focused on this right now. And I think everybody knows right now. I'm, I'm not being rude, but it, seriously, it's huge news. I don't know if you've missed News Nation's coverage of it. Everything happening on Twitter, my community post, my patron post. It's huge news. Who published it? I think we all know by now, right? <laughs> and I don't get involved in drama. So please check my community tab. You will see it there also not named, but what happened and what my stance on it is. Uh, Pistol Amy says, you keep it classy over here, G. That's why we love you. The mods need a troll zapper, a troll zapper emoji instead of a wrench, the more your channel grows. <laughs> and, and thank you so much, Pistol Amy. And Bet George says, hello from South Africa. Hello to you. Yeah, it's on. I'll show you one more time. KGNS TV 8. That's what it is. KGNS TV 8. Okay. Molly, I wonder how much, I wonder how many questions they're going to ask to Dr. Cunningham. Welcome to all the new members as well. You guys are keeping me busy over here. <laughs> so I'm not able to see that email right now. Just give me a second here. Okay, let's find it. <laughs> I tell you, and I wish I could remember all the names of everything that I receive. It's, I've got, yeah, 5,000 emails clear many out every day because I have to damn it find it are you enjoying watching my side profile <laughs> oh my word 
There we go. Okay, 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 okay. So, as you know, let's see the time, let's see the time. I protect my sources, and they're supposed to start in four minutes. But let's, let's hear what another Border Patrol agent thought of Burgos, shall we? Angela Ravenhill, thank you so much. Ooh, Margaret, didn't they release a Jura earlier for family reasons, so three are left? Interesting. So if they already used an alternate and our named one, it would mean two are left. Oh my word. So they have to choose one of those two and get them there today on time and everything. Ciara Lamasta says, we are with you, G. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. And Terry, I understand. So. Okay, I'm keeping me busy. Three Laredo minutes to go. That's right, Stefan. Marie says, love your commentary. Watching from Colombia. Thank you. So this is what a Border Patrol agent, there's many that have emailed me, and I asked them all for information on Burgos. What was it like to work with him? What kind of person was he, right? Amongst other men, as a regular line agent, he was quiet. He kept to himself outside of a small group of friends. That part I'm just going to skip for now, just hold on. Okay. The defense witness in the penalty phase of the trial that talked about machismo and Hispanic culture was sort of spot on in that regards. It was an open secret and everybody knew what had happened and I can't imagine what it did to Burgos mentally. He was humiliated. I think the facade that he put on from that point forward was as a result of his humiliation. That was him struggling with unaliving thoughts in 2012 due to him saying marital problems, right? <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Under down. Really appreciated. And so, when he picked up supervisor, he was, to his own admission, over his head. He would spend most of his shift in the office of a senior supervisor learning the basic tasks that a supervisor needed to know. He was overwhelmed. <laughs> you guys are like, machismo. So, because a lot of people also ask, but, you know, um, sorry, someone's saying, where are you, G? I'm right here. <laughs> uh, People were saying, like, what would he be like? Why did he get the supervisory officer position and all that? And how did he handle it and all of that? Apparently, he was very overwhelmed. And he would spend most of his shift in the office of a senior supervisor learning the basic tasks that a supervisor needed to know. He was overwhelmed. He knew it. And the agents around him knew it. And that led to a lack of respect for him and made his job a lot more difficult. He masked his insecurities with this over-the-top arrogance that he would often display around the station. Ah, an over-the-top arrogance, okay. That he would often display around the station that was very unbecoming of a supervisor. This only added to the already low level of respect that he had amongst other agents. Jen T says, we love your comments. Thank you, and thank you for being a member for four months. Paul says, I think the alternatives are the everyday, just like the regular jurors as they are all summoned to the jury service. Thank you, Paul. That's good as well. It's like being on the bench in sport, right? And then they're like, okay, you're up. <laughs> you're up. Okay, I'm just reading some of your comments there. <laughs> and I said, love the DA, love your channel. <laughs> I love that sentence as well. Love the DA, love your channel. Yeah, yeah, it's, none of this is an excuse for the crime. It's just interesting, of course, to hear what was he like? What, and even this, I mean, <laughs> again, we're not giving the defense ideas, but wouldn't that be good to interview some of the people that worked with him? <laughs> that could say what any of the stress was that he faced or anything like that, you know? Wow. Thank you, J.W. So, 
I'm just seeing, I'm just reading carefully here. Okay, hold on. There's this culture of Border Patrol. The problem wasn't violence against women, but rather it was a promiscuity problem. Yeah. And that can happen. This goes for the men and women in uniform. One of the first things that my field training officer told me when I moved down there was to never bring my wife to any work-related function. Okay. It's like a male-dominated environment. It was like that in the airline as well. Cameraman, we see you. We see the, the camera shaking. That's a hello to us. <laughs> Hi, cameraman. <laughs> um, Muzik, thank, thank you for being a member for three months. Are you guys enjoying the email so far? <laughs> Claudia says, hello, G from Laredo, Texas. I'm a new subscriber. Hello. And if you're like, hurry it up. Nope. <laughs> Kerry, thank you so much for being a member for two months. And 70p says, I'm waiting for a super chat sticker from Willy Boggs. <laughs> Me too. Where can we have one? Okay, so if you're just joining now, welcome. Welcome. I'm busy reading um, part of an email that I got from... I got a few emails from Border Patrol agents. Some that knew Burgos over the years. And so I'm going over some of that. And we're waiting for the jury to come back into the room, right? <laughs> Duru says, whose email are we reading? A Border Patrol agent. A former Border Patrol agent, I believe. There's many. There's many emails that I got from Border Patrol agents in the area. People that are local. People that have known Burgos over the years. And some, you know, I can't share and some I can. I always protect my sources. So Janet says, uh, usually jurors and alternates are given numbers, so the judge says the number's not the name. I know, and today he said the name. He doesn't say the number, he said the name, unfortunately. Anyway, they clearly don't want to talk about that. Oh. Okay. Myra, thank you so much. <laughs> really appreciate it. And damn, Roro -Ro says almost 180k subs. That's hectic, right? Okay. So, let's see the time. What is it? Yeah, see it's five past now. So, they'll be coming back soon. They said infidelity runs rampant. And it's very difficult to stay true to yourself and stay true to your vows. Okay. It's part of the culture. They say it's almost weird as if you didn't have someone on the side. I can attest to that even in the airline. If I say the airline and you don't know me at all, my name is Gisela Kay. I'm from South Africa, living in the Netherlands, and I was an airline pilot for nine years with South African Airways. And I, I quit in 2013, and we're not going to go into all of that because it gets very long-winded. I've gone over it before. And so the thing is, um, I can attest to that. That's how it's there as well. The culture there was like, it's weird to many of, because it's a male-dominated environment. And from what I saw from them, that's the same type of culture. <laughs> They used to say, never marry a pilot. <laughs> sounds like Border Patrol sounds the same. Oh, thank you so much, be kind, number one. Okay. They said the culture is something that you are constantly aware of. That being said, it doesn't excuse what Burgos did. It's more of an explanation as to why it is not an excuse for what he did. Sadly... Everyone out there, for the most part, men and women, had affairs. So I guess the point would be, if people were being like, oh my word, he was cheating, cheating, cheating everywhere. Well, it seems to be that that would be the culture. I mean, not everyone. It's the same. <laughs> As I say in the airline, it was not the same. There were a lot of bad apples, a lot of cheaters, but not everyone. I get that. I get that. Drato says, anyone use hectic in real life? <laughs> I mean, do you guys? Hectic. It's very hectic. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Good point. Um, I think everyone's getting a little bit confused. I'm just going to call this stream day 12 because the morning was like, what the hell was that? Right? Day 12 penalty phase. There we go. Let's say defense 
Mm -hmm. Defense. Final witnesses. I think it would be today. I wonder if this would spill over to tomorrow. Okay, so welcome everyone. Let me focus on what you're saying now. I hope that interested any of you. Uh, Leo says, Rocky in the case coverage. Oh, thank you so much. We see someone's head there. We see someone. Is this to prepare for the late witnesses? Maybe. Debbie says, exactly. It doesn't excuse it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Janet. You say, you hold up the most honest and treat everyone with respect inside out. Thank you so much. Yeah. Francisco Ramirez says, he's not being charged of cheating. No, exactly. And the point is, um, I just ask for information. What was he like? What was he like at work? Did he interact with others? Did he have lots of friends? Did he not? Was he respected? What is it? Was he not? Like generally, the in information I find very interesting. Okay. So now, welcome to day 12 of the court proceedings. The morning session pretty much didn't happen. But there was 10 minutes that it happened. And it was just about a juror that contracted the Rona. YouTube doesn't like the full word. Can't believe it. <laughs> YouTube's like, did you say the word? Oh, man. Contracted Rona. Had to be sent home. They're not, they're, they're recovering. And so an alternate had to be chosen. And then they were, but unfortunately the judge named them. And so I think now they're going to choose another one. They say, come back at one. The jury will now be in at one. And then the defense, the witness is still going to be there, Dr. Cunningham. The prosecution will cross-examine them today. Then there'll be one more expert, a Dr. Anderson, I think I heard, and three lay witnesses. So this is pretty much day 12. This is what's happening today. Yolanda Castillo says, had a friend married to Border Patrol. She found out later he had a whole other family in another town. Yeah, that's what I say. That's <laughs> Sounds like pilots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, but shame. I'm sorry for your friend. That sucks. What did I miss here quickly? Uh, okay, so I didn't miss that one. Okay, cool. So let's see. Will the defense rest today or not? Will it be life without parole? Or death penalty for Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles, a 33-year-old man convicted of murdering 27-year-old Griselda Hernandez and 18-month-old Dominic Hernandez. I really, I hope we all send a collective energy of love and support to the family and friends of Griselda and Dominic. This must be incredibly hard for them. What a long process. Phase one and phase two. Phase one of the trial was all about the verdict. There was a unanimous guilty verdict. And now phase two is all about the penalty. Will he get Al Wop, life without parole, or death row? Okay, they're back. The judge is like, ready? We're ready. <laughs> and then what? And then what? The jury's coming in now, I think. Let's let's play our intro so that we can get focused and in the zone. Please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised.
If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. Welcome back, and we're on day 12, what would be the afternoon session, but really this is the only session, because the morning session was interesting. So <laughs> it was 10 minutes, one jury's got COVID, another, an alternate has been chosen, and so we continue on today. Thank you so much all for being here. If you haven't yet, please like and share. You can use the hashtag Ronald Burgos Aviles trial and Grizzly True Crime. You guys actually shared this so much yesterday that Grizzly True Crime was trending on Twitter. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Everyone was sending that to me. You're trending on Twitter. Why? It's because of you guys. You guys were sharing it so much. And I really appreciate that because we want everybody to know what Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles did to Griselda and Dominic Hernandez on April 9th of 2018. He murdered a mother and a baby, his own child. And it seems like an attempted murder on March 25th. That's speculation. We don't know what he injected into the baby's leg, Dominic, but uh, yeah. So in the first phase of the trial, a unanimous guilty verdict was reached. And now we're in the second phase. And this is all about sentencing. This is all about is Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles going to life without parole, Gen Pop. G3 level that we'll enter in first, as uh, Timothy Fitzpatrick explained to us from the TDCJ, or is he going on death row? And we've had a lot of polls and a lot of discussions around that as well. <laughs> and as we go along, our minds change and we're watching, right? Right on, Josephine, at G, at Fury Worldwide, at Grizzly to Crime, Streamer with Integrity. Thank you so much, uh, right on, Josephine. I really appreciate it. Michelle Blake, welcome. So... Yes, here we are. The judge said they'll be back at one. Of course, it's quarter past. We know that this is actually the drill. Normally, if they say one, it means about 20 past is when they start. So we've got the, the data in our minds <laughs> of when they start. We've been here together. And every day, there's new people that join, which is why we do lots of recaps, because otherwise, new people don't know what's going on here. If, if this is the first time that you're joining us today, welcome. You can see a quick summary of the case on the top banner there. A picture of the victims on the right hand side in the description box you will see a link to the full case playlist which includes summaries that i do every week so we've had a week one and week two summary we've had um a, yeah the whole playlist for you we've done map time i've gone over many things for you and time stamped it all it's all there if you want to catch up and it does help if you look at the timestamps if you want to catch up quick because you can save yourself a bunch of time by looking at key witnesses that you want to see. Like I would recommend checking uh, Border Patrol their, the Border Patrol agents' testimonies, which was for the prosecution, like Agent Lada and Agent Dennison, who were like on the scene as Burgos discovered uh, the bodies. The medical examiner. We've got we saw the interrogation also with uh, the detectives, including Detective Reyes. So check that out as well. And we've heard jail calls. I do still want to find that timestamp for where they showed us Burgos's house and how much he'd punched holes in the wall. I believe that was from day nine in the afternoon. I'll go find it and add that to the timestamp. Um, if you have it as, as well, then you can also put timestamps in the comments. Did you know you could do that? You guys could also, if you wanted to, refer to something and say at, you know, 43 minutes and 20 seconds, can you believe this happened? So just know that <laughs> you can as well. Cheeky Lama Creation says the summaries are excellent. Oh, thank you. And each time I try to I keep it interesting, try to remind you of, you know, things that we've heard as we've watched this trial unfold. Um, so this, this, this morning around brunch time, I personally deleted the 10 minute morning stream because I wanted to protect, protect the juror's name that was out there by mistake. And sometimes if a court makes a mistake, I've got their backs too, right? It happens in many cases. You've got to block out things or mute things or cut out things, of course. So, yes, um, but there was a bit of a, a brunch session when they came back for a little bit where the defense filed for a mistrial. The judge denied that motion. Today, when there's Dr. Cunningham, he'll be on camera via Zoom again. And then there'll be a Dr. Anderson. And then there's three lay witnesses who will be testifying for the defense. And they will apparently not be shown on camera. I think one of the three will not be shown on camera and we won't be able to hear anything. So, and that is for their protection. 
So Arlene van der Feer, thank you so much. Are you from South Africa or the Netherlands or what? Or in America, like Van der Veer, <laughs> right? But van der Feer, <laughs> thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Guidance. You say yes, I believe it was towards the, that end of that day, hour to hour. Exactly. With that picture they showed of how Burgos had punched holes in the wall. Virgo71 says, I love your timestamps. It makes it so much easier to go back over some testimonies. Right? To find those key moments. And that's what I do. I put the key moments in the timestamps. Of course, there's many moments. Um, I still have to do the timestamps for yesterday. So please forgive me that I haven't yet. Today's been all over the place with the court. And yes, I did need some sleep. A <laughs> little bit of rest. And I do. I will do the timestamps. Even though... <laughs> it's going to be wish me luck actually it'll be quite a challenge to timestamp that how many pages was it in the end the 105 page <laughs> presentation that's going to be interesting to timestamp I'll just be like 105 page presentation and skip to the end here <laughs> see you in the next day uh, yes okay so oh, thank you Van says you are forgiven G thank you I'm so sorry I haven't done the timestamps also, welcome to all the mods, to all the patrons, members, everyone that supports the channel. Really appreciate all of you. If you are just watching, if you're a subscriber, thank you. You're supporting the channel too. I really appreciate it. Even if you hate watching, you're supporting the channel. Welcome lurkers. Really appreciate you. Um, this is a growing community. We are proactive. We are determined. We are protective. All of those things. Em empathic. And we even have our own trigger bunny, which triggers some people, actually. <laughs> Some people get grumpy when they see this. But anyway, here's the trigger bunny. If you see me doing this, it's when I'm not... I don't want to talk over something. And I non-verbally communicate trigger warning. I also do have this over here. Trigger warning. In case, if you see that pop up, it means, oh, there could be distressing content. The 18 means no under 18s. Okay, this content is for adults only. And so, yeah, we do trigger warnings over here. There isn't only one way to cover true crime. In case you didn't know, <laughs> I know most of you know that, but sometimes they're like, come on, man, why do you need trigger warnings if it's true crime? Because we do it with some sensitivity and tact, and we protect victims of crime and their families, and we will have trigger warnings, and we do account for mental health. You know, a lot of people struggle with a lot of things, and we acknowledge that. So, yeah. <laughs> Double Z's like, don't forget respectful, G. And respectful and kind, yes. Hasina is Hasina in the house. Hello. You like love the trigger bunny. <laughs> and Fury is here with us. In case you guys are wondering, he's just fast asleep. So yes, L M Elbrecht says best mods. Okay, so are we? What are we doing? Is this supposed to be sound? <laughs> Let's look at the time. You see, I'm telling you, twenty past, twenty five past. That's when they usually would start. I'm gonna have to fill up my water again soon. Okay. <laughs> Simon's like, what are you saying? When? <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. You say, I just love it here. First channel I ever did a paid membership on. Thank you so much. That's a scary thought. Cassandra says, I really feel that his wife and other children were dodging a bullet. He might have got them next. Ooh. Any pieces? I made you a trigger bunny on Twitter recently, lol. Really? Tag me again or send it to me on DMs. I want to see again. Yes, thank you so much, Copper Horse, for sharing the hashtag. So if you do like and share, please do it. Um, to call everyone over in case, I mean, it's a bit of a... <laughs> a bit of an up and down trial. We've got to keep up, know what's happening. When's the court on? What's going on? So if you wouldn't mind liking and sharing right now to let people... Okay, the, co the court's the trial's about to start again for day 12. You could share it with hashtag uh, Ronald, it's normally Ronald Burgos Aviles Trial or Ronald Aviles Trial, Laredo, Texas, Trial Grizzly True Crime. So thank you so much. <laughs> Tina says, if I were the judge, I would want to see the timestamp of these so-called emails, especially if he was reading when testifying. Also the content. Yes. They're definitely setting up something technical here today, or what? What are they doing? You know what I mean? Like, what, what? Things are being set up here, probably for those in preparation for the afternoon, where the lay witnesses will come in. There we go. There, we knew it. Testing. 
Absolutely, we can hear. <laughs> That's right. Black Widow trauma informed and respectful. Yes. Kiwi Jazz says, I really appreciate you watching the trials with us instead of just letting the video play nice. <laughs> oh, thank you. Imagine just letting the video play. No. We used to have one. I don't know if we still have one right now. Hit the like button one. It's a DNA one. Put your DNA on the thumbs up, you guys. Leave your DNA there. <laughs> Let's just see. I don't think we have that right now. We've made a whole bunch of other ones. Please remember to keep on sharing the purple hearts, the white ribbon, and the baby Yoda. So that we show the family lots of love and support. There, I'm sharing it now as well. Why the purple heart? The family was said to be wearing purple often in court all together to show their connectedness right and we also want to show we we are there for you we got your back the white ribbon uh, they all wore white ribbons at the candlelight vigils you know in 2018 man that must have been such a shock when they found out what happened to Griselda and Dominic and then the baby Yoda is because little Dominic had a baby Yoda shirt on in a video that we saw that was a cute video when uh, his mom said, Griselda said, who made the mess? Did you make the mess? And he's like, me. He's like, I made the mess. She's like, you made the mess? He's like, me. That was so cute. And he was wearing that shirt. So, yes. Kat Perez, welcome to Grizzly $2 Supporter. Thank you so much for sharing the Purple Hearts. Caroline says, they don't show or hear it won't stand. He will change his mind watch. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I kind of hope so. That'll be interesting. Yes, of course. SP74, purple is the symbol for DV. And for that, we have the purple ribbons, which I'll put here now. So we do have DV awareness uh, ribbons as well. We talk about a lot of DV cases as well on this channel. And yeah, the distress signal for DV. If you ever see anyone doing this, especially when there's lots of people in now, if you ever see anyone doing this, this is a DV distress signal. DV is domestic violence. We say DV because YouTube loves to flag and suppress the reach if you say certain words. It's annoying, but got to play by the rules as much as possible. Um, so, okay. So the DV distress signal. If you see someone doing this, it could just... Sometimes people's lives have been saved by just doing that because they know people will recognize it, right? Uh, if, they're, if they've been abducted or something, for, for an example. But yes, it goes like that. That's the DV distress signal. So if you see it in a restaurant or something, or like a coffee shop, cafe, uh, in the Netherlands, coffee shop means something completely else, but a cafe, okay, you're sitting there and you see someone go like, you know, like quickly, you need to call the police. You need to get help, talk to a manager, to do something. They're, they're showing you, I'm in distress, I need help. Yes. There's actually a recent story I read where someone did that in a cafe. This lady literally like, did that to someone and they were like, whoa, I know what that means. The more we share it on social media, the better. And somebody intervened. They called the manager. They said, look, this person just did the DV distress signal. They called the police. The police came in and they intervened. They safely got the, the, the victim away. And she said that she met this guy on a online dating site. And he picked her up for a date. And he drove her like many hundred miles away far far away from her home and she was so uncomfortable like let me out let me out i want to get out the car and all that and he took her to this cafe and they were just sitting there and everyone around it might have looked like pretty normal but she was like in distress so that's where that signal can come in handy and she was safe happy ending for the story he was dealt with by the police so i'm not sure what the end of that story was with it was he arrested or not what but yes girls nana says this is my only channel for trials and <laughs> thank you so much Oh my word. Sharon says, watching from Jamaica. <gasps> I don't know. Have we had anyone from Jamaica in the chat before? Welcome, Sharon. Rachel says, just wanted to thank you for making this trial available for all of us. You are an incredible human with a big, beautiful heart. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing the little Grogu's, right? Is it Grogu? With a baby Yoda, we say. Uh, Maury says, do you think a friend or family member are the ones requested not to be shown? I think so. Especially if someone's going to be defending him. 
You know what I mean? And especially maybe based on experts defending him, you know, like testifying for the defense. Maybe they saw some of the social media chats and they're scared, which that's understandable. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Tenacious says in the UK, it's asked for Angela. It's either that for or for an angel shot. I've heard that as well. That's also I've seen on TikTok too, where they say if you ask for an angel shot, like at a bar, that's also a signal. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Bets George says South Africans have big hearts. South Africans do have big hearts. There's no culture I've met like in South Africa. Damn. Yeah, South Africa's got big hearts. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're waiting for court. We are waiting. Heavenly Presley, thank you so much for your two. Is that Canadian dollar super chat? Really appreciate it. <laughs> Katie says, I don't know how anyone could defend him. Right? It's bad enough for defense attorneys. But we, I don't know. I, we read an article before where his mom was saying that she believes he's innocent. And then we read about like a girlfriend that said she wants to become a jailer and she thinks he's innocent. So yeah, we, they are, there are, there will be people out there. There always is in every case, either that are part of a fan club or they think they're innocent or just, just can't process that like this person could have done that. They, they, they know them, right? Well, clearly a version of them. Okay. So just want to see what it is right now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Janice said, you deserve all the rest you can get. Oh, thank you. Let's just see quickly. Your screen is glitching. If your screen is glitching, yeah, refresh. Okay. So let's, uh, you know how it goes when I play the coffee tunes, they come back. So let's see if it, <laughs> if we can work it that way. <laughs> Let's listen to the coffee tunes and then we'll be right back.
Okay, I'm here. I just wanna... You guys, I just really wanna go get more water. I'm so thirsty today. <laughs> I'm thirsty like Burgos. Have you seen how he's like... Click, click. Remember, in the interrogation, he's like, more, more water? Another water. So it looks like they're having some technical difficulties here. Uh, let's put this song on here for you. Okay, there's no sound there yet. And I'll be right back. back <laughs> to all of you who don't like the commentary did you enjoy that just looking at my chair <laughs> was it fun <laughs> okay so they still shame 
shame, Court. They're still struggling with technical problems. It's okay. They need a Dieter in there. Dieter! <laughs> we need to get Dieter. If you don't know who Dieter is, you've got to check out my second channel. You can find everything on my website if you want to. Is this the cameraman? We can see the top of his head. Hello! <laughs> okay. Damn. <laughs> this is BS, people say. Uh, yeah, sass on the chair. Um, it's now, wow, Texas time. This trial is no amount of smooth sailing. Did you guys know that people are telling me that the YNW Melee trial is much worse than this? I find that really hard to believe. Really hard. <laughs> yeah, someone's saying, who's Dieter? You need to see meet Dieter on my second channel. <laughs> Um, I can't imagine a trial being more tardy and this is not their fault. Technical problems can happen. Especially if there's a new motion and they don't want to show witnesses and they've got to set up the cameras differently and the sound and all of that stuff. Yep. So if you're confused and you're only joining now, w welcome. We are waiting for a court to start actually today. That is what we are doing. Let me actually share this to Twitter. If you haven't yet, please do it as well. Let's do it at the same time. Like, share. Hashtag Ronald Burgas Aviles trial. Hashtag Laredo. Hashtag Grizzly True Crime. Okay. So let me share it quickly and then I can just tell people that we are here waiting. If I missed any members joining or stickers or anything while I got up, sorry about that. I was monitoring, but if I missed anything, sorry about that. <laughs> Jared Daniel says, as previous military and law enforcement in Texas, he is a disgrace to the badge. And thank you so much for your comment, your sticker. And as a as previous military and law enforcement here in Texas, he is a disgrace to the badge. I can only imagine what you guys must all be feeling, right? Wow. Yeah, Tracy Williams says, many trial 10 times worse. I can't imagine it. Well, glad we're covering this one then. <laughs> sure. Okay. Oh, I need to charge. Let's share this to Twitter. Ronald Burgos Aviles trial. If you just start typing it in on Twitter as well with the hashtag, it already auto fills it for you. And let me just tell them. There we go. Okay. Yep, they're testing the sound. And for those of you who thought my coffee cup was big yesterday, wait till you see this one. <laughs> this one is much, much bigger. I like big coffee cups. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's just over here where I was monitoring. The Daryl Brooks trial was, that was bad. I watched quite a bit of that one. <laughs> that was, that was terrible. I agree. Ooh, that one really required patience. Huh? Uh, Tater Todd 99 full says, <laughs> remember the other day when I was trying to say your name in Spanish. <laughs> Sorry about that. Request for motion for mistrial denied. That was a good moment today. Yes. The request for the motion to mistrial was denied. Hashtag justice for Griselda and Dominic. Love listening to you, G. Thank you. Yeah, we can add that hashtag. Oh, we're seeing the seal again. Uh, Warrior Woman says, At Grizzly to Crime, if Angelica, Gray's sister, and Gray's mom can sit up on that stand, then these defense witnesses can get over themselves. <laughs> right? Unless they really, really threaten and their lives are really in danger because they maybe defend this guy? I don't know. That's interesting. I am wearing gray today. I was thinking, you know, Griselda's nickname is Grey. So I went with this for today. Yes. <laughs> Marta, thank you so much. Welcome to Grizzly $1 supporter. Ah, Suzanne, I wish I watched that one live with you guys. That one I summarized. But I wish that was a live stream one. That was hectic. Yeah, Perneal says that, was, that is a big cup. It's a boss coffee cup. <laughs> this is a boss coffee cup. <laughs> That's where hump, hump, I don't know, hump, humped, humpty. You said the other day, 
This is not a cup, it's a vase. It's a vase. We need lots of coffee here. Yes, indeed. So, okay. <laughs> Word. We don't, we're running out of summaries even. What are we supposed to summarize when we wait for so long? Because it's, like, it's going to start any minute. It's going to start. So you don't want to get too into something because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be starting. But when? <laughs> Shame. They wanted to start at 1. It just did not happen. We've got to learn, guys. 2 o'clock. When, when I'm joking, sometimes I'm like 1, which means 2. Well, it is going to be probably 2 today. Yes. Pippi Longstock, Longstocking says gray is the color of wisdom. I really do like the color, yes. Yeah, yeah. Stefan says Holders and Trial was amazing. But Stefan, imagine how amazing it would have been if we were all there together like this. Wow. I almost want to go over my presentation again. My recap presentation, huh? Summary? You want to go over some summaries. <laughs> Maybe we should start one, because that's when they get started. Michelle Schipper says, the only thing the defense has left to throw is the kitchen sink. Yeah. They really... We've seen a lot of low blows. <laughs> Today was another one. Although there were some good points made. Oh, now the chat is stuck on my side. That's right, Peter Pronzo. More coffee takes you to a <laughs> quadruple A level. Okay, let's try to get that chat going. Susie, thanks for being a member for six months. Jean says, couldn't have done this during lunch break or the entire morning since there was no morning session. <laughs> it's pretty annoying. It's pretty annoying. Okay. Well, there's the judge's head. I see the judge. Is it happening? Are you coming back? Uh, Dinah says, can you do a ro we I've done it. You can look at my video section. There's two videos for you, each about 25 minutes long. Of all the highlights, all the key witnesses, everything you need to catch up on. Yeah. What do you mean now? You mean now? Well, depends how long they take here. Please. The defendant is in the courtroom with counsel. Lena Bay makes a good point. The witnesses are being paid. They must have known in the beginning it was a televised trial. Right? Oh, somebody's mic is on close to paper. <laughs> so that's how it sounds when, when I tell you guys I'm checking my notes. No excuses, no mistrial. We need Judge Judy again. Where is she? Here we go. You tell them, Judge Judy. Yes, sir. Please rise for the jury. I just, I'm wondering whose mic is on. Dinah, welcome. Thank you, Terry, for telling everyone about the Grizzly family. Paper mic. <laughs> Welcome to day 12 of the trial. Which starts how long into it? We've been live for two hours and 34 minutes. Please have a seat, thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Um, as you know, we have uh, we have had to discharge uh, one of the jurors as a result of 
the disability uh, of that juror from sitting or continuing to sit as a juror. Under 3629 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, we have acted uh, in accordance and uh, the first alternate that was called during our jury selection officially replaced that juror and is now a juror in the case uh, and will stay on through deliberations. Um, very well. You have already been sworn in along with the rest of the jurors, so we do not need to swear you in to any other oath. You've already taken the oath. Okay. There has been no uh, objection from any of the parties. Uh, and I'll ask uh, once again from the state side, there is no objections, is that correct? No objections, Your Honor. And from the defense? No objections. Thank you, sir. Very well. Let's proceed, and I know we had under cross-examination, Dr. Cunningham, he is, uh, let me see, let me lower my screen here. He is, um, oops, on, and will be spotlighted along with counsel for the state, and the defense. Bend them Thank you. You may proceed when ready. Thank you, Adam. Good afternoon, Dr. Cunningham. Good afternoon. Again, my name is Marisa Jackman, and I'm prosecutor on the, um, for the state. And I wanted just to, uh, since we had a little break, uh, Finished with the opinion that you stated yesterday regarding um, the sentencing issue uh, at hand because this is a death penalty case. And uh, can you hear me? I can't, thank you. Th okay. Were you able to hear what I just said? I was, thank you. Now, you uh, gave an opinion yesterday as to the probability of Mr. Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles. The, um, his, the future danger or the likelihood, and as you put it, the probability um, of him committing future acts of violence. And I believe your testimony was that he is quite unlikely to commit serious violence in TDCJ. And uh, you also said he is less likely to commit serious violence in prison that, uh, than other inmates and other capital offenders. And I'd like to discuss that uh, with you today. One, one second, can you show? Now, Your, Your Honor, uh, just for housekeeping rules, uh, will the court uh, allow us to uh, use the exhibit that was introduced yesterday? Will uh, Dr. Cunningham be using controlling it, or will we be you allowed to, to use it? You can. Okay, thank you. You have it on, on your computer? Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. Okay. Now, Dr. Cunningham, uh, statis statistically speaking, if you had assessed Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles on the morning of April 9th, 2018, the day of the murders, he would have been a, a low risk uh, for violence, correct? Uh, 
if he had not been contemplating the tragic death of these two victims, he would be a low risk of violence. Obviously, if he had been contemplating that already and was assessed and was candid about that, he would be a marked risk of violence. Okay. And so, so the purpose of you saying, or the, the reason you're saying, if there had been some evidence of premeditation, then that would have been a higher risk, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, uh, because we know, even though the factors that were used by you when you decided to consider the base, uh, I'm not sure how you put it, base stats, and you have this, uh, it is on uh, your slide 18 when you said, the knowledge of the appropriate base rate is the most important single piece of information necessary to make an accurate prediction. Is that what you meant by you need to consider uh, stats that are based on uh, similar uh, characteristics uh, as Mr. Ronald Anthony Borgo Savides, correct? Uh, broadly similar, that's correct. Yes. So that if, if we said we've got a 29 year old law enforcement mm -hmm. officer uh, without a criminal record, what's the likelihood he will murder someone today? Right. That likelihood would be extraordinarily small. There may be other factors that you would feed in in the midst of a domestic dispute or a child custody dispute with, uh, you know, pending child support, with the knowledge of this not being known to his wife. It may be as you built in some additional factors that that risk would increase. But, but on a broad demographic, uh, it, you would identify that he was at low risk. Yes, and, and now we know that he did in fact commit two murders on that day, even though st statistically speaking, he was a low risk, correct? Based so, on those broad demographics, that's correct. Right, now, uh, which leads me to uh, uh, the idea that, uh, and I believe you stated in your book that it is important and the law requires that we have an individualized assessment of the defendant in a death penalty case. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, did you conduct uh, an, an interview of Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles? I did not. Okay. Now, I individualized this to him based on other information and other factors. Will you t uh, state? Uh, which, what evidence, what information you used so that you could individualize that? Uh, his jail records, uh, his employment records, uh, about three hours of the interrogation uh, video, uh, information provided to me by the uh, defense regarding his education level. Um, that was the basic fund of information. And, and of course many studies and by the many studies that you're referring to are the um, uh, all the information all the studies that you provided yesterday regarding statistics um, that included Missouri Arizona Florida federal cases correct Oregon Arizona uh, yes yeah, some data nationwide that's correct now when you are conducting a, a, a study based on stats or statistics um, it is important to make sure that the underlying base or as you put it the the base rates that they are similar to whatever it is that you're comparing to correct I'm, I'm not sure I'm tracking the question it, it obviously you want your data that you're basing the comparisons on to be as accurate and complete as possible. Yes, and you also want them to be consistent. For example, um, uh, you would like that the underlying uh, defendants or convicted murders in those jurisdictions should have been uh, similar to the standards that are similar to what the jury needs to assess, correct? Well, no, ma'am, that, that's not particularly correct. Uh, we make comparisons of state prison inmates broadly. He will be a state prison inmate. We made assessments of inmates uh, facing life sentences. He will be facing a life sentence. Uh, we make comparisons of persons in higher security. He will be in higher security. 
We made comparisons of individuals convicted of homicide. He's been convicted of homicide. We even made comparisons of persons with multiple domestic homicides. And so it's not essential that the exact sentencing procedure be in place in order to make meaningful comparisons. So, but that would be your discretion and because you don't know exactly the terminology or the, the how they kept records. So for example, and I'm gonna give one example where uh, I know that one of your stats discussed the type of violations that would occur in a, in a particular study. And there was an indication that uh, violence did not include threats or the violence that was it was reported it was not it would not be reported if it was consensual uh, fights between two consenting adults is that correct in some situations that 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 the reporting may be different in different jurisdictions is that a proper statement yes or no uh, no ma'am I don't think that that's that that's accurate uh, uh, the, you know broadly I talked about a range of disciplinary infractions that included threats and in, and in most of our studies we captured that information the sorts of things that are against the rules in Texas are based are against the rules in every state prison jurisdiction it isn't as if somehow Texas has special rules about assaults that other jurisdictions don't it, exactly but like you said similar they're not the same and so it would have been a more compelling argument uh, if you would have used statistics from the state of Texas using the same type of uh, assessments that you had done from other jurisdictions, correct? It could have been. Well, ma'am, I, I, I extensively described Texas studies. I described other jurisdictions as well. The findings are quite consistent uh, across those, those different jurisdictions. And it's broadly regarded in the field of penology or prison science that these results generalize from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, particularly across the state prisons. Okay, now let me ask you this. Uh, you, have, um, you have been retained by the defense as an expert witness, correct? I was. And are you getting paid for your testimony? I'm paid for my time. Okay, and is that on an hourly basis? Yes. And your duties, what does that cover for you uh, when you are uh, providing these services? In addition to reviewing um, the, uh, the video statements, um, what other things are covered with your duties? Objection in the form uh, of the question, Your Honor. It's, it's, I didn't understand it. What? If you understood it, Dr. Cunningham. I like some clarification. I can ask your I, I think I understand, Your Honor. So, professional duties for a psychologist um, are 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 broad and detailed across many different arenas. So you could consult uh, both the ethical guidelines and code of conduct for psychologists, and also the specialty guidelines for forensic uh, psychologists. Uh, so there are, there are extensive obligations that a psychologist has in undertaking a, a professional consultation or evaluation. In particular, in this case, for the punishment uh, uh, or the capital sentencing uh, phase of this trial, correct? Yes, ma'am. The graver the implications, mm -hmm. the more important the obligations. And in your uh, book, uh, evaluation for capital sentencing, you describe the different roles that a psychologist may take. And uh, it's, it's, in, uh, it's on page 112 of your book, and you describe that there are different roles that a, psycholo uh, a forensic psychologist can take. And you said direct evaluator, indirect evaluator, and a teaching witness. Correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, you also emphasize the importance, uh, it, because this is a death penalty case, on individuali individualizing the evaluation um, on uh, particularly regarding 
Mr. Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles. That is critical for uh, a, a true and compelling opinion on whether or not he is a future danger or the future dangerous issue, correct? Well, no, ma'am. The book doesn't address this defendant at all, and it was written a, a decade ago, and so it doesn't address him specifically. It, it does talk about the importance of doing a thorough evaluation of adverse developmental factors, mitigation uh, in the defendant's background, even going back several generations, uh, to very thoroughly uh, explore that. Uh, and for the violence risk assessment for prison to be informed by the best available science. Yes. Uh, and and if, if presented, if either of those are presented as a teaching witness, there might only be a description of the underlying science. Alternatively, there may be a description of that underlying science that is individualized to a specific defendant uh, based on records or interviews of family or other people. Uh, it may include even being based on an interview with the defendant. So those are those three levels. All of them include the science. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, an, another one includes the science plus particularizing it based on, on information that's gained about the defendant without interviewing the defendant. And then the third uh, potential is the science, the records, and other sources, and an interview of the defendant. And uh, I believe in your uh, book, you stated, the most complete individualized evaluation includes review of records, interviews of third parties, and direct interview assessment of the defendant. And in light of that, direct evaluative contact with the capital defendant is considered the best practice and should be requested by the mental health professional in all cases. Now yesterday, when Mr. Boggs asked you what was requested of you, did you, in light of your statement in your book, ask to, to give the best, or as you put it, the best practice so that you can implement the best practice, did you request uh, to have direct evaluation, evaluative contact with Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles? Yes or no? It's, it's, a, it's a simple question. I can't answer that question, yes or no, the way you phrased it. So in the statistics that you used, these did not include particularized characteristics that Mr. Ronald Anthony Burgos may have, correct? That's totally incorrect. You, uh, now let me ask you then, did your statistics take into consideration issues such as Did it take into consideration the level of deception that the jury, that's in evidence, that was part of the things that you reviewed, because you reviewed the video, correct? I did. Not, not in its totality. I think he was actually interviewed for about 12 hours. Uh, was in the room for about 12 hours. I, I testified uh, that I observed several hours. Objection, non-responsive, if he can... It, he's it responsive. I it believe it was responsive, directly responsive. You you said that you interviewed. Your Honor, may we approach for a second? This court cam must be careful not to show any of the jurors. Okay. So, okay, they're approaching. It's 
um, one law, 214, said she should ask him the same question that jurors asked. Is he opposed to the death penalty? And let him expand on that. Is he opposed to the death penalty? Would be such a good question to ask him because that's going to... <laughs> he, he will tell us he probably is. So I think yesterday someone also said he's he seems to be, you know, which is why he's one of the defense's witnesses. Look at Burgos. Looking oh so happy. Now in in the sections or the part of the interview that you reviewed, was at the beginning of the interview? Well, yes ma'am, it began with him being sitting alone in the room for some period of time. I skipped through that pretty rapidly and then the two officers came in to uh, interview room two uh, and interviewed him Wait for the Most of the time, two of them. Sometimes one of them. Now I'm going to. Wait for the next question. Okay. I'm going to ask you. I, I I will ask you a specific question and ask you to limit your answer to answering my question. Um, and if you feel that you need to add information, you can wait until uh, Mr. Boggs uh, uh, asks you regarding whatever it is that you'd like to add. No, ma'am, I took an oath to tell the whole truth, not the whole truth if I was then asked a clarifying question on redirect. So I will answer in a way that I believe reflects the whole truth. Well, then let me ask you, did you did you skip through the first part of the interview uh, and not view Mr. Burgos Avila's conduct while he was waiting to be interviewed? Yes or no? Did you view that? Only in spots did I review him sitting in the room alone. Did you see his behavior where he was biting his nails? I observed him biting his nails uh, at another time in the interview when he was sitting alone. Did you see him licking and rubbing his arms and under his shirt and unbuckling his belt to, as though he's looking for something? I did not. Okay. Did you see uh, him whispering or rehearsing uh, some sort of lines? Judge, uh, object to the characterization of, of the evidence. The evidence speaks for itself. This thing, that, that's, uh, it does speak for itself. I think you did, did you see his response when he was faced with the facts of, the, of what was presented that day? That the victim was there and she was there and it was known she was going to meet Anthony Burgos <coughs> with a child at the park and it was a border patrol agent and faced with that that his response was that it was a major coincidence did you see that part I didn't see the first confrontation that was not among the tapes that were provided I did see uh, that that uh, that discussion in subsequent uh, aspects of the interview where he was denying that uh, uh, that they had planned to meet. And, and did you see how his concern was not the two individuals that had just been found dead, but his concern was that he was embarrassed uh, because he was arrested and wearing his Border Patrol uniform. I, I don't recall the expression of, uh, of embarrassment. Uh, I do recall in that interrogation that he was focused on that process of being accused as opposed to the victims. Okay. Are you aware that these crimes occurred while he was in his uniform? Yes. And he was um, in a kilo unit belonging to the Customs and Border Protection. Yes. And that he reported finding the bodies using property that belonged to uh, Border and Customs. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to your. Uh, your slides but before I do that 
I know you mentioned that you have a legal and ethical duty as a forensic psychologist and uh, there's I believe you are subject to specialty guidelines for forensic psychology and you're very familiar with those I can't answer that question yes or no there's not a legal obligation under the specialty guidelines there's not even necessarily an ethical obligation under the specialty guidelines because those are aspirational in nature but they do reflect an aspirational standard that psychologists should uh, seek to uphold and, and I do as well and so uh, for I, I'm going to be directing my attention to uh, a special specialty guidelines for forensic psychology adopted August 3rd 2011 section 902 and it's entitled use of multiple sources of information and it states forensic pr practitioners ordinarily avoid relying solely on one source of data and corroborate important data whenever feasible when relying upon data that has not been corroborated, forensic practitioners seek to make known the uncorroborated status of the data, any associated strength and limitations, and the reasons for relying upon that data. Now, uh, when you testified yesterday, um, did you did you believe it was important to say that uh, it, the part of the individualized uh, aspect of your opinion it's that you even in your book recommend a direct examination of the defendant um, I, I am unable to follow the question entirely and also it's compound so that I can't simply answer yes or no do you recommend in your book that the best evaluation is to have a discussion or an interview with the defendant. Yes or no? No, I, no, I don't think that's how it's characterized in the book. And if you'll, direct, if you'll direct me to a page number, I'll get my text off the shelf and we can both turn to it. And it's on page 112 under application. And and Did you mind if I step up to get my book off the shelf? Absolutely not. That's fine. Oh, my word. I was afraid he wasn't wearing pants. GSD mom says, isn't, it, isn't his responsibility to view evidence in its entirety in order to provide a fully informed testimony? One would think so. Right? Oh, we need the sound back on. Yes, ask him if he's against the death penalty. Now, it's, it says, the, uh, it's discussing individualizing the evaluation, and it's in bold. And then it says, though all three of the potential expert roles, and that's referring to the direct evaluator, indirect evaluator and teaching witness correct yes, yes. or no uh, involves foundational science testimony they differ in the extent to which the expert individualizes this research to the defendant's history the most complete no ma'am no ma'am you've uh, you've skipped through a parenthesis there in that line individual individualizes applies with specificity this research to the defendant's history the most complete individualized evaluation includes reviews of records, interviews of third parties, and direct interview assessment of the defendant. Is that how it's written in your book? Yes or no? That's correct. Thank you. And so you, you, you do say that such, and I'm going to skip down of about seven lines, it says such direct evaluative contact is essential for neuropsychological assessment or psychological let me let me catch up to the seven lines yes such a evaluative contact is essential for neuropsychological assessment or psychological testing as well as to describe contemporaneously observed 
psychological characteristics or establish a current psychological diagnosis. Correct? Yes. Then uh, it, it, it discusses some of the things that, that can be discovered by a psychological, a forensic psychologist and we don't need to go through that. I want to go down to, in light of the above, all the things that, that can be uh, viewed by a forensic psychologist that would be pertinent to, di to discovering or for giving an opinion as to future danger. It's no, ma'am. Look, look, turn to, to direct to me exactly where you are. I'm, I'm going to, it's one. Because I don't mention future, I, I don't say the term future danger in this text except to clarify that that's not the issue. Well, then go back to the previous page where it says forensic mental health can you need to tell him exactly where you're at so that we can follow along, so that you can follow along, otherwise we're going to have uh, uh, delays in the testimony and stuff. Tell him exactly where so you're at. So on the previous page, page where it says... I'm sorry, try not to talk over me, please. Uh, the page number where you're at in the paragraph and line number. Page 112, where it says info. Oh, in the text box. It says forensic mental health professionals may perform one of the following three roles at capital sentencing trials. Yes. So this and is... And it specifies the three. Yes, sir. It doesn't and say future danger. But it is referring to capital sentencing trials, correct? Yes, ma'am. At this point, primarily okay, focused you. on evaluations of mitigation. Objection, but also Your Honor. Non-responsive. Risk assessment for prison. I wait for the question. In light of the above, direct, so and now I'm going to pay the next page, which is 113. And it's. Let me catch up, hold it. Which line on 113? Six lines up. And it's. Yes, six. I see that. Thank you. In light of the above, direct evaluative contact with the capital defendant is considered the best practice and should be requested by the mental health professional in all cases. Is that in your book, yes or no? It is, yes. Thank you. Now, I'm going to now refer to your slideshow. How do I go into that? It should have been. Word. I feel bad. <laughs> Sorry for her. District Attorney Maricela Jassaman taking on Go ahead and share screen. Is that fine? Mark Cunningham. It's already ready for you to. I agree. Valen, she's putting her base foot forward while the world watches. Cautiously approaching the topic. Are you able to see this, Dr. Cunningham? I am. Thank you. Thank I am. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no. We're back to the presentation, you guys. Page one. <laughs> and so how do I go down this? Thank you, Victoria. Why don't you uh refer to your slide uh, entitled risk assessment techniques and uh, you uh, give a weight and you say the more scientific um, assessment techniques are the actuarial which is the group statistical um, and uh, yesterday you, you testified that's the insurance company method and then I believe the arrow pointing down is indicating that it becomes less scientific um, as with the next, with number two, the past pattern behavior. The third one is intensive clinical evaluation. Um, and then four and five is you, you, it's a hypothetical inference. And then five uh, is when you gave uh, the example, I believe, of the fly, flying an airplane, correct? Is that, am I on the, on the right page here? Yes. Okay. Now, not, not a flying an airplane, but of air, of billboards of airline crashes in airport concourses. Okay, and so 
the, you yesterday were uh, referring to, during your testimony, to the actuarial, uh, uh, which is the group statistical information, correct? That and the past pattern approach. Now, uh, isn't it true that if you had had the actuarial and the past pattern of behavior and, as you stated in your book, the intensive clinical evaluation of Mr. Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles, that that would be a more comprehensive interview or a comprehensive evaluation and assessment of the future dangerousness issue? No, ma'am. There is no future dangerousness issue. There is a special issue of a probability of acts of a certain severity that would constitute a continuing threat to society. There is no future dangerousness issue. Okay, then, if you had the actuarial, the past pattern of behavior, the intensive clinical evaluation, if you had those three risk assessment techniques, you would better and it would be a more compelling opinion that of determining whether Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles, if there was a probability that he would commit criminal acts of violence that would constitute a continued threat to society. If all three of these assessments were used, would that be a more comprehensive and more compelling opinion? I can't answer that yes or no, but I could make a brief clarification. Would that, would using the intensive clinical evaluation have complied with the individualizing the assessment that you provided yesterday? Yes or no? I did individualize the assessment yesterday, so I can't answer that question yes or no the way you phrased it without being misleading. My question is, would an interview of, Robert, uh, of Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles provided? Judge, an objection, this is just badgering. He's answered the question that it's impossible the way it's phrased without it being misleading. You're going to rephrase it. I'm, I'm trying to rephrase it, Your Honor. Would your interview of Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles provided personality characteristics that would have been pertinent in your assessment for determining whether the probability that Mr. Burgos would commit criminal acts of violence that would constitute a continuing threat to society? No, those personality characteristics would not have been informative of that. There is history, had he been candid about it, that would have been informative of his risk in the very short term, like over the next couple of weeks. And that would have included that he was using testosterone and phenardrine and an anti-estrogen compound, those things associated with elevating the risk of impulsive aggression and unwanted aggression. Uh, had he uh, been candid about his uh, potential child support payments and not having revealed the presence of a loved child to his spouse uh, and the jeopardy that this might be, the combination and, and had he been candid about his frustrations or anxieties that would have been, all of those things would have informed an assessment, had he been candid about them, of his risk within the next couple of weeks. Not his long-term risk and not about his personality characteristics, but rather about the particular context that was driving and working on him at that time. But Dr. Cunningham, you did not interview him, so you don't know if he would have been candid. Yes or no? Don't know that he would have. Right, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Now I'm going to refer, uh, direct your attention to the sentencing considerations that we discussed 
or that you discussed um, in uh, uh, with with Mr. Boggs yesterday, and you mentioned that the first two uh, you did not want to discuss because that was within, I get, believe you said, up to the jury. Is that a proper statement? Well, it's, it's not that I didn't want to discuss them. It's that I'm here as an expert, and experts, and psychology experts, have no particular expertise in what punishment a given offense uh, calls for or general deterrence in terms of a message that's sent to larger society. So those are legitimate questions. They're just questions for a jury and a judge. They're, they're beyond the pay grade and expertise of a psychologist. And you are aware that the law provides under 30, 37071 that the law provides that the jury may consider evidence of the defendant's background. Yes? Yes. Yes. C character or character? Yes. And the circumstances of the offense? Yes. Okay. And even though you testified yesterday that statistically the facts of the case however heinous they may be do not have a bearing statistically as to whether the probability that mr ronald anthony burgos would commit criminal acts of violence that would constitute a continued threat to society correct the severity of the offense does not predict that including having killed two victims and but, as, he, as he is going to be confined for life in prison yes and so again even though statistically that is not considered uh, a, a, a I, I believe a risk factor of uh, for special issue number one it is something that can be considered by this jury who's listened to the facts and the evidence to apply the proper punishment correct well, yes, ma'am, I'm not speaking about, the, the, you about second, the punishment. You missed that good. Judge, the state is conflating and confusing the two different special issues, believe me. Uh, approach, please. Nicole said, if snarky facial expressions were admissible in court, I'd be screwed too. Right? It's going to be the next mistrial motion. These YouTubers raising their eyebrow. <laughs> Non-verbally communicating on a stream. Wow. Sure, this is definitely more intense than yesterday. Very interesting. I <laughs> tell you, Boggs, we know by now, Boggs is like, I object. And yeah, earlier he said, I was worried he's not wearing pants. What? He was worried he's not wearing pants when he got up to get his own book. Interesting. Ben, welcome. Welcome to membership. But he never once met Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles. So that is a big, big factor. Number one, they should just ask that again. Did you ever meet and interact with, interview Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles? No. Do you believe in the death penalty? You'll be like, Probably, probably speculating. No. Ah, okay. Very interesting. <laughs> so are you here to advocate for him because you believe he'll be a very, very good boy in life without parole? Uh, with the life without parole sentencing. G3. Gen Pop. Will he be good? Yeah, he'll be a very good boy. That's where he deserves to go. <laughs> okay. End of questioning. Thank you. Yeah, Johnny says, give the jury more credit. They know he's biased. Yes, I think the jury would know as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and Fitzpatrick, if you guys um, didn't see Timothy Fitzpatrick's testimony, it is timestamp for you. I think that was on day nine. He's on the thumbnail as well. And uh, he was from the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. And he told us a lot about life without parole versus death row. You know, all the differences how everything works, how they risk assess the inmates. I mean, they're going to be risk assessing the inmates there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So wherever he goes, but if he gets life without parole, they're still going to do it. So I don't know really what this is helping. Because 
this witness has never met him, never studied him. It's just very general. And I mean, how can anyone know? It's, you don't have a crystal ball. You don't know. No one knew he's going to do this, what he did, what he's been convicted of. And no one knows what he'll do in the future either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Peter Pranzo says, uh, Egregi, excellent push and pull between the prosecution and the defense. Let's have a look what he's doing here. He's doodling again. Yeah, Allison says he's strictly believing only what he's dealing. You, <laughs> you get an F, sir. And someone earlier, Tony said, we don't know what he watched or researched, only he knows this. And Paul said he's, he's seen what the defense wants him to see. P. Cooper says he's so angry, I wonder what was said in email. <laughs> wonder what was said in email. I think his book is quite controversial from what I've researched a bit. I'm not going to show it. I'm not here to promote a book. Oh, hell no. But <laughs> I'm sure you could Google it. Um, I, I believe it's quite controversial. And... I do wonder now, because if they said that he was receiving emails during his testimony, was he receiving emails during his testimony? Maybe his email address is public. You can just put his name into Google, go to his site, there's his email address, like contact me, okay? So, uh, right, there's that, number one. Number two, was he reading emails or was he reading perhaps the live chat <laughs> and seeing that this was not going as well as he had thought? With his 188,000 page presentation. To show that Burgos will be extremely tame. Very low risk. Very well behaved. Like we don't care. <laughs> you know. Of course he'll manipulate any system he's in. To get the best for himself. That's what they all have to do. It's called survival. In prison. <laughs> Ulrika Guevara. Welcome to Grizzly $1 Supporter. Caroline says, try suing a therapist for their patient who goes on a rampage. The psychiatrist will cite endless proof that they cannot predict squat. And that is the truth. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Maralise says, uh, the defendant has no consideration of anyone but himself. Also, members, thank you. If you saw... Yeah, I pinned the message for you. Because slow-mo doesn't apply to members. And we have a lot of members, which is really great. I'm very grateful. It... it it's str we struggle to regulate the speed of the chat, so it's like a blur for all of us, <laughs> everybody. And then, of course, non-members can't get a word in, which we want everyone to be able to get a word in. So if you could just type a little bit less frequently, it helps a lot to regulate the speed of the chat, so the mods can also keep the chat grisly, as we say, which is uh, kind, respectful, and all of that. Are we allowed to have an opinion that this presentation is bullcuck? Absolutely. <laughs> We're allowed to say that. Are we allowed to... We can do what we want, but not here. What would be at the standard is be kind, don't bully people. So let's not attack his physical appearance. But are we allowed to laugh that Bog said, I thought he wasn't wearing pants. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I'll have to clip that when I find that at the timestamp. Oh, see, Chinny says, everyone ready for the break? It's coming off to sidebar. Oh, no. Let's see Texas time. You're probably right. 14.40. No, please, let's proceed. Warrior Woman says, The big book of psychology, DSM-5, clearly states that a psychologist must meet with a client in order to diagnose them. Exactly. This guy is a forensic psychologist. Mark Cunningham. I suppose I should put doctor in front of that. Sorry about that. <laughs> that wasn't intentional. Dr. Mark Cunningham. And uh, he did not meet with Burgos. I mean, many of us, many locals, many law enforcement are concerned about what did this guy ever do before this? Because that is a pretty savage thing to do at age 28, just randomly and the way he did it, you know, the way that he did it to murder a mother and a baby. What did he ever do before? So to be like, nope, nope, he'll be just fine. He'll be fine. Johnny. <laughs> Johnny says, congrats on 180k subs. Gives that. Oh, thank you so much. Is that what we just hit? Oh, my word. Yeah, it's literally like 180, 180000. Damn, Johnny. <laughs> you must have just caught that. Thank you so much. 
Okay, what are we hearing? Yeah, Kerry says, lol, he certainly is a threat. I mean, with all his training, apparently in the US Navy, and then also as a Border Patrol supervisory officer, all the training is done and everything. I mean, he is, even just for that, he is a threat. He knows how to, I think he'll be the best candidate to look for a way to escape or find a complacency or, you know, a vulnerability in the system based on what he knows as a Border Patrol, a former Border Patrol supervisory officer. Because that was his job, <laughs> like looking for vulnerabilities, right? Border Patrol. So if he's used to looking for vulnerabilities and seeing, you know, um, and protecting the borders, I think in prison he could use that to his advantage. Marisa G, almost 11K, all looking for justice, not excuses. That's right. Don't ever forget why we're here, you guys. This is why we're here. Griselda, Dominic, and their family. Yes, Pistol Amy, I remember you were predicting it by the weekend. Nice, congrats. Oh, thank you. Is today Thursday? I think it's Thursday today. Wow. Do you want me to go no, you can, if you want. Now, uh, Dr. Uh, Cunningham, when you testified yesterday that the fact that there was more than one person that was killed, uh, that it was irrelevant to your operational or to your statistical finding um, or, or assessments, it was limited to that, correct? Judge, uh, objection. The question was humble. Yesterday you testified that the, and, and let me see if I can find it. I, I won't go to that. I'll find it real quickly. Let me find the one that says more than two people. the testimony regarding uh, it, more than one person's death and how that was not considered relevant in your statistical findings? No, ma'am. I never testified it was not relevant. I testified that it was a factor to consider. In one of the studies that I cited, we, I identified that there was not a statistical difference in the prison misconduct of homicide offenders who had killed one person versus who had killed two persons. Then on slides 102 and 103, I cited a study that compared offenders who had killed more than one person in a domestic uh, homicide context to about 14,000 other homicide offenders in the state of Texas who had killed only one person and identified that those that had killed multiple people in a domestic homicide were uh, dramatically lower. If you go to slide 103, we can depict that. They were dramatically lower in terms of level one violations and assaulted misconducts. Uh, once you got out to those with injuries, uh, they both had very low rates. And so that was a factor that I, that I looked at, reported on. And so it's, it's not fair to say I said it was not relevant it was not predictive of an increased risk of violence in prison and with multiple domestic homicides was even associated with a lower risk of level one and assaultive misconduct. Now, but again, that's reflected in the bar graphs on 103 if you want to go there. I'm going to go to, instead to slide 99 where and it's, it's entitled, Are Capital Offenders Who Have Killed Multiple Victims More Violent in Prison? 
and um, you said this offense feature was not associated with an increased prison violence. Is that the proper? Is that how you test? How you testified yesterday? That's correct regarding that study. There were two other studies that I then described. Now, do you uh, know? Do you know that this was not a domestic? Crime? Je uh, objection to well, mischaracterization of the evidence, Judge. Cool. Uh, I would characterize this as a domestic crime as it involved the homicide of an intimate and the, the associated child of that union, however, uh, out of wedlock. Now, I'm going to go to your uh, slide number seven. And you gave us uh, two definitions of probability. One was more likely than not, and the second one is Disproportionate, disproportionately likely as compared to other defendants, correct? Yes. And when you described the second um, definition of probability, you said that this was your psychological operationalized definition, correct? No, ma'am. I said this was, uh, these are two operational definitions of probability that I was making use of as a forensic psychologist and are as employed by violence risk assessment experts. And uh, the psychological, op what is the proper term? Psychological operationalized definition? Oh, is, is that I how I- I would call it psychological. I would simply call it uh, two operational definitions of the term probability. And the reason we have this operationalized definition is so that you can have some sort of measurement, correct? That's one of the reasons, so that you can measure it. It's uh, not the only reason, it's one of them. Okay, it's one of them. In particular because we're talking about statistics. Well, because we're talking about likelihood. And so we need to describe what likelihood means. Uh, the special issue uses the term probability as I'm involved in assessing that probability, I need to operationally define the terms involved. Yes, and that is that applies to, uh, as you say, the probability, and there are two uh, definitions on this screen. One is more likely than not, and the other is disproportionately, dispor disproportionately likely as compared to other defendants. And that particular one, number two, specifically applies to statistics, correct? They both have a statistical foundation. More likely than not, it's a statistical consideration. That means non at least 51%. Objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. Yes, sir. I know that's, I say that a lot, oh my word, but I'm like, whoa. I can feel his energy. <laughs> it, it doesn't feel great. Now, in this slide, which is slide 26 for the record, um, and, and I don't know, I, I have not identified the difference. Is it in here? I don't have it. Oh, it's not. It's not here. Oh, it's not. It's not here. No. It's not here. So, so for slide 26, are you aware that in Texas, when the jury is answering the future danger special issue question, the circumstances of the capital crime can be enough to answer? No, ma'am, the jury does not answer a future dangerousness question. They answer a special issue. 
Are you aware that in Texas, when the jury is asking the special issue, the circumstances of the capital crime can be enough to answer that? Yes or no? Uh, I would defer that to the court. So that's, that you don't know? Well, I, I hesitate just, 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 to get into a discussion about which sentencing factor. One second. Uh, the One second. You're good. Well, Judge, the, the, wow. the question was asked. The witness said he would defer to the court, which is proper, and then the state just repeated their question a, a second time. It's asked and answered. It's irrelevant. The law comes from the court. You're aware the factors that the jury can look at when answering special issue number one. Can you approach? Wow, the witness even talked over Mr. Boggs. <laughs> Mr. Boggs is like, objection. <laughs> the witness is still going. Sure. <laughs> that was... I don't like that energy. The energy, like the way that the witness, I get that he's getting frustrated, you know, but the way he's like talking down at her, that energy, it's just like, ooh. So actually trigger warning for anyone if, if you, that's getting to you, because I don't like it. It makes me feel nervous, you know. I can only imagine how the assistant district attorney is is feeling. Maricela Jassaman. Yes. Um, Bernie says, consider yourself schooled, Grizzlies. He's arrogant. <laughs> Are we being schooled? That's probably what it feels. We're being schooled. But not nicely. <laughs> it makes a feeling of, like, fear. Okay, so Nana says he's a professional defense witness. He's done this hundreds of times. <laughs> so he says, yes, indeed. Doreen says, such a hostile witness. And then earlier someone was saying, look up the definition of hostile witness, and it isn't, but I get what you mean, Doreen. I think that's the feeling I'm trying to describe, that we're all like, ooh, my word. Yeah, he's hostile, moving on, so it's not maybe by definition. Let's see. What is a hostile witness? <laughs> Uncle Google will tell us. We're about to get schooled by Uncle Google. What is a hostile witness? A witness who is antagonistic to the party calling them and being unwilling to tell the truth may have to be asked leading questions. Sounds hostile to me. Could everybody check their ego at the door, please? Thank you. That will not be allowed in the courtroom. <laughs> oh, yes, you're on Zoom. Could you check that at your own door, please? Just chill, breathe, answer the questions. Don't be defensive. It's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, this is... Judith says he doesn't like being questioned by a female. That's obvious. <laughs> you guys are expressing yourself now. Uh, Marali says the second question was different. She asked the witness, so you don't know the answer. I mean, he never met him... To say that he would not be, what, a danger in prison? Who cares? Like, like who cares if he won't be a danger in prison? Just put him there. Put him wherever he's going to go. Life without parole, death row. They aren't, well, they are actually, there's female correctional officers, right? Uh, that is a danger to them. In that case, then he should be, okay, if they're saying he's not. Hmm. I don't know. There's actually so many. I'll have to think that one through. You can see my, <laughs> my mind is turning. I'm like, wait, hmm. But you can't predict that. Especially, it's not that uh, this crime was terrible. He he also, we've seen crimes where, um, and trigger warning, okay. We've seen crimes where people are stabbed. 27 times is a lot. That's an overkill. Especially for someone who's so trained with his weapons, right? And I still wonder if that's part of his strategy to make it uh, look less professional or if uh, he really just underestimated the fight back of a mama bear. But then to take it even further, 
and continue the act and stab a baby twice? That is... This guy, you can't say, you cannot predict anything that he'll do next. If he gets life without parole, will he be in the same uh, prison as Juan David Ortiz, who was just sentenced, a serial killer from Laredo, Texas, also border patrol agent? I wonder if he'll be in the same prison then. I would assume so, because it's Laredo, Texas. That's where the trial took place. That's where the crime took place. Huh? Damn, that, that's also... Even that's interesting. To me, that's a future danger. Keep those two separate, if they knew each other. I must ask some... Okay, if there's border patrol agents watching, and you know... Do you know if David Ortiz and Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles communicated? Because <laughs> that, that, that's a danger, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yasmin says Burgos showed his anger issues with cops in the interrogation. And I mean, with cops that would normally intimidate people, right? <laughs> Big guys, strong guys, and Burgos was there pointing his little fingers like that and swearing at them and being all machismo, as we say. Like, wow. So, yes. Again, Nancy B. says they move prisoners around. Olivia says they have to do this to make the death penalty stick. It can be reversed if his attorneys find a small point to appeal. And even that, if he gets the death penalty, and if it's reversed, then he goes to life without parole, right? I, I Sometimes one <laughs> must follow the path that's most efficient, <laughs> least resistant. So if he got life without parole, okay, because he might end up there anyway, right? If he got a death sentence and then they appeal it after many appeals and all that, if he ever won that for any reason, he's going to go there anyway. So put him there. <laughs> Apparently, there's someone that works at the prison, and they say that the rumor is that other inmates are literally chomping at the bit waiting for him. They literally are like, ooh, they, they're aware of this, <laughs> this case, and Burgos, and they are waiting. So, as I say, my mind has changed many times over, and I'm like, hmm, life without parole sounds pretty good for him. Yeah, good luck, buddy. <laughs> Loretta, welcome, and oh, sorry, thank you for being a member for three months. Stellar Outcast, remember he's being paid for his time, that is why he doesn't want to answer yes or no. That's another one. Teresa said that Ortiz get death penalty. He got life without parole, also because the family, I believe, of the victims had indicated they're not seeking the death penalty. AJ Baker, thank you so much for your 79 pound uh, cent super sticker. Here for the truth says one problem is that RABA can begin a relationship with a female prison guard and can convince her to let him escape. Yep, we could see we saw it in the Vicky and Casey White case. We've seen it before. It can happen. I understand that as well. Yes. And Francisco Ramirez says it's common sense that this murderer won't hurt others in prison because he's, it's harder to find an easy victim there. Yes, and but someone like him might even. <laughs> fine right and he seems like the type that's I mean I, I think they all try to most try to make shanks <laughs> I feel like Burgos would be working on that already in his maybe that's what he's drawing doodling <laughs> shank designs <laughs> Laura Dawson welcome to Grizzly $1 supporter <laughs> sorry sometimes my chat also YouTube has a glitch at the moment they're changing a lot um which is good. I think there's a lot of upgrades happening behind the scenes, but sometimes I can't put some of the comments on the screen. So I'm just calling Laura. Laura Dawson, thank you. Welcome to Grizzly $1 Supporter. Okay. This could take all day. <laughs> and there's still another expert as well coming in for the defense. And then three lay layperson witnesses as well. Will they finish today or tomorrow? I would speculate at this point, given the time. Right now, Texas time, it's uh, 15.01. One minute past three. They haven't had a break. I'm thinking the judge is going to call a break. <laughs> Especially once this witness is finished. There'll probably be a palate cleanser break. <laughs> coffee time. The Texas Cowboys coffee cup needs filling. 
That's what the judge's cup is, right? He's also got a big cup. Have you seen the judge's cup? It's huge. Mine too, look. <laughs> and yeah, then there's a Dr. Anderson, I think it is. Three other witnesses. So I would guess at this rate, the defense would rest tomorrow. Then maybe jury instructions, then maybe jury deliberates, which might take us all into next week. <laughs> we shall see. Damn. Michelle says, what? There was some email between Z and Ronald that if you got LWAP, she would transfer so they could be together. She should be flagged and denied any transfer. I heard of that yesterday. That was a rumor brewing. I think at this point it's a social media rumor, but still that's concerning. Yes. Yeah. Marie says, gee, that was so hectic. We all watched the final outcome of the escape together. If you guys have never heard of the case of Vicky and Casey White, I do have a playlist for that case as well. And wow, we were live the one day. They were looking for a correctional officer that had helped a male inmate escape. The two were in love. They planned the whole thing. And they were on the run for, I think it was 12 days or 19 days. I can't remember now. But then, yeah, the police caught up to them. There was a whole chase. Car rolled. And we were, I was streaming and we were watching some footage that someone had sent from Facebook and like, could this be them? And I'm like, no, this can't be. And it really was. I remember that. KJ says, Grizzly True Crime is training again today on Twitter. Thank you, everyone, for liking and sharing, especially to Twitter. That's really nice. Thank you so much. And you say, love watching this channel grow. I know others that work so hard, but the conviction and compassion here brings me back every day. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, Paige Willow says, victim impact statements. I'm... Um, that's going to be tough, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that because that's really when Burgos' ego will be ultimately <laughs> shattered, for lack of a better word. Deborah Di uh, Di Stefano, thanks for being a member for two months. That's true as well. Patricia Burns says he solves problems with murder, so no one could say he won't stick to that formula wherever he is. And that's true as well. He solves problems, not like a responsible adult. Clearly, that's why he's in the position he's in. And yeah, solving problems with murder, including trying to murder a baby. His child, 18 months old. On March 25th already, 2018, he tried to murder a baby. And speculatively, allegedly, based on what they say he injected. We don't know what exactly it was into his leg. And when that did not work out, he's like, hmm, okay. Two weeks later, the overkill. Wow. Mindy, thanks for being a member for seven months. Jury, uh, at the end of this trial, uh, as, as what happened during the first phase of the trial, uh, the court is going to give you the charge uh, and instructions and is going to uh, uh, give you what the law is on this phase of the trial and what are the things that you can take into account and, and you will in fact deliberate in accordance with those instructions. Uh, so as we move forward, please uh, remember that. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to file. Allow jury. me to find my notes, John. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Take your time. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I was like, the judge is going to be like, <sighs> oh man, shame. Sigh. Laurie says, I just want to see what some of this has to do. Whether he gets the death penalty or LWAP, it's for the, it's for the crime he's already been found guilty of. Yes. The thing is that I think, of course, the defense is trying to prove that he won't be a danger to anyone type of thing. Uh, if he gets a life without parole sentence, and therefore that's what they're fighting for. Remember, they're trying to not get the death penalty <laughs> for him. That's what they're trying to protect their client from. Are they all at the printer now? What is happening here? Okay. 
Yeah, Liz Graham says, I think he'd make a run for it if he could. Yeah. I think so, too. Uh, Dr. Cunningham, just on this slide, uh, you stated on here that the severity of the offense is not a good predictor of prison adjustment. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, and, and you do realize that this is a fact that's in evidence that may be considered by the jury. What's considered by the jury yes. and for what purpose is, again, above my pay grade. I can say the Ms. severity of the offense One question, is not please. scientifically related Give me a second, to whether please. he commits violence in prison. Sorry. Second piece. Uh, um, I think I already ruled on that, and I'd ask you to modify your question. It, in other words, uh, do you want me to clarify? Yes. Okay, come forward, please. The witness is at this point being disrespectful to the judge and to the defense attorney. He's like, what? If the judge says, one second, please. I think at this point, the judge must say, pause, stop, so that he can understand. Sorry if that was loud. So your statistical assessment or your assessment does not take into consideration the severity. I can't hear you. Were you muted? I'm, I'm sorry, I muted you. Dr. Cunningham. No, no, somebody did. Thank you. Dr. Cunningham. Yes. Can you hear me now? I can. Thank you. Thank you. So the so your uh, your assessment, your statistical assessment, or your assessment, does not take into consideration the severity of the offense. Correct. No, ma'am. It simply finds the severity of the offense not to be predictive of prison violence. We did examine it. I do take it into effect and into account. And it shows that but my question is, in your assessment, you found the severity of the offense not to be a good predictor of prison adjustment, correct? Not one that elevates the risk, some evidence that it lowers the risk. So the answer is yes or no? I guess the answer is I can't answer yes or no without some clarification. The cameraman is working hard today, knowing exactly when to mute and when to bring the sound back. Shout out to the cameraman. On slide 28, when we discussed, and I believe your testimony yesterday, when you were discussing intensive clinical evaluation, you mentioned uh, that this is the area where you compare whether it was impulsive versus premeditated. Is that correct? Uh, no, ma'am. I describe that almost all offenders in prison are impulsive, and so if that were a characteristic identified about a defendant, that would not, uh, the, the rate of that is so pervasive in prison that it, that feature doesn't then tell us the rare inmate who commits serious violence in prison. So the fact that it may be that this murder was premeditated, would that be a characteristic uh, that would influence your assessment? It's a factor that we have looked at and found not to be predictive of serious prison violence. And so in your assessment, premeditation or forethought is not predictive? Of serious prison violence, no ma'am, it's not. Now on, on slide 31, this was when you were discussing uh, the, I guess the dynamics between the inmate and other inmates and the vigilant staff and the restrictive context. That's correct, it is so effective in limiting severe violence even among a group that you might have thought would be violent or were violent in the community. Okay. Now this uh, 
your assessment or your yes your evaluation um, did it it didn't take into consideration things such as security security lapses Well, yes, ma'am, it takes that into consideration. The, the rates of violence in Texas prison are extraordinarily low in spite of the human frailties of security Dr. lapses Cunningham. and mistakes and that kind of thing. It does take it into consideration. Did it take into consideration uh, the possibility of inadequate strip searches? Sure. All, all of that's incorporated in that. So we can assume that mistakes are being made in Texas prisons every day by staff of some sort. In spite of that, they're so good at the rest of it and so much of the time that it limits the extent of severe violence. Did your assessment also take into consideration poorly applied restraints? Certainly. Okay. And uh, did same answer. Okay. And did it take into consideration staffing shortages? Yes. Or but this is that this data is from 2022 when TDCJ was experiencing staffing shortages. So yes, it took it into consideration. And did it also take into consideration officers becoming complacent? Yes. Now, um, and you also said yesterday that there nothing is a hundred percent preventive, correct? the security mm -hmm. measures yes or the no security measures are not perfect i don't think i said it's 100 percent preventive or not yes or no so you mischaracterized it i, I can't i may have said something like that but not what you described and so uh, are you dr cunningham i'm going to ask you some questions and ask you if you are familiar with this and i'd like a yes or no answer Please. our prison escapes a reality of prison yes or no uh, yes extraordinarily rarely from secure perimeter facilities Ob objection honor to non-responsive it's impossible to answer Ooh. some of these in other words inmates escape it's because of security measures failed is that a yes or a no Uh, yes. Okay. So as an expert evaluating prisoners and risks, are you familiar with the following escapes? With, with the, what? the following escapes, inmate escapes. Uh, District Attorney Isidro Alanis is also at the sidebar. Are they? Question. Are they allowed to switch? Because if, whoa, if Isidro Alanis can go in there and finish him, that would be so good to see. <laughs> finish him. Wow. This guy, not one time can he answer the yes or no question. Like, not one time. I mean, this is worse than Dr. Lewis in the Letitia style case. At least Dr. Lewis met with Letitia. <laughs> she even met Maria. <laughs> you know, we saw the video. In this, we have no video to see. Nothing. Nothing because this witness has never met Burgos. Oh, man. It's really getting frustrating. I feel protective over the assistant district attorney because he's talking so down at her. And I can only imagine that's maybe the feeling he leaves everyone with. It's important. What feeling you leave people with to even get any results. What result are you trying to get, sir? Because you just non-compliant unresponsive as they say doesn't listen to the defense attorney who is paying him apparently right the public defenders i don't know whose bill who pays the bills but you know it's from the defense team when boggs is objecting doesn't listen when the judge says give me a second give me a second stop give me a second doesn't listen 
it is like Dr. Lewis. But I'm going to say it's worse because this one has never... Imagine if Dr. Lewis had never met... If you watched the Letitia Stark trial with us, you'll know. <laughs> I said Dr. Lewis, what I'm talking about. That was hectic. So imagine if Dr. Lewis did all of that, but had never met Letitia. We'd all be like, oh, my word. So, oh, man, this is horrible. Well, Burgos, are you enjoying this? <laughs> did he hear me? <laughs> this is horrible. Warrior woman says, never fear the jury members are smart enough to see that this witness is being purposefully obtuse and evasive. It's not nice. He doesn't come across as relatable or likable. And I know it's not about that. It's just, it's not productive. This is not productive now. You know, if you're a forensic psychologist, you got to have some tolerance for others. Come on, sir. And you, you might want to meet <laughs> with the person that you are assessing. Objection Cake says, ask him how many times he's testified for the state saying someone is a danger to reoffend." <laughs> yes, yes. How many times? Have you ever, have you ever assessed someone that you've never even met and decided that they are a danger to reoffend? And can you give an example of that? Yeah, Paula says condescending. Oh, I hate that energy. Yogi says this guy has an ego the size of the universe. Seems so. Maybe you should speak to Burgos. They'll get along great. <laughs> I missed something there. There we go. Jamie Lee says trying to intimidate her. Terrible. It just comes across as extremely narcissistic. It just really does. It doesn't feel nice. I think anyone who's been through experienced narcissistic abuse yeah you 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 would you'd feel you'd feel i don't know like i'm feeling like oh my word it just gives me this weird feeling but it might just be rage <laughs> building up of like excuse me somebody discipline that witness that's true as well cat says this won't sit well with a mainly female jury in my opinion and they are mainly female yeah <laughs> sarah jane says in the voice of g man <laughs> A uh, human being has the family asked for the death penalty. I do believe that they've indicated that, yes. And I believe they indicated... I think what I read was that they've indicated or asked for the death penalty via lethal injection. So that's what I read. Yeah, Rondo says he's trying to make her feel inadequate and I'm afraid he's winning that battle. And I mean... Yeah, I agree. Eat drinks, says this doctor sounds arrogant, condescending, and talks over everyone. Dr. Lewis just seemed, yeah, too positively fascinated by her clients, but wasn't arrogant like this. I agree. Who ever thought that we say there's a witness that's a worse experience than Dr. Lewis? <laughs> this is not a nice experience. It doesn't feel nice at all. I know we're not sitting here to feel nice. This is a true crime case. We are here to for justice for Griselda and Dominic, and we're here to stand strong uh, for the families. It's just, you know, this is just a horrible, horrible experience sitting here watching this witness talk to the assistant district attorney the way that he does. And everyone, actually, as I say. Maybe if he likes Life Without Parole so much, he should spend more time there. Go in there and analyze. Get out of the books. Volunteer there. <laughs> I would recommend a... <laughs> A program whereby you spend some more time. Go and visit Burgos. <laughs> Elf is like Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Finish him. Okay, so they're on a break. Let's see what the time is because we can feel it. We know it. The coffee break is coming. It's half past, It's 20 past 3. 20 past 3, yes. Francisco Ramirez says, I think offenders are obviously less likely to offend while in prison because they know 100% they won't get away with it. Right? A lot of a lot of what's part of the presentation and the findings are like, duh. <laughs> yeah, obviously less likely. Exactly, because they know 100% they won't get away with it. And there's big consequences and 
cliques and gangs and groups. You don't want to mess with all of that. Exactly. Interesting. Bivas says, and the highly respectful level of the court towards this forensic psychology expert is an indication of the un underserved respect given to these snake oil salesmen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Levi's in Converse says, Judge said he needed an Advil break. I'm and we'll, we'll get right back. Thank you. Told you, we knew it. That's true. They're going to take a break. A little bit of time. Oh, shit, Judge. <laughs> the judge just made, did a major eye roll. For the person who said it's inappropriate that I called the witness narcissistic, I did not diagnose him or armchair diagnose him as a narcissist. I said the experience feels like that, having been through that. And it's making me feel a little triggered, to be honest. It feels... The, my anxiety goes up and you get this weird little ball of fear, like a knot in your stomach. And you're like, oh, my word, just the way that he's speaking. And I was just saying that it reminds me of that. Yes. I didn't say he was one. Jessica Elwap just provides a greater opportunity for him to commit more offenses or escape or have an enjoyable life, I guess, more enjoyable maybe than death row because he can, yeah, maybe meet with female correctional officers and have a lot more privileges. He can get education and all of that. Yes. <laughs> Laurie says, called it. <laughs> Tracy Reed says, the jury has got to be over this. Yeah, you see that. I'm still not saying he is one. But you say, Diana, gee, the guy sends abuser vibes feel vibes it's the right to our opinions <laughs> if we feel a vibe and yeah i'm probably like i should just get up take a walk take a deep breath and come back as well i recommend you do the same break again let's see the time it is 24 minutes past three and i would say they're gonna be back at 15 40 if i had to guesstimate correctly <laughs> johnny johnny has voted <laughs> <laughs> so I think well maybe we should say quarter two I think they'll be back at about quarter two this is a break for who knows what who knows what yes okay that's true as well Jean says the inmates do not like him that's a danger okay so let me quickly put my my, my coffee tunes on okay be right back
Okay, welcome back everyone. The court's not back yet, but I am. <laughs> so here we are. Let me put the sign back on. They shouldn't be long now. We did guesstimate, what, quarter two? Maybe three more minutes? Yes, we need Judge Judy again. Coffee time's over, everyone. Back in we go. <laughs> okay, so Butterflies and Alibi say the DA should ask the witness if he himself chose not to review all the evidence or the defense only gave him what they wanted him to review for his testimony or opinion. Yeah, did he choose to not review all the evidence or what exactly? <laughs> Jenny says, this trial is bananas. This man deserves the death penalty, no question. Okay. So, if anyone is only joining now, welcome. It's been a very eventful day. The morning morning session, which was only 10 minutes, started with the judge saying that one of the uh, jury members has COVID and has to be released and that has to recover. Okay, I hope I'm saying the correct words. Jury member, COVID, recovering. And so they needed to pick an alternate. And so they've obviously picked an alternate now. And that was the morning session. And there is no morning session available on my channel or on Law Crime Network because there was a little mistake in which the judge announced the name of the alternate and obviously now they've chosen another one. And so those streams were deleted to protect that juror. And anyway, then when, when we came back, we came back a little earlier than one o'clock Texas time because they had a bit of like a brunch type meeting where actually that was a mistrial motion filed by the defense and the judge denied that motion so that's where we're at and now this afternoon we've had the cross-examination of dr cunningham from the assistant district attorney maricela jasaman and so that is still ongoing indeed <laughs> yeah a little snafu says janet murphy <laughs> mm-hmm Dirty Maya says, normal day in this courtroom. It has been, this is the new normal. <laughs> normal day in this courtroom, yes. Sue, thank you so much for sharing the baby Yoda, the purple and white ribbons and the purple hearts. Thank you so, so much. That is for, to honor the victims and to show the family that we care about them. We're here together. Anna Chick says, you could tell Burgos was getting frustrated. Yeah, when's he gonna snap <laughs> and get frustrated here in court? Like, okay enough i don't think he can you know can't change his plea now because now he's been found unanimously guilty this is all about sentencing and i wonder how long this will still be no wonder the judge said that this phase could be longer than phase one right i ah, kb says court is late who would have thought like who would have ever guessed right yes perneal mod reminding everyone please don't be combative with each other in chat that's not what we're here for just chill, everyone. I know emotions can run high in these cases. And, you know, some things could be triggering or upsetting and irritating. And people get tired and they just feel all sorts of things. But just try your very best to keep kind, respectful to each other. Especially to each other in the chat. Please be nice to each other. Thank you all for being here. And thank you, Mods, for everything you do. Is this a question you would like to propose being asked? Is being sentenced to prison a cause of people trying to escape? <laughs> Caroline says, I'm actually anti-death penalty in principle, but if it is on the menu, <laughs> we do love a menu, <laughs> a menu of punishments. Well, there it is. I oppose because mistakes that always end up ending innocent lives. The guy gets death penalty. Okay with me. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. We shall see. But yeah, we are just we are just waiting, you guys. Waiting, waiting, always hurrying up and waiting, aren't we? Let's see if I've got a presentation for you. I just want to see what's on this one. Okay, we've gone over this. Just want to see if I add it onto this. Day three, day four, yeah. Okay, cool. So we know if you're here now, I hope you're aware of the crime and what happened and the timeline and the deep dives. 
If not, please watch the trial prep video, week one summary, week two summary. That's all on the playlist for you, okay? And so, let's continue on here. Oh man, I could say it every time I see that. Okay. Now, on day one of phase one, we had the opening statements. We've got the district attorney, Isidro Alanis. It was a very powerful must-watch opening statement. Please do watch that. And the defense attorney, Eduardo Pena, who's been very quiet in phase two. We had him doing opening statements, okay? And we had witness Angelica Hernandez, Griselda's sister, on day one as well. So this is a little recap for you while we wait. We also had Dr. Antonio Rodriguez and medical examiner Dr. Stern. Dr. Stern was the one to indicate that uh, baby Dominic's injury to his leg was in fact not an insect bite, but a 18 gauge needle mark. We still don't know what he was injected with, but it caused necrosis. I'm showing you this in case you missed any of the live streams. I make sure that I trim out all the waiting times and waffle times because that'll be terrible for replay watches. So anytime that you want to go back, even if you were with us live the whole day, don't worry, you never have to wade through all that again. Um, it's all timestamped for you. I first trim everything, wait for it to process, and I timestamp everything for you. I still have to do yesterday's ones. The one was still processing. I'll do that. Um, and so you could just skip to any of these witnesses. If this reminds you, oh yeah, I wanted to see that. Right? Okay. Thank you, Grizzly Cat. On day two, we uh, heard from witness the best friend of Griselda, Adriana Flores, Border Patrol agent Dennison, and Border Patrol agent Lara. I would highly recommend checking those testimonies out. Very powerful, compelling. Agent Lara. That was the first time, I think they, no, that was the second time the defense filed for a mistrial. Well, the first time they actually tried to impeach Dr. Stern. The second time it was because Agent Lara was so emotional on the stand that they were like, nope, nope, <laughs> filing for a mistrial. That was also denied. We heard from uh, Juan Ruiz, a Laredo investigator, Border Patrol agent, uh, Juan Mercado, who you can see here was the neighbor of Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles, <laughs> look how Burgos was smiling when he saw him. I mean, he looked like he was like, oh, this is awkward, like, okay, because he was like all chummy with him, you know? Very interesting. And we also saw ring cam footage from the neighbor on day two. So I hope that you're taking notes so that you know, what do you want to see from day one again? What do you want to revisit from day two? Huh? <laughs> On day three, we heard from Elizabeth Stevens from Motorola. Officer Cortez, you can see on the right hand side there, and there's the Baby Yoda shirt. They showed him exhibits and he had a visceral response to it. It was like seeing that again, you could just see it was re-traumatizing for him. And we also... Thank you, please have a seat. Sorry to bend it out. Fort Noise is back. While they file in, I'm just going to flick through the screen here so you can see which ones we heard from. We saw dash cam of Burgos as well. Day four. Ooh, that Albert hearing. Adriana's Escamilla, you got to hear her testimony as well. Nicole Morales, forensic scientist. I'll take this off as soon as the court's actually back on. The interrogation video with Detective Reyes from Laredo PD. And Dr. Ray Fernandez, day six, more of the interrogation. So video. to finish this conversation, the defendants in the courtroom and with counsel. Um, to be able to finish this conversation outside the presence of the jury, um, I, I find nothing, and if y'all can locate something, this is the time to do it, or this would have been the time to do it, that allows you to bring in the individual uh, acts of violence and the details of who's murdered or killed or slashed inside of the prison um, 
uh, I find nothing that would allow, I mean, on, honestly, I find nothing that would allow the details of individual killings or individual acts of violence by uh, other inmates or other prisoners to be relevant to a, because uh, otherwise you could bring in every single one of them that have occurred during, what's to stop you from doing that? In other words, from, from, from bringing in every single act of violence that occurred in 2022, every single act of violence that occurred in 2023 to 21, every single act of violence that occurred in 2020, and so on and so forth down the line. What's to keep you from doing that? Just time? No, Your Honor. The, the purpose of us bringing... My, my direct question was, what's to keep you from doing that? From bringing in the individual? Uh, yeah, units? individual... Um, all the details of the individual acts of violence of each and every serious act of violence in prison. Like somebody got killed, somebody got slashed, somebody inside the prison system. Because, because uh, uh, we're talking about acts of violence that could occur, um, the probability that the defendant would commit acts of violence that would be a continuing threat to society, right? And the society we're talking about is any society, right? Prison society or even outside society when if somebody were to escape. So you're saying, I want to bring in five, I want to ask the witness five individual individual questions about five individual escapes and what occurred and what type of violence occurred as in each one of those five individual escapes. And even if he doesn't know about the individual escapes, I want to be able to tell him what the facts were and whether or not he knows about it. And I'm saying, well, what's to keep you from doing don't use those five individual escapes because that's just those are just individual cases that have nothing to do with the defendant. Use use the 200 or the 300 acts of violence that occurred in 2022 and lay them out each one of them in front of the jury. And how is that any different than the acts of violence that occurred as a result the, than the, the the third party acts of violence that occurred as a result as a result of escapes? That's what I'm saying. How do you, what's the difference? The difference, Judge, is the, 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 min, the narrow purpose for this was to respond to the representation that, this, that the escapes were, I don't remember, the very small percentage. But you don't have to, you don't have to tell them, the indiv give me a second, to be able to respond to the, to the, to the fact that the witness said, escapes are a small fraction or percentage or whatever he used uh, of, of, of the possibility of what a individual that is in prison uh, similarly situated uh, you know whether it be a what is it three three, a three? what is it three. I'm not sure what the t classification is but whatever that three was yeah, three. Uh, um, would be compared to now I want to tell you the individual tragedies of what occurred as a result of those escapes have nothing to do with what the probability of of of, uh, of that actually uh, happening the escape actually happened and we have modified our question judge we are not going to go into all of them but we do have a statistic that we will ask which is from uh, now, statistic with regard to what happens, uh, whether or not you're saying the statistic of, of what occurs when that small number of cases that in which people do escape, are there acts of violence that occurred in those situations, I think in general like that uh, is different than what you were planning to do before. The only exception is we will refer to the one individual that was discussed yesterday. But but he was only for purposes of a percentage. Not he wasn't talking about. He only used that particular case. First of all, that case had already been brought up during the first witness that the state had. But uh, uh, he just I, I doubt similarly to me, by the way, <laughs> that the jury knew uh, the name of the case and associated with the first witnesses, um, uh, the state's first witness uh, 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 mentioning of the case, of a case in general, without naming the case. 
but anyway, the 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 use of that by the juror by the witness was to illustrate a. In fact, he could have said no name and just said a small. Per, uh, it was a small percentage or a small fraction of. Uh, it, it, it could have been anything. It could have been. In other words, I'm not sure that there that there's any connection between the small fraction or whatever he used. And remind me if I'm missing something. Uh, uh, of of the cases that are out there, because I think he, they, he's using the word predictive and probabilities and stuff like well, that. I'll, just on that case, I, I think the witness's testimony, uh, the way he phrased his response, was to minimize the escape of Gonzalo. Well, instead Lopez. of make, instead of giving me the conclusions, tell me what he said. He said he, he because because you're giving me the conclusions of what he think he said, but or your interpretation of it. Yeah, and I, well, that, that I, from my recollection, his testimony was that it was uh, it was one escape. It's, it's statistically. Um, it, it's it's. It, Statistically, it, it would rarely that rarely happens. Um, and you believe that's incorrect? And, uh, and well, I think that escapes do happen more than what he's represented. That's what right. And and and, and 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 so you're basically saying his data bugs. is wrong. Yes, I disagree with all his data. Oh, but you have no one here to. Oh, no, nice. but uh, again, it's an interpretation of his data based on. The way he's plugged in his his formulas, yes. But we we're on but, but on, on the escapes portion, he does have a data on escapes portion. So you, you in other words, you, you could ask him about his data and basically call to question his data. No question. But uh, I mean I, that you can always do uh, through questioning. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but it, it it's 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 hard, I guess, to do when you have nothing co to controvert that. Is I guess is what I'm saying. But but what what I'm asking for is or to even argue against it. I guess is what I'm saying. So what he did, he talked about statistics. He talked about examples of involving analogies involving airplanes, involving uh, teenage uh, people who are driving vehicles uh, that it's used to cause fear, uh, injuries, that type of information. Uh, like the Gonzalez Lopez. No, the airplanes portion was it was an analogy, uh, um, not to instill fear in juries. It was to instill well, fear in well, fear in people not to get on the plane. Right, right. Uh, and making that a analogy to the the, the case of, of I don't. And, and what we what we talked about with with Mr. Boggs right now was that we weren't going to give the names of the other escapees. Just we we're going to get just the details some, of the some, crimes. Some no some and. Statistics. I'll go over the questions. Judge, I, I'm a little, I'm a little confounded because I believe it was the state's first witness who said that in that time period that there had been one escape of a G3 inmate. So for the state to now say that the stats our wrong. witness is somehow distorting statistics seems. Confound, it, it confusing to me when it was actually well, they the won't be, state's The state will not be able that. to argue that to the jury because there's no evidence to that effect. So I don't think that's... And can I respond to him? Yeah. Now, from the slides that we've seen, Dr. Cunningham's slides go back to 1975. Well, there's so, ma there's so many. But his statistics yes. go back to yes, 1975. Well, it, you can't really say... In other words, each slide is individual, so right. Yes, so, so there's slides at 75. Some are 2022. Some are in the 1980s. Some in the 1990s. Some, you but know. But the date that we saw that it, that his slides go back to. Well, you were saying some of his oldest slides, some of his oldest data is as old as. Some of his oldest data is yeah. it's up to 1975. Okay. And we believe that makes everything from 75 to now relevant with respect to escapes and 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 asking him if he's familiar with. The uh, escapes that occurred in seventy five. How many escapes occurred in seventy five? Sure. And, and, and if we strategically want to ask him about the one, two, or three escapes, uh, but it's okay to ask him about whether there's been escapes since nineteen seventy five. That's fine. The only thing he's going to do, I'm going to tell you, is he's going to come back and tell you 
Now we need to, uh, to give you a proper statistic with regard to that. I need to now give you the number of inmates that, were, that have been in prison every year since then, and then divide that up into a number to give you, and I mean, and then that's going to, you know. And that's fine. I, I, I guess that's what I'm saying, because you, you, that's what's going to happen. Uh, and, and so are you basically saying there has been, I don't think you said there was only one escape. I think the other, there has been three escapes. Three or four escapes. He, that well, one. he made reference to uh, in 2022 one, that one escape. Uh, yeah, but there's been in in the in the uh, in the data I've seen there's been more than one escape or uh, an escape attempts. But I, I I do believe we have the latitude on cross examination if, if he's an expert to be able to test his knowledge but and expertise as to uh, uh, the, the issue the narrow issue of, of escapes. But like, uh, what do you want to ask him on escape? Whether there's been escapes? whether he knows the number of attempted escapes since two, at least since 2005 because that's the information we have. Okay, well, let's, uh, assuming he says uh, no, then, then what? Then he answers no. That's it? Yeah, then he answers no. Your Honor, may I just address one point, which is Your Honor asked whether there was any authority that permitted them to get into this. And or not. Or not. And I want, to, I want to give the court a recent case, a death penalty case. It's Calvert versus State. It's an unpublished opinion of the Court of Criminal Appeals. The citation is 2019 Westlaw 505-7268. It's at star 5859 because it's an unpublished opinion. In that case, the state presented testimony from a TDCJ guard about an incident in which another inmate, not the defendant, stabbed him in the eye and uh, about the injuries that he sustained and the defendant objected on relevance and prejudice versus probative rule 401 and 403 grounds and the court of criminal appeals found that it was in fact more prejudicial than probative because there was no evidence that it was unrelated to this defendant um, there's no evidence that this defendant had stabbed or attacked anybody uh, and it was therefore not admissible. And so I think in that case, in that case, and I think every instance in which the prosecution tries to discuss facts that are or cases that are unrelated to this case is inviting more error. And I think the fact that they already elicited it from uh, Officer Fitzpa Fitzpatrick, I believe, is already problematic and forced us into the position of having to show why that extremely aberrational incident involving I an inmate with a completely different history and record than our client uh, committed that offense and that's it's really forced us into that right. position we can't do well, this it's not gonna no. those details i already said we're not going to come in yes. mr zondo you'd like to address the court yes, Your Honor. Right. It's, it's two things very briefly one we're already beyond that point and second to correct uh mr shoneman it was the defense who elicited that one prison escape and how many individuals died. Uh, so that's that, one thing. I don't I don't think that's my memory of that. How many individuals died came in through well, Mr. Alisson? That one person Alanis. came out. That one I'm person sorry. had escaped. So well, yes, sir. But don't don't. That that's not what the record is with regard to who asked the question with regard to how many people had died. The yes. defense did not ask that question. But they had opened the door. I know, but you make it sound okay. like the defense. Apologies, Your Honor. Right. I, I am correcting the, for the record that they had opened up the escapee. And then once that door was open, we went. We'll, we'll let somebody else. That's already interpreted. that's already water under the bridge for so purposes of. Give me a okay. Finish my thought. For purposes of of what we're doing here, what we don't want to do. Whatever happened there already happened. You already heard it. I can't undo it. Whatever yeah. somebody else is going to measure us with regard to whether that was proper or not at some point. Uh, you know, I don't want to add anything more to that. Go ahead. Correct. So now. The state has seen statistics that in the year of 2020 or 2021, I, I believe, one of those two years, that there were nationwide from federal and state prisons roughly 2,000 escapes. Or attempted. Or Well, that's just the actual escapes. That's what the statistics are showing, and that comes from a government website. Now, with that in mind, I think because he made it seem like escapes are nationwide or a rare thing that happened and then he mentioned the one case that happened in Texas and said that that people loved it and he implied it and he pretty much said it with the plain analogy that the state is essentially trying to bring this up to fear monger the jury into giving it death. Yeah, I, don't, well, I, well, I well, know you guys are making that death, but I right. really unless I just missed it I didn't really get it like that but go ahead. So with that in mind the state would simply like to ask are you aware that in the year of X and we can get the right year that there were 2,000 escapes from 
federal and state prisons nationwide? And then he can say yes or no, and we can confront well, him with that. I, that, I don't have I a mean, problem with those. I, I'm not. I, we, we were not here to discuss that type of stuff. Data, numbers, that stuff is okay. all uh, a free a game. He's already talked about that. So no. yes, it's free game. Uh, I'm talking about the details. But, Your and Honor, but we had already cured up that issue. We're not. And yeah, we're but that that, that didn't happen before I with the break. That happened after the break. Okay, and okay. we were going to announce when you came out right. that we would not discuss the details, uh, specific details of those escapes. But if the witness is familiar with the escape, for example, in 2000, where seven inmates broke out of the commune, yes or no? Do you know that? Uh, that's that's not discussing any whether he's whether he's familiar with an escape that occurred in 2000 and how are you gonna and, and if he's familiar with an escape that occurred in well in he had a minor misconduct is what we found out uh, from the slide from the yesterday um, so of course could that be an attempt in we don't know in Texas if he's familiar with the of, of escape in 2010 from the Briscoe unit. Specific, just questions, not names, but if he's familiar with those escapes, those statistics. Without getting into any detail. All right, anything? Judge, this was the subject of pretrial litigation where uh, the court ruled specifically that the state was prohibited from going into, for instance, the Texas 7, which the state is now saying that they want to ask the witness about. And furthermore, Your Honor, I want to correct the record as uh, stated by Mr. Elizondo, who said, I elicited the testimony about the single escape attempt. It was Mr. Alanese who did it on his direct examination with Mr. Fitzpatrick. The only question I asked Mr. Fitzpatrick about the single well, escape was the statistical rarity of it. And then Mr. Alanese on a redirect indicated the scope of the number of deaths okay. from that statistical. That's, right. so that's, right. that's been cleared. That's right. And I've re-cleared. Okay. Um, so, so... <laughs> Uh, you want to put a name and a number to, you Not know. I want to put a year and a number of, uh, uh, if, if I wanted to put. Well, with Gonzalo Lopez, I was going to ask the, uh, s some of the facts. Uh, We're not going to go into any of the facts. Okay. Period on those. Okay. Just that there were now escapes. We, we could ask him the age of Gonzalo Lopez because that's something he's testified to. As you can ask him the age of, of the, uh escapees, Correct. but not of Gonzalo Lopez. Correct. Well, he was an escapee, Gonzalo Lopez. I know, but not of the name Gonzalo Lopez, just the escapees of that day. Okay, so if, if I can just ask him. Just replace the name Gonzalo Lopez with the age. Okay. Are you familiar with the, the, the age of the escapee in 2022, that he was 46 years old? I thought you said whether you were going to ask him whether he's familiar with the age. If he says no, then... You're not familiar with the age. Well, I can ask him if he's aware he was 46 years old. Because he, he, he's coming... But how do we know the, that that's a fact? Well, if he's done his studies, he'd know that... In, because he said, according to age, between 20... That the older you get, the less likely... The less li he said under 35... The, he said once you get past 35, there's a less likely... The predictive is less and less, right. Exactly. And I have a case here of a 46-year-old who escaped and killed five people. Well, you're not going to say that. No, but it's to my point that Lopez was 46 years old, so that goes outside his spectrum. The, the, do you you can ask him, do you know how old? If he said no, would it surprise you if, if, if he said he was 46 years old? I think that yeah, would be fine. that's all. Well, the question assumes a fact, not an evidence, is what I'd say. And if the state wants to introduce that, they have a rebuttal case um, in which they can try to elicit that. This has been the subject of I'm gonna, I'm, I'll pre trial I'll, litigation. I understand that, but I think it'll, it'll just. If he knows his age or not, Your Honor. Right, but you're not just asking if he knows his age, you're asking if he knows his age if he and, 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 uh, Yeah, I mean, uh, and I think a follow-up question to that would be the yeah, age. I'll, I'll allow that. Thank you. And you can 
you can object at that time as well. Uh, okay, so no details. We're, we, we're, we're good to go. Thank you, Honor. Let's jury. Let me, let me see if the jury's ready. Oh, please All be right. ready. Please, let the jury be ready, please. <laughs> Miss Seppi says challenge is all by G, a shot of espresso. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> buy me a shot of espresso. I do, I mean, I'm just going to live on coffee these days. I might as well just need a coffee IV, my word. <laughs> I'm not complaining. It's just this is seven hours behind my time zone. So, like, you know, it's got to pass 11. Every night ending at whatever time it is, one, two, and then I, I struggle to wind down and catch up on all the other news that's happening, you know, and then I'm like, ah, oh, three, four, bedtime. Have a nap up again. Man, it's really been like, what a trial, but we here for it. I cannot wait for sentencing. This could be so good. I wish I could pass the witness, and at this point, <laughs> I don't know. I'll whop it is. Come on. <laughs> if I was on the jury, I'd be like, okay, it's just no more appeals, no nothing, just life with a parole. Go, go, and never see him again. I know you can't decide like that. I'm sharing my personal layperson opinion because my goodness. Thank you <laughs> for sharing the coffee link. <laughs> wow, okay. I clearly zoned out during the presentation. I admit at some, at some points I did. I was like, oh my word, this is so much TMI. It's just too much, just too much information. Uh, Ashley said the misconduct was contraband. He had bags of water to use as weights. Oh my gosh. Becky, she says Gisla is on vampire hours. Yeah. Come here. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's hear what music I've got for us here. Ceiling music. <laughs> we have our ceiling song on. Fury, say hi to everybody. They're all asking where you are. You want to drink my water? Hey. Oh, the redirect will be hectic. You see, they're all looking for you. He's like, get me out of here. Someone says my blood type is coffee. Yes. Breathe. Woosa, everybody. Clow, all of us want to know. of us want to know when sentencing day is i thought maybe tomorrow <laughs> i'm thinking next week friday at this rate yes indeed yeah fury's had enough too he was like wait is that other witness coming back yeah no i'm out <laughs> you can see he's just like mm -mm. so <laughs> thank you molly cuddle molly cuddle is from scotland watching as well you said gizla you've done us a huge huge service in this no drama no victim blaming zone thank you scotland is tired too but grateful to you from me and my cat also and pt notaman thank you so much for your sticker for fury let me just try to get the chat going again okay so depending i don't know why they say is the jury ready yes get them ready let's go <laughs> let's put the presentation back on Laredo, Texas. 
Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles. He's 33 years old. Will he be on death row or life without parole? That is the question in phase two. <laughs> so, yes, I'm going to skip forward now because we looked at day one opening statements, the witnesses from day one and two. I'm showing you this as highlights. They're all timestamped for you. So if you see anything here that you haven't seen or you want to see, go and check it out with the timestamps. Just click on them. It'll take you straight there. You can hover over the video, look at the description box or the pinned comment for you. See? You see what happens when I start a presentation. Standing for the jury. See? We were here on day six. Detective Reyes. Detective Raimundo Garcia. Day seven, we saw Burgos cry. Dr. Stone was called back in to testify because they tried to impeach her again. Day eight, we had Timothy Fitzpatrick on the stand. Now, he was brilliant telling us exactly how it works. And that's where we've been at for the summary. So day nine, 10, 11, and 12 <laughs> will at some point need to be summarized. So far, it seems like it would could be summarized in one slide of yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Waffle, yada, and more of that. <laughs> yeah, Shin Dog City says the judge is messing with you, G. <laughs> Tricked me. Lucia says whether he will be violent in prison holds no weight. Who cares if he beats up another murder? No one... What? Another? Murder? None of this makes sense and is not relevant. Mm. Nicole says nothing will bring back those two beautiful lives, but at the least we can do is bear witness so they can get some kind of justice. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Heather said we all got LWAP watching this trial. Life without patience. <laughs> I think we actually all gained a lot of patience. <laughs> patience is actually not my strong point. But yeah, the more we do things like this, the, the more of it I get. Yes. Hey, Nicole. Yada, yada, yada. Ancient proverb by Judge Joe. PK, thank you so much for your sticker. Really appreciate it. Grizzly Cat, thank you again for being a temp mod for us today. We've got so many people here. It really helps us out a lot. Thank you, mods, for everything you do. If you want to buy the mods a coffee, you can go to my website, grizzlytruecrime.com. Go to the support page. There's a link there that says buy me a coffee and one that says buy the mods a coffee. Okay, so you can, you can thank the mods over there if you'd like to. As a matter of fact, says, I always thought statistic can be adjusted to prove whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Dish bit says, if this is how the trial is going, I can only imagine how the Coburger trial is going to be. Can you? I'm, I'm thinking the same of like, whoa, that's going to be very hectic. <laughs> that Coburger trial. Mm, mm, mm. And there's a lot to argue, it seems. There's already months and months and months and months worth of public argument going on. And theory, speculation, ideas, whatever, everything. <laughs> Just imagine how much is going to come out there. Okay, I hear the court. I hear the court sounds. Eat Drink says, I hope the jury considers how desperate the defense is trying to avoid the death penalty and then give him the death penalty. That life imprisonment with tablets and whatnot, so he may end up... Here, being one of the Grizzlies. Oh, no. We'll block him immediately. <laughs> because he'll probably troll. <laughs> yes, that's what they say. A six to eight week trial. Melissa, for the Coburger trial. Antoinella says, I'm new here. Lol, hello from Fort Worth, Texas. Thank hello. you all. Please have a seat. We'll continue with the examination. You may proceed, Ms. Uh, Jackman, when ready. Uh, Dr. Cunningham is, I believe, ready. Thank you, Your Honor. Dr. Cunningham, I'm going to direct your attention to slide number 48. 
Oh, yeah, did you see that? I can't, thank you. Now, on this slide, I believe the purpose of this slide was to highlight um, that he had, uh, he was employed by the, he was in the military and was employed by Border Patrol, and that that was a positive factor, thereby mitigating his risk of uh, uh, prison violence, serious violence, correct? It's a little more complex than that. His having an extended and continuous tenure of employment uh, across his adulthood is a factor that reduces the likelihood of prison violence and increases the likelihood that he will uh, engage himself in, uh, industriously in prison. And so therefore he is less likely to be involved in prison misconduct and violence because of this factor. That's correct. And are you aware that he used his job at the Border Patrol to create the opportunity to commit these murders. I am. Right. And that he used the equipment provided pursuant to this let's, job to commit let, these murders. That's been asked and answered on the previous questions. Are you aware that he also tried to avoid detection using his authority as a supervisory border patrol agent? Uh, yes and no, as I understand how this unfolded. His authority actually had nothing to do with the local police who promptly zeroed in on him and brought him in. Thank you. Now, the, the um, fact that, the fact that he was in the military, um, you considered that as a positive factor, correct? I did. And not, not just in the military, but then had a long tenure in the reserves as well. Now I'm going to direct your attention to 51. <clears throat> well, it actually starts on 50. And you identified continued contact with community members as a uh, as a positive or a mitigating circumstance where it reduces the likelihood of Ronald Anthony Burgos' uh, opportunity or committing acts of violence in prison, correct? No, ma'am. I, I don't consider this to be a mitigating circumstance, as that's understood in capital sentencing. Uh, uh, this is a factor that's associated modestly with a lower likelihood of misconduct and violence in prison. Now, you mentioned that he speaks to his spouse, his father, paternal uncle, paternal grandmother, paternal step-grandfather, mother and paternal aunt. Did you have the complete records of the jail record of the jail calls? I have no way of knowing whether the records that I received were complete. Uh, I did receive visitation logs and as I recall uh, telephone logs as well. And in the visitation logs you mentioned that Visitation, periodic visitation, is a factor, um, and I believe it's on the on slide 52 where you say disciplinary infractions were infrequent, whether visited or not. Is that correct? That's correct. The overall base rate was low, independent of whether you were visited. And if you were not visited. Those inmates had higher rates, significantly higher rates of misconduct, but it was very low for all the groups. And any visitation reduced the likelihood of misconduct, is that correct? That's correct. And you represented yesterday that the spouse had periodically visited with Mr. Ronald Anthony Burgos. She is among those who visited periodically. I think her visits have been infrequent, but they have occurred. Would it surprise you to know that the last visitation was approximately four years ago to the day? Uh, it would not. I, fact, not 
overall? What? I did, I, again, I, the, the visitation that he's received has been infrequent. My recollection is that, or periodic, my recollection is that the spouse was infrequent. I would not be surprised if that was four years ago. Now, you also uh, discussed that the nature, uh, I mean, do you agree that the nature of the relationships that he has with these individuals uh, could be, you mentioned them as positive factors, correct? No, ma'am, that's not quite correct. I described that a, f a factor that's associated with visitation lowering the risk of violence in prison is it may keep the offender anchored to community values uh, and also that they don't want to uh, disappoint uh, family members by uh, getting locked down or having a visitation taken away. So the interaction that they have with these individuals may change the, the whether it's a positive factor or negative factor if some of those phone calls or those discussions um, are negative with the family members, correct? No, ma'am. No, the, what I'm describing is that an ongoing relationship or contact with community members uh, it is, is the factor that reduces or, or promotes better adjustment in prison and reduces disciplinary uh, infractions that there are periodic conflicts with some of those is really not a, a, a variable that I understand makes much difference. So not all contact has to be positive. Is that your, what your, your testimony is today? Well, yes, ma'am. I mean, all my contacts with my children are not all positive. With my spouse are not all positive. With my parents are not all positive. That's kind of part of a relationship. And Sometimes relationships end accordingly but I'm not disturbed by there being periodic conflict in a relationship. Would it disturb you if in, in, in a, the effect of a call that may cause some agitation for Mr. Burgos, if he then carried out some of that agitation or aggravation towards staff members of the jail? Judge, uh, objection, there's no, there's no evidence of this. This is a purely hypothetical approach with, with that. And ladies and gentlemen, we have another sidebar. I just don't know why he cannot one time. I would love to see this court be on time one time and I'd love to see this witness answer yes or no one time. Two ultimate wishes right now. Gene says you can't never just say yes or no, OMG. There it says yes or no, get on with it. Okay, you guys feel the same. You feel the same. It's just like, oh my word. <laughs> Dagny says, make it stop. <laughs> make it stop. <laughs> yeah, I think all of us at this point, I must say I admire all your stamina. Thank you so much for being here. Definitely grizzlies have stamina. That's right. And we're here. But wow. Damn. Human being says she's reaching an eye for one. I'm tired of it. Give it. To, yeah, pass the witness. This is not really. It's not productive. It's not really adding value or convincing anyone or doing anything. Pass the witness. We said yesterday, right? It would have been so powerful if they just said no questions. Pass the witness. That would have been like damn, like mic drop. You know? <laughs> Don't you think? Wow. Nicole said, gee, how long do you think the jury will deliberate? Well, uh, at this point, it's like, how long will this trial still go on? We don't know. <laughs> but when it gets to that, how long will they deliberate? Hmm. I don't know. We can never know, but you're asking me my opinion. I think they might start tomorrow and then come back on Monday or Tuesday, in my opinion. Maybe Monday night, Monday afternoon. Ashley Valentine, nice to see you. Thank you so much for your $2 super sticker. <laughs> Jackie says, we admire your endurance, G. I'm about done with this phase. And this is where 
I always ask myself, what was the point of all that swimming? I swam so much. I was a competitive swimmer, right? From age six until I was 18. And I'm like, morning training, evening training, you know, 11 sessions a week. What is the point of all that? This, it taught me a lot of stamina. <laughs> this is where that comes in handy. Swimmer mode. <laughs> yes. So anyway, thank you all again for being here. Sidebar is now done. Let's see what happens, what questions they will ask next. But please, please pass the witness soon. Now, Dr. Cunningham, did you receive any uh, call logs regarding Sahara Camp Drone? Uh, I don't recall that name. refer your attention to slide number 38 and the purpose of this slide was to show that as the inmates got older the chances of their of the um, infractions would reduce is that correct both older at the time they get to prison and older as they age in prison. Do you recall yesterday discussing uh, an escapee uh, in 2022? I do. Do you realize that he was 46 years old? I do. With a criminal record that went back 26 uh, years. Objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. It actually is very responsive. Right? You could very responsive, says Direct on Now, uh, Dr. Cunningham, you do, uh, because you have statistics on uh, prison, uh, you also have statistics on escapes? I'm sorry, you broke up. I've lost the last half year. A question. Do you have statistics on escapes from prisons? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. You know what? I think that my something is that my connected or not connected? Yes. <coughs> no, no, that mic. The round mic. Yeah, it's on your own. It's so for some reason, it's saying it's not. Um, okay. But I said you could hear well. Is that correct, Ron? Okay, try it again. Dr. Cunningham? Oh, she can't. Okay, so it's, it's let me uh let me do this. Okay, battery is empty. Okay. Oh, can I can you hear me? No? Mr. Cunningham just has to go. Yeah, he can. Okay. I, I'm listening. I guess you can. We had problems earlier, so we took a while to come up. Uh, Might be the battery, Your Honor. Hmm? The battery says it's empty. Yeah, that's why. It, was it connected? Uh, it's connected. Yeah. I'm dual. A minute ago, before this happened, was it connected? Mm -hmm. Yes, Ron. So it doesn't require a battery to be connected. Can I, can you bring it back over here? And let me see, I think I need to, um, sorry. I'm gonna do, let me call Frank.
Pass the witness. Pass the witness. Can anyone hear me in the court? Pass the witness. <laughs> We're done. We're done here. TMI. Poor jury. Yes, Donna's like, I love how he does that over and over. Can you hear her now? V says, this is one giant cluster. Karma says, Karma Carolina, he just don't want to answer. Mm-hmm. Plur Baby says they wore down the microphone. It looked like it was a bit muted to me, like the little microphone was muted. So I don't know if that needs to be unmuted or what. <laughs> but it's breaking up, breaking up for him. Wow. It would have been so epic if when it was time for cross-examination, the defense just said, no questions for this witness. Burgos, what are you writing there? Cameraman has <laughs> shown us what is he doing. Let's put some more music on. Nora Vasquez says Burgos is making his commissary list. <laughs> Black Widow says, oh, yes, I I must agree. He's like, our battery is empty too. Mm -hmm. So apparently there's a battery problem there. I don't know. <sighs> Gosh. Jean says the state should say, I believe in this jury. They have co Yes, yes. That would be amazing. Yes, say that. I believe in this jury. They have common sense. So we pass this witness. Thank you, Dr. Cunningham. <laughs> and we're back to court view. I don't know if is this his mom. You guys keep saying that this could be his mom. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. I've got emails or screenshots there as well, but yes. All the different camera views today. Eduardo has been so quiet for like three days already. Norma says, how many of us think this witness will change the jury's mind? Not many. I think this, uh, where is it? Where's our black cat of doom? That's for technical problems. <laughs> It's coming back in the picture, but it's for the court. The Black Cat of Doom. <laughs> oh, geez, remember this, original Grizzlies. When you saw this, it's like, <laughs> mic check. <laughs> Black Cat of Doom. Mic check, battery check in the court. Wow. Sure, Andy, I would not encourage that. I, I understand you mean well, but we're not going to be looking for Amy's social media accounts to show her love. That can go very wrong if if we were to show that. Not that I know any about I don't know. 
You guys are like, zero, none. How many times has he called mom on the new system? Let's see. We'll go through our old school notes. I've been struggling to take notes in the last two days because I don't really... <laughs> what am I writing down? We're getting overwhelmed. And if we feel like that, the jury must feel like that. It's just TMI. Too much information. Like the presentation is too long. Okay, let's see. There we go. Oh my word, is Dana Sarkis still coming back? We forgot about her. Is she coming back? Alright, go forward. There's nothing. We're here. We're present time, live. Okay. How many times has he called his mom? They said something about 2,099 calls. Burgos's grandmother, 254 calls on the new system. Is that right? That's what I wrote down. 254. The father, 50 calls, but none on the new system. Someone called Z, 58 calls and 235 on the new system. And Amy Burgos, 51 calls to Amy. What is it? <laughs> Roller's like, gee, Fury. <laughs> we saw him earlier. He's sleeping now. Yeah, Jerry says, what difference does it make how many times he called anyone if he's abusive to them? Tell you, man. So, that's what we have there. That was from Dana Sarkis, the Webb County Sheriff's Office. Sorry for the paper flapping. You hear that? <laughs> does it sound like the court paper flapping? EB says, I'm an OG lurker newbie. <laughs> nice. You and Mimi, thank you for your super sticker there. Yeah. <laughs> Caroline says, will the defense call a Jedi Knight to testify about Baby Yoda's proper name? At this rate, maybe. DP says, I think this witness will aggravate the jury. Jury's mostly women. How many hate gaslighting? <laughs> okay, let me see. Okay, Detective Raimundo Garcia. Then we've got here witness Jose Luis Macias. That was that was a good witness as well, the mental health professional from the Webb County Jail. And he observed that Burgos was cooperative and calm, slightly anxious. He had normal speech, good eye contact. He was logical, organized thought. I wouldn't say, <laughs> based on what we know so far about Burgos, that he has logical and organized thought however i understand what it means in the context indeed ruth says we knew more about the defendant than he does and he's getting paid for it i mean that is still the good question to ask did you only review what the defense wanted you to see or did you why did you not review all the evidence it's been five years of preparation <laughs> truth was welcome I mean, this is still, you guys, this is still the witness from yesterday. Today was supposed to be cross-examination, pass the witness, bring on Dr. Anderson. I think that's the name of the next witness. Then the three laypersons and off we go. Rest your case. That's how we envisioned it, right? It doesn't always work that way. That would have been great. Bring in the next <laughs> three. Even if you're not putting them on camera. Okay, we understand. And then closing statements i think they happen again right do they from what we read from the chart earlier they actually don't again but i'm sure they wouldn't would they in this phase let me know let me know oh we're we're on a technical break now um that would have been great so let's just say if there was closing arguments okay and then the jury instructions, they deliberate oh, victim impact statements and then sentencing in which I think he's going to be in the prison outfit then. <laughs> that would have been great for Friday tomorrow, but I don't know if it's going to happen now. Rhonda, welcome to Grizzly $1 supporter. <laughs> Patricia says, I'll go into panic mode if I lose this channel because I'm afraid to miss the sentencing. <laughs> don't worry. If you are on Patreon, 
and no matter what, if we're on verdict watch or whatever, as soon as I go live and I'm like, oh my word, they've got a verdict or whatever, or they're sentencing or anything like that, I always put it there and you always would get the email from there. It's a really good notification system. Gerda says, G, thank you for all you do and helping us through this trial. The Grizzlies are the absolute best. Thank you, Gerda. And that's hometown. ZAR is South African Rand, you guys, and I'm from South Africa. Thank you so much, Gerda. Regina's like, it will go that way in G's videos after downtime is cut out. And imagine the timestamps and editing of these yesterday and today. You almost want to just edit it all out. <laughs> and reduce down to a minute. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Yes. Girl Scout, just check in. You say, of course, there's closing arguments. Okay, closing arguments again for the penalty phase. I'm, I'm very excited to see that. Cakes a lot says, oh my, OMG, this trial is brutal on the normal mind. Peter Ware says, I'm, well, it says, five years in county jail is so big, I'm surprised Burgos doesn't want the heck out of there, no matter what the sentence is. Right? Willow says, did Mr. G's package arrive? What are you talking about? Which package? I'm not sure what you're saying because <laughs> we do not have a P.O. box or anything. So if someone scammed you, I hope they didn't. Judith Denman, thank you so much for your sticker. Melissa says, I don't see closing arguments happening before Monday or Tuesday. At this point, me neither. The realistic timeline is closing arguments on Tuesday. And maybe a sentence by next week, Friday. That's what I would say in my guesstimation is plausible. <laughs> The fantasy is tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, okay. Deliberate. That would be amazing. Yes, Six Flower Ranch says, in any event, we'll continue tomorrow. Oh, no. Sue's, Sue's in Texas, he didn't even ha he didn't have enough respect for the court to show up in person. I mean, why did he not show up in person? Why? Why did this witness not just come in, right? Diana says, I want to see him in the jumpsuit. He's so deserved and justice for the family. Okay. And now this break is about a, a battery problem. <laughs> okay. I'm just looking at all your comments here. Okay, time to uh, to put the tunes back on. Here we go. <laughs> it's not fine for any of us, but we are here for Griselda, Dominic, and their family. They didn't ever put Dominic's uh, big brother on the stand. No, nope. they didn't. Okay, let's take a little break again.
seems to be your whiteboard. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Don't say they passed the witness, did they? Wait. Oh, why? Why did that update here? Let me try this again. Sorry, I'm looking. What's going on here? I want to see them pass the witness. We saw that. We saw that. Oh. You want me to go back and we catch up at 1.5 speed or what? So I have, um, that appears to be slide 36. I believe the original slide that they asked you to display was, yes, sir, slide 35. Can you make that oh, sorry. bigger for us or solo or, you know, how you can Let me see if I can turn on the okay. uh, slide. I'm going back, let's catch up. For prison systems. Yes. Do you collect information regarding the escapes of inmates from TDCJ? I uh, yes, I have that. information on escapes from TDCJ. Do they go back as far back as 2005? Yes. So then you are aware that since 2005, there have been 48 inmates within TDCJ who have attempted to escape, correct? Well, that's yes and no. Uh, TDCJ back in 2005 was defining an, an escape as any unauthorized departure from custody and that included a failure to return to custody following an authorized leave, an unauthorized departure from a work assignment, uh, or a dangerous misevaluation. I do a violence risk assessment for prison in response to the special issue if, if that's requested. Okay, and so in your assessment for the violent risk assessments, how many times have you testified that a defendant posed a future danger? I never testify about whether someone does or does not pose a future danger. How many times have you testified that a defendant is likely to commit serious violence in TDCJ? Um, I can't give you a precise number on a, on a few occasions, uh, if in the general prison population, uh, an, an offender, because of those risk characteristics, could pose a disproportionate risk. That said, there is always a level of custody that will incapacitate any offender. Dr. Cunningham? I'm referring to death penalty cases only. And in death penalty cases, when you've been asked to give your opinion as to whether they are likely or unlikely to commit serious violence in TDCJ, how many times have you testified, after being called by the defense, have you testified that a defendant is likely to commit serious violence in TDCJ? So the defense has never called me when my finding was this defendant had a disproportionate risk. They've not been called me to testify. Can you recall how many times you have found that he was likely to com that a defendant was likely to commit serious violence in TDCJ so that they did not call you? Uh, I, I can't give you a precise number. Often that happened in the first phone call. They would, they would inquire about retaining me. I would seek some basic information regarding the defendant and risk factors would then describe uh, that this offender had an increased likelihood. It might not be more likely than not, might be, but had, so, had an elevated risk. They said, thanks, I think we won't proceed to retain you. Thank you. Uh, so there was simply nothing, there was never a retention that occurred. I so you don't got have information. A, so you don't have a statistic on that, correct? I don't have a precise number, no. Thank you. No further questions, John? I'm enjoying that. <laughs> Mr. Boggs, any redirect? Yes, sir. Can I, uh, I'm gonna ask you also to speak into the mic so that they can hear you because we only have one microphone that we're using right now and it's and gonna be this forward. one over here. Uh, individualized assessments um, and on the scale between most scientific and least scientific. Do you recall that? I do. Would you like for me to display the slide? Yes, sir. Give me just a moment. Okay, I'm going forward again. Let me see if I can turn on the uh, slideshow. Gosh. I think we're current time now. Hold on. Three and may give you it to you better than just the defendant. Uh, but an interview of the defendant, if you don't interview the defendant, there may well be some adversities that you don't discover. That's the problem with it. Now, when you come over to a violence risk assessment, an interview of a defendant is... I'll still inquire about interviewing the defendant, but it's a very small part of the evaluation because the factors that are predictive of violence in prison are not about this individual's personality 
or psychological disorders they may have, but instead are, are uh, rooted in factors that you can get other places uh, in, in other records and by speaking to other people. Uh, and so as I interview a defendant for an evaluation of the risk assessment for prison, that interview might only last an hour uh, and would involve asking the defendant about how he's housed in jail, with what contact with staff or inmates, his take on any disciplinary infractions that have occurred, uh, his educational level, his employment history, uh, how he's occupying himself uh, in jail. It's a very limited fund of information uh, and who's coming to visit him and how often they speak uh, or what phone contact he has. It's information that I can probably get from the records, but speaking to the defendant uh, kind of gives me some direction with that. But it is a very, very small part of a violence risk assessment for prison and, and kind of near optional. So, um, Doctor, if I understand you correctly, you're saying that you can do an individualized risk assessment without direct contact with the accused. Is that correct? That's, that's correct, because that information, those correlates are available from other places. Uh, you know, in this instance, I, I desired, if I'm not going to actually interview him, let me at least see him interacting so that I've laid eyes on him at least and have a general sense of his, uh, you know, interpersonal demeanor and ability to express himself and that kind of thing. And uh, Doctor, on special issue one, are you aware of whether the state holds the burden or the defense? It's my understanding the state has the burden to, to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that there is a probability the defendant would commit criminal acts of violence Objection, that would constitute a continuing threat to society. Sustain, move on, please. The court, the court is the one that's going to be given the charge to the court, now, to the uh, jury. Doctor, you were asked by uh, the prosecutor whether or not your models took into account uh, I'm sorry, you're breaking up now. Yeah. You need um, to get close to it. Doctor, you were asked by the prosecutor whether or not your models took into account the severity of offense. Do you recall that? I'm sorry, I, I, still, I still couldn't hear you. Doctor, you were asked by the prosecutor whether your models took into account the severity of the offense. Do you recall that? Yes. And uh, do your models take into account the severity of offense? They do. Um, many of the studies that I described involve the follow-up of capital offenders in prison, uh, groups of murderers, uh, groups of, of, of murderers who had killed more than one person or were in close custody. Uh, a lot of my data uh, is organized in, in examining how murderers are behaving in prison. It's simply that the severity of the offense doesn't result in somebody being more likely to commit violence in prison and broadly is associated with a somewhat less likelihood. Uh, but yeah, lots, lots of the studies that I described were specific to murderers. Now, doctor, you were asked on cross-examination uh, about escapes and uh, specifically an escape that occurred in uh, 2022 and you were asked about the age of that escapee. You recall that? I do. And uh, could you tell us about the criminal record of that escapee in uh, 2022? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance, and that was discussed before. Literally. Approach, please. Oh, I'm just so glad that the state passed the witness. That was great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Deb says they need to just call it a day. Uh, Norma Hernandez, I mean, Chasa says I believe they call Griselda Gray because Gris in Spanish means gray in English. I'm out of context, but I thought I'd add this. Th thank you so much. Erin says, I'm so tired of the doctor's voice. I think we're all tired in general, right? This is this is now, it feels like Survivor. Like, 
will we make it through this tomorrow? I mean, it, that was so nice. Just for that little bit. Just that little bit at 1.5 speed. <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> very, very good. I don't know why. The, sorry that I, I was behind on that. I was sitting right here in the coffee break. I was sitting right here just waiting. <laughs> don't know why that stream was a little behind. And you guys were like, gee, <laughs> they're back. I'm like, oh, really? They found battery power? Good. <laughs> Wow. Okay, so tremendous stamina in the courtroom too. I mean, damn. What a trial this has been, huh? Yeah, Tiff says, Dieter, the court needs you. <laughs> the court does. For the battery and all that, yes. Black Swan, thank you. Thank you so much. I like how... <laughs> The witness, doc, Dr. Mark Cunningham, said, Well, I just want to look at the footage, so at least I um, laid eyes on him. <laughs> at least you laid eyes on him. Well, we all did. <laughs> I think it would be better if you actually interviewed him yourself. <laughs> Lyra says, You are exhausted, G. Objection. <laughs> I will deny that motion. <laughs> But yes, yes, a little bit. What is Boggs writing so much today? He's probably writing his novel. Yeah, he probably is. He's got to do something, I suppose, huh? To keep his mind busy there. Lucky him. He can just sit there writing his novel. Okay, they're coming back. Sound on. Asked on uh, cross-examination about the age of the escapee in uh, 2022, correct? Yes. And uh, the uh, that escapee, did he share a uh, criminal record in his past similar to Mr. Ronald Burgos Avilas? No. Did he have an extensive criminal history? Objection, Your Honor. That's been passed and answered. Uh, he did, extending back 28 years uh, before 2022, back to 1994. And, uh, how many um, how many how often do escapes happen within the Texas Department of uh, Corrections from a secure perimeter facility uh, uh, very very rarely and and in fact even in general uh, rarely uh, I can give you some I mean, tip it, but because it includes these folks that may walk away from a community supervision or that kind of thing, as you include those kind of cases, you know, I think it's two to four times a year uh, that that happens based on the emergency action center data of the last, oh, since 2013, 14. Uh, and, and I've got data that goes all the way back to 2005 and before. But even as you allow for those walkaways from community supervision, uh, it's only it's only three, four uh, annually. And I can give it to you specifically by year, but I'd have to quit sharing my screen and maybe share that emergency action center report. So, um, Doctor, you were asked on cross-examination about uh, whether or not you're being paid um, uh, for being called to, for being called as a witness, Is, uh, you re you recall that? Yes, and I responded that I'm paid for my time by the hour, not for my appearance. And uh, a part of the scientific method is the ability to test results, isn't it, Doctor? It is. Okay. Um, have your has your data uh, and the studies that you've conducted ever been tested to see if your 
predictions were accurate? Well, the studies are all tested in terms of having undergone peer review, which is a critical screen that all scientific research that's published undergoes. Uh, but you, if you're inquiring about, have I ever done follow-up on the cases that I was involved in providing uh, uh, capital risk-related uh, assessments for prison violence, I did conduct uh, such a study. Uh, to my knowledge, I'm the only forensic psychologist uh, who has ever done so. And uh, do you have slides that are available to illustrate these studies? I do. Okay. Um, would it help this jury to see those slides? Uh, it, it, it could. I can simply describe them, but I can also pull up a file that has this, those two slides in it. And we have another sidebar, another approach. Oh yes, sidebar trial of the year. I understand the importance because it's a death penalty trial. <laughs> so someone's like, no slides, because he said he could maybe stop sharing his slide and show something else. Everyone's like, no. Boggs, can you pass the witness? No further questions. <laughs> I don't know why this is so relevant. Flu <laughs> Flutney says no more slides. Yes, Dr. McDreamy says, I can't believe I would ever say this, but can someone call Devil Lettuce Dr. Lewis and wrap this up? No one, we never thought we would ever say that. We appreciate that Letitia Stark trial so much more now. Judge Vanner, wow. Yeah, limit, I mean, don't you guys feel like that? You say the jury must have brain overload by now. I feel like that. It's too much. I'm like clocking out, man. It's just like, this is just, it's too much. <laughs> so, so what, what, what is the point of this? It's for the jury. That's what all of this is. You know what I mean? I'm sure the jury's already sold on whatever it is they're trying to say. You know what I mean? They've made up their minds for themselves. This doesn't help going on and on and on about it. Uh, hi G, where are you located? Says nurse for God. Where in the Netherlands in Europe, the Netherlands, like Holland, Amsterdam. But I'm not in Amsterdam. I'm in Utrecht. So yes, that's where I'm located. But I'm South African. Yes. <laughs> Can someone pull the fire alarm? Cameraman. <laughs> Cameraman. This is an SOS. <laughs> Can you please pull the fire alarm? This is stamina trial. And I appreciate all of you for being here. I'm so glad I'm not here alone going through this. Because I definitely want to see this trial through. It's been a grueling process. Phase one and phase two was worse. The judge was right. It's going to possibly take longer. It is. Wait, so there were seven days, right? 10, 11, 12. So it's been five so far. Which means that if it's another three full days, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, something like that. Yeah, that would then qualify as longer than phase one. Corrections, Mike says, give me the lethal injection versus any more slides. <laughs> See, Laura says, I know, I checked out. It just happens. It's just complete overwhelm. And I just feel like we are the public and international audience, right? But yet, we're, we feel how a jury would feel. They're sitting there and it's like, it must, it must be so hectic. And I mean, we can like have giant coffees like this. I don't know how much, how many coffees they haven't had many. <laughs> That's not encouraged more coffee breaks. They've had breaks, but like, do they get giant coffees too? I hope so. This rate though, them, they must be so tired. <laughs> Hope and fear says grizzly true crime. Can you say he's so annoying? <laughs> you mean that one? <laughs> like when I talk to myself on my bloopers, so annoying. Yes. So Peter Bronzer says, yep, G, all for the jury. I mean, 
you know what I, that's what i mean has the defense lost sight of the fact that this is all for the jury this is for the jury to make up their mind of what they're going to deliberate on or like is it going to be you know what are they what's what's their verdict for this is it life without parole or are they recommending the death sentence this is too much it's too much info for that decision Sometimes I wonder <laughs> if that's the strategy, because if he gets the death sentence, we know there's going to be appeals and more like this, more, <laughs> more time in court. And if that's the strategy to tire out and overwhelm, whoa, okay, damn, well played. <laughs> because, wow, you sure have succeeded in that. Sandra says, this is like being, <laughs> you guys are starting to get snarky. This is like being pecked to death by ducks. <laughs> Yeah. Quite something, isn't it? <laughs> we heard that Ashley Rose says, Did anyone hear Bog say, I'm glad he has pants on when Cunningham got up to grab his book earlier? <laughs> He's such a weirdo with his weirdo face contortions. Comment. He, we don't hear, I, I, I was worried he didn't have pants on. But he did have pants on, just to clarify, just to clarify. Elo says, Love to you from Cape Town, South Africa, and to you. Elo, Elo. Cape Town is beautiful. I lived there for about two years. Yeah. That's right. Kelby says, for the amount of t time a break takes, they must use a bucket for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetie Pie says, Survivor South Africa is awesome. This is grisly true crime. Survivor. <laughs> for this trial. Let me, let me see how many of you are here right now. How many have survived? How many have not? Damn, you guys. Okay. There's there's still a lot of you here. Indeed. Paid by the hour. Exactly. That's another factor. Paid by the hour. Oh, man. He's making bank. Paid by the hour sitting there with this presentation. Amelia says, gee, your coffee cups are the real size of coffee cups. Most people call coffee cups or technically tea cups. Ah. Love it, love it. Size of my head. Need it. <laughs> more, please. And yet the problem is if I have more now, then I can't sleep till four in the morning and that's really not good. <laughs> Double C says, I'm on my last breath. Sure. Lindsay says, to be fair, I just got you, lol. You are so lucky. Do we all envy Lindsay? To be fair, I just got you. Y you are very, very lucky. And I, as I said earlier, I envy replay watchers. Why? Because not only do I cut out all this waffle time for you, but I also timestamp everything for you. That's two. And number three, you can watch it on 1.5 speed. You're so lucky. Looper31 says, much love from Laredo, Texas. Boom. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you to all the love from Laredo, Texas. <laughs> you guys keep me going. We've got a lot of new Grizzlies that have just recently subscribed. I think half of Laredo is here with us now, which is awesome. Oh, the judge looking worried now. What's the time? Texas time is now 1724. Please, Boggs, please. Four. Um, yes, sure. I'm uh, six. Yes, yes. Tell us. Pass the witness. Pass the witness. For the record, I'm holding um, Defendant's Exhibit 13. And uh, Dr. Cunningham, can you hear me? I can. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, um, I'm holding Defense Exhibit 13, which is a copy of your CV. Um, and uh, we didn't go over these yesterday. And uh, I don't want to go over too many, but um, you've received a, a, a number of awards. Is that correct? I have. So for instance, the American Psychological Association Award for Distinguished Contributions to Research and Public Policy. You received that award? That's correct. That's, that's an annual award that's uh, given to one psychologist annually uh, for distinguished empirical 
uh, that's research-based or theoretical contributions to research and public policy, that's research having significance before legislative bodies or the courts uh, or uh, the public at large. Um, and so it's a, a contribution to research and public policy, either through a single extraordinary achievement or a lifetime of work. And uh, sir, oh, you've been testifying about prisons these past two days. That's you correct. That's my most significant empirical and theoretical contribution to science and to public policy is informing considerations of violence risk assessment for prison uh, and more particularly in capital cases. And uh, a matter of fact, you've received an award from the American Correctional Association, the Peter J. Layens Research Le Le Award? Layens Award. Yeah, that's, that's an annual award that's given by the American Correctional Association uh, to one or two uh, correctional researchers each year. It's the highest honor that they bestow. Uh, and it's for distinguished empirical uh, or for, for insignificant research uh, for the correctional community and, and development of new information that adds to this uh, profession and improves the profession of corrections. And uh, what is the American Correctional Association, briefly, sir? Uh, that's, the, uh, th that's the professional association of uh, prison staff members, wardens, researchers. Uh, this is their, their professional association, correctional professionals, both state and federal. And uh, sir, you also received an award from the American Academy of Forensic Psychology. Uh, that's correct. I was recognized with that uh, just this last November. And, uh, and that was the uh, that that was their distinguished contribution award. That's that's an annual award that's given to one psychologist. This is the highest honor that can be bestowed by the American Academy of Forensic Psychology. The Academy is the scholarly association of board certified forensic psychologists. So and this is a gr this group of three hundred and eighty. Uh, most preeminent forensic psychologists uh, in the United States. And this recognizes uh, outstanding contributions to the science and practice of forensic psychology. And I believe um, we discussed yesterday that you are a naval veteran. Um, I am. And uh, did you receive the Navy Commendation Medal? I did. I did. That was uh, at the toward the end of my tenure at the Subbase Medical Center in Grot, New London, Connecticut. And I think I may have mentioned yesterday, it's a very unusual I decoration I to be that. given to a junior officer at his first assignment. And uh, sir, you're now, you've testified that you're board certified in forensic psychology, but you're also board certified in clinical psychology, is that correct? Objection, Your Honor, asked and answered. Uh, that's correct. Both of those by the American Board of Professional Psychology, which is the board certification organization that's recognized by the American Psychological Association. So you were asked about being paid by the prosecutor. Has that payment in any way affected your testimony uh, and your honest opinions? No, sir. Judge, I I'd pass the witness. I have a couple of questions, John. Dr. No. Cunningham, since 1974, how many prison escapes from maximum security facilities have you recorded? I, I don't have a total that I can give you. I know they're infrequent, but I can't give you a total in the United States since 1974. Do you have any statistics on former law enforcement inmates who murdered their own child? I do not. Now, not that specifically. Dr. Uh, Cunningham, do you believe that there's a case out there that based on the evidence presented, that it merits the death penalty? Je uh, objection, Good relevance. question, good question, Judge. come on. Let's go there, yes. Over the question. Do you, it's like the merits. You want to 
Oh boy, they're approaching again. <laughs> that was so good. Pass the witness. Stamina. <laughs> wow. He's like, yes, in fact, all my words. We're like, no. Oh, it was such so many sweet words, just like, judge, I passed the witness. Yes, yes, but then, oh man, the prosecution's got more questions. Ask that one again. Can you, can you ask it again? Please, judge, allow it. It was a good question. That the approach, there's two possibilities for a convicted capital murder. Life without the possibility of parole and the death penalty. Do you agree with that? Yes. Do you agree that in some situations the evidence mer the evidence and facts support life without the possibility of parole? Do you agree that there are some cases that, that the, the facts and the evidence merit life without the possibility of parole? Yes. Some objection, Judge Merritt. Do you Supports. Supports. Either one. This isn't, it's not what he's been called to testify for. It's not his area of expertise. The question doesn't even make any sense in context. Okay, here we go. Yes. <laughs> New question. Let's go. Dr. Cunningham, can you, based on the merits of the case, the facts and the evidence that's produced or introduced into evidence. Do you believe that there's a case out there that the special issues, number one and number two, could be answered? Yes and no. Yeah, it's judge, judge, objection. His opinion on whether there's a no, it matters. Objection was sustained. Dr. Cunningham, you are excused. You may go about your business, sir. Thank you very Bye, much. Sir. I'll take down your... Toodaloo. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Never been so happy. And so, we don't have the mic situation anymore, and I would like to call your next witness, oh. please. Yes, you can do it, Judge. Judge, at this time, <laughs> we would call Commander Hernandez. Commander Hernandez. Okay. Command I don't know what his first name is. I think it's Juan, right? Bring my bike over here. C Commander Juan Hernandez. Did I hear that correctly? Sir, good, almost good Juan. evening. Your name, sir? Jose Hernandez. Jose Hernandez. I'm going to call you Juan. Jose Hernandez, uh, please raise your right hand and be sworn. Jose. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got. Please have a seat right over here. Ricky We're going to go ahead and take like all that down. We don't need that. Let's see. We can down what we don't need. Uh, and then, in fact, I think I'm just going to take everything down here. Yeah, I'm going to take down the Zoom application only because we don't need that right now. I left the meeting. And can you take... Who's... Oh, you guys are on, I think, right? Oh, So we're going to change it to the document image, or don't worry. Thank you. That's gone. That's fine. You're good. Okay. You've yeah. introduced yourself as uh, Mr. Jose Hernandez. Yes, sir. And uh, Mr. Hernandez, are you employed? Yes, sir. And uh, how are you currently employed? Currently, I'm the 
chief of police for the Laredo College Police Department. Could you do me a favor? Uh, yes. Could you lower the mic and chief scoot your table, okay. your chair, just a little bit? Up there? Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, how long have you been the chief of police for Laredo College? Four days. Okay. Congratulations. And uh, before you were employed at Laredo College, what was your job? I was uh, deputy sheriff. Uh, before I left the sheriff's office, I retired. I was a jail administrator. Okay. And uh, how long were you employed by the web? By, and I'm sorry, was that in, here in Webb County? Yes, sir. And how long were you employed by the Webb County Sheriff's Office? Uh, approximately 20 years. Okay. And uh, what was your educational background before you were hired by the Webb County Sheriff? Before I was hired, I just had a high school diploma. Okay. And uh, well, did you seek education um, while you were employed at the Webb County Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. Throughout my career, I uh, obtained a associate's degree for criminal justice from uh, Laredo College. And then I proceeded to get a uh, bachelor's degree in criminal justice and a master's degree in criminal justice from TAMU. Okay. And uh, so does that mean the first time you were hired by the Webb County Sheriff Office, that was about uh, in 2005? Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Now, um, what was your position when you were first employed by the Webb County Sheriff's Office? I was a correctional officer, supervisor. Okay. And then... Um, Did you, did you move through the ranks? Yes, sir. I promoted to sergeant, and then lieutenant, and then eventually jail commander. Okay. And uh, at a certain point, um, did you say you were a first-line supervisor? Is that correct? Yes, sir. All mm -hmm. right. And uh, what were your responsibilities uh, while you were a supervisor? So as a supervisor, I was responsible for a shift of 30 officers and enforced rules and regulation mostly the intake and release department, but overall jail operations. Okay. And uh, at a certain point, did you change positions at the Webb County Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, what was that new position uh, after being a frontline supervisor? When I promoted to sergeant, I ended up being uh, transferred out to uh, an investigator. Okay. And uh, about what year was that? 2019, sir. Okay. And uh, did there come a, in uh, near the end of uh, 2021, um, did you, what position did you hold? Did you hold a position at the Webb County Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. Um, 2021, I promoted to jail administrator, the rank of commander. Okay. Um, and what, is, what does it mean to be the commander of the Webb County Sheriff's Office? You oversee all, all over, uh, oversee jail operations and, and its totality. Your, um, I have was responsible for approximately 170 employees, officers and support staff, and then in, in the population of possibly about 580 inmates. And uh, did you report to the sheriff? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, being the commander, does that mean that you were in charge of the entire Webb County Jail? Correct, sir. Okay, and uh, are you familiar with um, Ronald Burgos Aviles? Yes, sir. Okay, um, and do you see him here in court? Yes, sir. Okay, could you identify him by an article of clothing? Yes, sir, he's got a gray suit and a light blue. I'd ask that the record uh, reflect proper identification, Your Honor. Um, now, during your time as commander of the Webb County Jail, um, did you become familiar with uh, Ronald Burgos Aviles? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, did you know him well? I wouldn't say, sir. I don't okay. know him well. Um, so, in what way did you become familiar? Because of his case and um, the high-profile case that he was, and uh, the, the attention that we needed to make sure that we were able to keep him in isolation and then transfer him out to a PC cell and just it's it's different for people in his in his case okay now um, you've had a career in law enforcement yes sir yes sir and uh, you're not a friend of a, a convicted capital murder is that fair to say yes sir. 
Okay. Um, and you're appearing here because I subpoenaed you. Is yes, that sir. correct? Um, so uh, you're not here to do any favors. Is that right? Yes. Sir. Okay. Um, you're here to tell the truth. Correct. Is that right? Okay. Now, um, could you tell us where, uh, when Mr. Burgos Aviles was first arrested, where he was housed within the Webb County Sheriff's, uh, in the Webb County Jail? He was housed initially in an uh, isolation cell. Okay. Uh, and is it unusual for uh, someone to be housed in isolation? No, sir. Okay. Uh, why, why is that? Depending on, the, on the, the intake process and how he's classified, that's where the inmate is placed in. Okay. And well, what was it about the classification of Mr. Burgos Aviles that made him put in isolation? Initially, because he was a law enforcement plus his charges. Um, and uh, to your knowledge, was Mr. Burgos Aviles ever housed in isolation for disciplinary reasons? No, sir. And uh, is there a point in time at which Mr. Burgos Aviles was transferred from isolation? Yes, sir. And uh, where was Mr. Burgos Aviles transferred? To a protective custody cell. And what does protective custody cell mean at the Webb County Jail? Well, it's, um, and then in this case, he ended up in an eight-man cell. Uh, if you can picture eight individual cells facing each other in the same housing unit, but everybody's inside their cells. And uh, is there an opportunity in those eight-man cells for the uh, inmates to interact? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, is there like an open bar where they uh, are can mix together? Yes, sir, so the, this, this jail is an old jail, so the, the doors, there are not solid doors like you see here today. There are open bar concepts, so that's how that setup is. So even though they're in what we know as protective custody, is there the opportunity for inmates to fight with each other or for violence between inmates? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, are fights common or uh, do they occur within yes. th in those protective custody cells? Yes, sir. Now, um, and you've already told us that, um, well, let me, I apologize. Let me back up a little bit. Uh, are you aware of any fights or altercations between Mr. Burgos Aviles and other inmates uh, in his, while he has been in jail? No, sir. Okay. Um, are you aware of any assaults or violent behavior towards staff by Mr. Burgos Aviles at the Webb County Jail? No, sir. Now, is it common for inmates to get in disciplinary trouble while they're housed at the Webb County Jail? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and what kinds of activities could get an inmate into trouble, into disciplinary trouble? When they don't follow uh, verbal posted rules. Okay. Um, now, uh, are you aware of any um, violations of disciplinary rules by Mr. Burgos Aviles? No, sir. Okay. And, uh, I mean, there are a lot of people at the Webb County Jail. Um, would you be aware of every single inmate's disciplinary history? No, sir. Okay, but um, in a high profile case, um, would your, the people who worked for you report to you if there were disciplinary problems? Yes, sir. And uh, during your time as the commander of the Webb County Jail, um, are you aware of any reports of violence by Mr. Burgos Aviles towards anyone? No, sir. Are you aware of any acts of uh, disturbances in the five years that Mr. Burgos Aviles has been in jail? No, sir. Are you aware of any threats to inmates or staff 
in the five years that Mr. Burgos Avilas has been in jail? Objection, Your Honor. Asked and answered. It's a different question, technically. Uh, well, you may. Uh, no, sir. Beach doesn't know about the water bags. And uh, I assume within the 18 years that you worked at the Webb County Jail that you came in contact with a lot of inmates. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, do you consider it significant that in the five years that Mr. Burgos Aviles has been in jail, that he has a uh, very minimal disciplinary history. Objection, Your Honor. Cause for speculation. Um, I'm not aware of any incidents that uh, he might have been involved or not, sir. I, I don't know. Okay. Well, are you aware of any complaints by uh, correction officers or jail staff uh, about Mr. Burgos Aviles? No, sir. And let me ask you, are there female correctional officers in jail? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, do female officers perform the same duties with respect to inmates as their male counterparts? They do, sir, with the exception of strip searching. Okay. And uh, to your knowledge, has any female officer expressed concerns for their safety because of Mr. Burgos Avilas? No, sir. Based on your knowledge of Mr. Burgos Aviles, um, does it seem like he has a problem following rules? Not that I'm aware. Mm -hmm. Again, it calls for speculation. If he's aware of it. I think it's a question. Have you ever observed Mr. Bur Burgos Aviles being uncooperative or discourteous with correction officers or jail staff? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And uh, would it be fair to say that in the Webb County Jail, uh, Mr. Burgos Aviles has adjusted to the environment there? I wouldn't know, sir. I mean, he was there for a long time, so the time that I interacted with him was sporadic and here and there. Uh, I'd pass the witness. No questions, Your Honor. Congratulations. No questions. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. You can go about your business. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. That was nice. That was so nice and quick. Why couldn't the last one be like that? Approach, please. They're going to approach about ending the day, aren't they? Because it's already now 10 to 6 Laredo time. 10 to 1 in the morning, my time. <laughs> I'm on a new sleep schedule. I'm now on Laredo time. <laughs> For real, you guys. I'm part of your time zone now. <laughs> Laredo, will you accept me? <laughs> Laredo, Texas. Texas time. I used to be on Florida time. Uh, Steven says, of course, he was a model prisoner before his trial. Exactly. Sorry, I'm struggling to put this chat up on the screen. Yes, Stephen. Thank you for your sticker. Of course, he was a model prisoner before this trial. Maya says, can I do a happy dance? Yes, Maya, do it. <laughs> wow. What a day. What a day this was. I'm sure tomorrow will be another day, you know, like, oh, my word, what a day. Stephen, thank you. There we go. Now I can put it up. Yeah, did he follow rules? Yeah, he's well behaved before his trial, of course. He's a very good boy. Why do you think that, Rebecca? Tell me. Sometimes you guys have been tired <laughs> in the last two Rebecca days. We are going to call it a day. Yes. It's been such a topsy turzy type of day that I think we'll put it behind us. Oh, yes, please. Um, you know. We're going to stick around and make sure this mic thing is figured out. And um, I, I don't think we have another. Oh, is Dr. Anderson going to be on Zoom as well? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. So we'll figure out the mic situation. Thank you. All right. So um, I am.
am going to instruct you all and remind you of the instructions once again. Um, folks, it is imperative that you listen uh, and that you uh, comply. Um, uh, it was imperative that you comply from the very beginning. I'm stressing it now. You know the type of coverage, or you've probably heard of the type of coverage that there has been involved in, in this case. No one should be contacting you about the case. No one should be trying to talk to you about the case. Um, if anybody does, um, please tell them to stop. If, they, if, they can, if it continues in some sort of way, please let, tell them to stop and let, the, and, and let me know at once. Uh, that's contact by you means personal contact, phone contact, email contact, you know, social media contact, anything. I didn't, and, I didn't. and by the way, um, things may pop up on, on your social media. Uh, you have no control over that. There's the algorithms that are involved in, in what pops up. Uh, you need to not click it on. Uh, some of the stuff there may be stuff that you already, uh, you got to hear firsthand. Uh, so you don't need to review any of that. You just do not click it on, uh, uh, and, and, and because clicking it on would be a violation of my instructions. All right. We will see you tomorrow. Have a good evening. 8.45. Thank you. And for the record, everyone, I have not contacted, reached out to any jury member or anyone. I'm not reaching out to anyone. I'm getting a lot of emails, but I'm not reaching out to anybody. Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any pieces, limit your social media jurors. The algorithm might just show you some grizzly true crime. And you don't want to click on that, okay? <laughs> Maybe later. Yeah, Johnny says, no binge watching <laughs> grizzly true crime. <laughs> Eduardo's like, no. <laughs> wow. Okay. So someone was saying, I thought there's no court tomorrow. Not sure why I thought that, but tomorrow, tomorrow they are. Okay. The judge said 845. We know that means 930 at this point, but you know, I'll be on standby here, you know, from 845 as always. And even though now it's almost one in the morning, I do have to do timestamps for two streams from yesterday and today's stream. So, and I have to edit this one. So I've got work to do, but I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jamie says he said 8.45, but he really means 10.45. That was just so refreshing when that final witness of today was on the stand. Commander, Commander Jose Hernandez, like, yes. Okay, in, question, no questions, pass the witness. That was amazing after that day. It was always like, it felt like 24 hours <laughs> of uh, Dr. Mark Cunningham. That was very hectic. <laughs> Susie's like, boast, boast, boast. <laughs> Are you still behind on the stream? Or what? What a day, says Trinity. Right? What a day. Now, okay, this is going off. Wait, click it. Okay, I think... <laughs> making decisions here at one in the morning. I do think we could have a very brief members only stream if you want to now. Do you want to? Let's see. Uh, when do you think this jury will start deliberating? 33% said tomorrow. 40% said Monday. 15% said Tuesday. And I'm in that category, I think. <laughs> I think Tuesday. And 13% said Wednesday or later. Wednesday or later. Oh, you guys are telling me to get some sleep. You guys are so sweet. You like do the editing of the weekend. Oh, hell no. Do you know me at all? <laughs> I can't. I can't go to bed until I do that stuff. <laughs> Kelly Nurse is like, I missed what happened with the water balloons. <laughs> Apparently he had what? Water. I need to get my terminology right. Water bags in his cell, which was a violation of the rules. And he was trying to lift weights with that. Okay. He was doing boot camp in his cell. And they're like, no, you may not. Okay. Some of you are saying, please rest. Some of you are concerned. I just feel like I got so much snark from that last witness. <laughs> That's why I would think about it. I would think about a member stream now and be like, <laughs> could, I could. Because that, whew, that, that one, mm, mm, that just got me. So, you know, mods, don't worry. You never have to mod, um, on members only streams okay 
You know that. We go wild over there. Um, you guys are saying you should rest, but you know... Let me just think about how many notifications I have. Tomorrow's one. Do one over the weekend, but see, the weekend I want to rest. We're going to do a quick one now, okay? So members, make sure that you look out for your notifications. We're going to do a quick members only stream now. Then I'll see everybody back tomorrow at 8.45, which is 9.30 Texas time, I'm sure, for day 13 of the trial. I have not set up those streams yet, so you won't find it yet. Make sure you are subscribed. Uh, hit the bell. Then when you see it pop up on your algorithm, on your feed, just click notify me so that you do get notified. If you want uh, certainty and you really want those notifications, Patreon is a great place to get that certainty because there'll always be your emails, right? Okay. So, yes. Uh, I, members, are you ready? Are ready. Lieutenant Peter Ponson says, well done, Gisela. I know you must do your work before turning in. I'm going to. I'm going to have a quick members only stream, 10 minutes. Then... And you know, 10 minutes is also Laredo 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes, members only stream. Then I'm going to do the timestamps and stuff and then I'll get some sleep, okay? Fury's passed out over here. So, see you over there. Uh, members, you'll get a notification as soon as I go live and check out the community tab as well. Okay, bye everyone. Snarky venting coming right up indeed, yes. Here we go. A voice, a voice. Is a dog. <laughs>